Okay, y'all, I think we're good to go today. Happy Sunday to y'all. It's another Andy live stream. Meteorologist Andy Hill here covering the weather for quite some time today. It's gonna it's gonna be a long one, all right. So um another stream to go. Uh so hopefully I can help people. I'm gonna be live for a long time tonight. This is probably gonna be a seven, eight hour stream, maybe a little bit more. So if you're watching this back or you're just now catching this live, uh you can keep up with the date and time um in the bottom right corner of the stream down there. So if you watch a stream in the future from me and you're like, oh man, this is this is weird. Is this happening right now? Just check that time down there in the bottom right. See if it's the same as your phone on like the same minute on the hour and you should be good Good to go. So we've got a moderate risk today, which is a four out of five here in the red, just in this red area. And orange around it is a three out of five. This is primarily for hail and also tornadoes. And it's going to be the theme throughout tonight. You can see already here on this, uh, on the left hand side of the screen here, we've got this uh, area right here of supercells actually, uh, lots of supercells. Uh, that are currently producing severe thunderstorm criteria damage in terms, in, primarily in terms of hail, but a little bit of wind in there too. These are going to track through this red and orange area throughout the evening, throughout the night. Um, it, it's going to take a while. We've also got some storms over here in Alabama at the moment. These are going to pose much less of a tornadic threat at the moment, but they will uh, continue producing hail and wind. So our theme tonight is these guys just going all the way through southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, uh, and even uh, it should be north of the Gulf Coast proper. So Pensacola, Gulfport, Mobile, hopefully is out of the worst of this um we're really watching these supercells and it's going to be they're going to just continue to exist for hours and hours so you'll watch this radar loop back right now that we've got going at you know 4 p.m central right now in these areas and this same supercell down here could be alive and headed towards montgomery alabama in you know six hours from now and that that's going to be the theme tonight so i will be um working alongside Ryan here. I've also got the chasers down below me today. Um, so we can watch, you can watch the chasers that we've got on deck uh, for this stream as well. We've got Brad Arnold and Chris Hall down there. Um, if you want to keep up with communications from them, they'll be on Ryan's stream talking. Uh, but I will continue to host them after Ryan goes offline because um, Ryan will be going off at some point this evening as he's going to prepare to head out and assist with recovery efforts from Friday storms um, in uh, northeastern Mississippi. So... Uh, so I will uh, eventually be hosting everybody tonight, so if you're watching both of us, you'll eventually have two of me on your screens, <laughs> and I will do my best to uh, make sure everybody is informed here. So, once again, this will be more meteorologically focused. We're going to focus on the radar a lot more here, uh, keeping an eye out for any storms that look concerning. I'll be able to come through and change Ryan's lights again and, uh, you know, tell him what's going on if I see something that he is not looking at. There you go. So let me bring up the chat here. Um, everyone cross your fingers that we don't have even close to a repeat of uh, Friday's, you know, severe weather here. But we've already got storms in place. We have the environment in place. It's just up to the storms to take advantage of that. And uh, if they do, we'll, we'll have a lot to talk about. So hopefully we can have a more chill day today. But that is absolutely not the case for Jackson, Mississippi, Hattiesburg, Laurel, even all the way over to Montgomery, Alabama, and starting in just a bit for Alexandria, Louisiana. So that's the case today. Um, we'll see the you'll see those warnings come a through whenever they do. Uh, they'll be issued. right there. <laughs> they'll be right there. So uh, let's actually take a look at that, and then I'm going to pull the chat up once I uh, once I am done looking at this storm here. So I've got you guys good to go. A new okay, tornado so that was warning for... has been issued. Covington County, Alabama. That is down here, down south. So let me switch radar sites and see what's going on. My goodness, guys. The the, the next few days are going to be so busy. Okay, so we do have... There is still a, a slight tornado threat with these storms, and this one is certainly taking advantage of that. You can see our rotation right here in this uh, in this area. Let me switch over. Can see our rotation right there in this area and the pink box here is the uh, tornado warning so this is going to go just to the south of op uh, alabama i believe that's how you pronounce it 
uh, at the moment. So eventually it will track probably to the south of Op and include uh, Onicha and Kinston, Alabama in its path. So there we go. First tornado warning of this stream. We've already had one recently, and I'm going to take a look at those storms as well uh, in just a bit here. But um, at the moment, this is a dangerous storm, so y'all should be uh, taking shelter if you're just north of the Florida-Alabama line here in um, Covington County, Alabama. Okay, let's get that chat going. Yeah, eventually this is going to track towards some more populated areas too. Um, eventually these cells will be near the Dothan, Alabama area and uh, possibly encompassing Enterprise, Alabama. So uh, this area of southeastern Alabama is going to be active with severe thunderstorms just as much as Miss Southern Mississippi and uh, central Louisiana will be. So we're going to be focusing on all of these areas tonight uh, in a meteorologist point of view here. Okay, I've got chat out here now. That's good. That's good. It was tough, guys, covering Sunday's event. And if you recall, let's have a little bit of verification uh, here. Verification is important. On uh, Friday, when I first streamed here, we talked about Sunday's risk, which is today. Um, and at the moment, or at that time, it was just a marginal. It was a one out of five risk. So... Um, it wasn't as uh, a pertinent of a, of a threat to that we were looking at the moment, but it just goes to show these can evolve so quickly. And um, with that comes the need to cover them as uh, efficiently as we can and as, uh, you know, in, in time as we can. So um, Ryan will be covering this one today, but not the entire night as he has to go out. He's not going to be here for next Thursday and Friday where we have some huge severe risks into uh the center the central areas of the country central great plains even the southern great plains and then a lot of the midwest and the ohio river valley and the mississippi river valley on uh, next friday so having multiple people on the team to cover it will be great i'll be covering those days even though ryan will be um cooking up thousands of meals in mississippi so that's the plan all right, so let me bring up chat here. We're going to look at our main supercells as well, In uh, currently in central Louisiana, moving through, approaching Alexandria. Thank you guys for the support so far. I appreciate it, CB. Thank you. And uh, Clean, good to see you all. Yeah, everybody's hoping that these are just not as bad as uh, Friday's event. I'll tell you, it was a heck of a first day to cover uh, from my, pro my point of view. So we don't want that to happen again. So now here we here we are in central Louisiana. Of course, you can keep up with the date and time if you're just now joining in, watching Ryan, watching myself. Date and time is in the bottom right of my screen and bottom left of Ryan's. Um, so always be paying attention to that. These are just a bunch of severe thunderstorm warnings at the moment. Um, but they're going to go... The strongest storms are going around Alexandria, nope. uh, Louisiana at the moment. So... Um, that is, uh, that's what's going on there. Oh, goodness. Uh, but the, the thing is, this is the theme today. Thank you for the support, Cap. Much appreciated. The theme today, I'll go over it again, is these supercells over here, these guys right here, are going to exist for hours and hours and hours through this corridor, um, through Laurel, th through Jackson, Mississippi, all the way to Montgomery, Alabama, even Columbus, uh, Georgia here on the border. Um, into the night. So these, these are going to be the same cells we're watching for uh, quite a long time. And then we've also got this batch of cells over here on the right side of your screen uh, that will also pose a less, uh, you know, a, a slight severe risk as they head out of this area into Georgia. So um, we've got two groups, but mainly this guy, these ones back here are going to be the show. At first, they're going to be hail. Lots and lots of hail is going to be the theme with these storms back here. But eventually, especially as they cross the uh, Mississippi River here, is really when they're going to start posing a significant tornadic threat um, per all of the meteorologists at the Storm Prediction Center and myself and everyone analyzing this event Per our thoughts, um, that's what we're seeing today. So hail first for much of uh, central Louisiana here. Could be some large hail uh, with these storms as they mature and uh, continue to the east. But then we're going to see that transition to a mixed mode where tornadoes and hail are the theme. 
So yeah, don't worry. I'll, I'll be changing the color as best as possible. So yeah, we'll, I'll highlight that in black just like this. These cells are going to go to the east just like that. It's going to take hours for them to do that. And I hope that they don't do a lot on the way, but uh, that's why these risks are in place. Four out of five risk, moderate risk in the red here, and a three out of five risk in the orange here, two out of five in the yellow. Man. And that, that uh, slight risk even extends all the way up into South Carolina and Wilmington, North Carolina, all the way to the coast as these storms just track through this corridor all day. All day. So lots of severe weather to cover. We'll do our best, Ryan and I, to uh, do as much as possible through both of our streams. So uh, let's do it. All right. So Ryan is looking right now uh, at our Louisiana cell, I believe. So let's take a closer look at our current tornado warning uh, in Alabama here toward the Florida border. I don't really see, it looks like the rotations died out just a little bit here. You can see that it was much stronger right here, right about here. And this was, this was 10 minutes ago uh, that this area was a significant uh, rotation going on here that could produce a tornado at the surface. But since then, you can see those greens and reds kind of fade out a little bit. Um, so this storm is losing rotational strength. It looks good uh, right now. So hopefully that continues to be the case. These storms over here producing a, uh, you know, some light rotation, but not anything that would result in a tornado at the surface. Nonetheless, in Covington County, Alabama, please take shelter. Um, it would be a good idea to be taking shelter if you're in Florala or Op, Alabama, and it would be a good idea to uh, know ahead of time in uh, Enterprise, as well as Dothan, that strong storms are headed your way that have a history of uh, being worthy of a tornado warning. So... Let's make sure that everybody there knows that as we start up the stream here. So, let me go back to the risks here. I think that anywhere that was anywhere that was affected by strong tornadoes yesterday, which was uh, over here in west central Mississippi and up here in northeastern Mississippi, um, and also we had a strong tornado uh, over here in western uh, uh, Georgia this morning near West Point. Uh, that should go to tell you how strong these storms can be. The system is producing some intense weather because it's very unseasonably warm and moist down here. Um, these cells are taking advantage of that. We even had a significant tornado in the, the West Point area uh, of Georgia here around LaGrange. So that was earlier this morning. It did uh, really significant damage there in the morning hours. So anything could happen today in these areas, and we're here to cover it. Yeah, I can't enable closed captioning because what I'm doing is having a low latency broadcast. What I'm saying is reaching your ears within five or six seconds. You can't have closed captioning during that, unfortunately. Um, otherwise, it would take about 30 seconds for my broadcast to reach you. So that's the only way to have closed captioning at the moment. But I appreciate the thought. I, I had to decide between the two which was mo more important. Ryan has closed captioning, so you can uh, you can hear that through his stream or you can read that. <clears throat> but sometimes 25 seconds can make a major difference. So um, I, I'm, I'm going back and forth on which one I want to include more, but I think we're going to try the low latency for now. Thank you for the support clip. Uh, you can see Atlanta, that Atlanta's just in this one out of five marginal risk. The severe threat is really focused to your south, and especially to your southwest um, into the early night hours, into the early morning as well. So um, Atlanta may see some strong uh, storms roll through, but it shouldn't bear that significant of a threat as we see in these uh, primary risk areas today. Thank you for the support, 70s, 80s, vintage, much appreciated, and Kriya. Thank you, guys. Yeah, and of course, if you're just uh, if you're watching both Ryan and I, I will still pop in on Ryan's stream, change the lights and so forth, uh, as we always do. <sighs> I was able to take a day off yesterday, for what it's worth. Um, I think it was pretty important to have a day off um, to decompress because that 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 day on Friday it did involve a, a lot of stuff, and I think. I think that it was, um, I think that we did really good between Ryan and I uh, covering that event. So um, 
I'm happy that we're able to support so much. You're going to continue to see the results of that. And we're really crossing fingers that we don't have to organize a similar um, response to today's event. So I don't think that's going to happen, you know, not until we see that really starting to happen um, will I have uh, worries about, you know, the recovery efforts in place. So yesterday I didn't post anything, but you know, you can, if you want it, if you need to see the damage or you need to get some information about yesterday's events, it is all over social media, of course, and um, really massive, re massive movement of uh, response and recovery efforts is great to see. But yeah, now, now I'm back. Now I got to post on social media because it's, it's important. It's pertinent to making sure we're covering the, the weather here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I have a regular job. This is becoming my regular job in a sense. All right, so looking at radar here, central Louisiana at the moment. Um, we have also got supercells back here crossing into the state at the moment. Uh, some heavy rain and so forth is going to impact the Natchitoches area in Louisiana uh, shortly. And then Alexandria also going to get a round or two of heavy rain starting soon. And then in terms of the severe threat here... Plenty of these severe thunderstorms are for both hail and wind at the moment. But I'm not seeing I'm not seeing too much in terms of uh, immediate rotation to call out here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm hoping that today I can do more of the the usual what I'd be looking at in the back end here, but we have plenty of hail reports. So Vicksburg, Southern Vicksburg might have just gotten some golf ball size hail. We've had uh, hail reports back in here of a uh, golf ball size, which is nearly two inches. So, um, I, th I think that, um, I think that large hail in these areas is not that common. It's difficult to get the, uh, the atmosphere, the atmospheric conditions in place to support such large hail. Um, because usually down here, you've got all this warm air coming in from the Gulf let me do that in blue all this warm air is coming in from the gulf and that that's at not just at the surface but well up in the atmosphere uh, but today all of your all of your warm air above the surface is coming in from texas and mexico uh, all the way over here where it's dry and what that means is that if if these supercells are maturing the drier air aloft make, makes it so that hail production is actually more efficient um, in any supercells that do form because we have more instability and then uh, all, all that's left is uh, talking about the winds and if those winds are supportive then you just get a bunch bunch of large hail and so i don't think it's i don't think it's very often that down here uh, in louisiana and southern mississippi that you see two inch hail or uh, greater but there is a real chance we could see that uh, we probably already have seen that near columbia louisiana and uh, possibly near vicksburg as well so this large hail is also a theme. Part of our moderate risk of four out of five today is in place because of the hail, which is, I, I don't know, I'm racking my brain. I don't really know the last time I've seen a moderate risk for hail in Louisiana and Mississippi. Like, I feel like that's a, this is a very rare setup. My goodness, man. So that is uh, something to pay attention to is uh, large hail today. And something we'll I'll be looking at here, um, the, probably a theme tonight, is uh, when these supercells are producing hail, you've got these uh, areas of pink here in their cores. That, that tells me that there's likely hail there. So up in here, there's probably some hail going on near Georgetown, Louisiana. When that disappears, as it goes into Mississippi, if that does happen that can indicate that there is actually tornado genesis about to occur or ongoing because um, the wind profiles, different wind profiles support hail than tornadoes. And uh, it's hard to get a really large hail with a proper tornado down here in these supercells. So um, when that happens, that's something I'm going to be paying attention to. We stop getting hail, that's a bad sign. That is a bad sign. There are plenty of areas uh, of messiness here in this uh, in this supercell, and I'm inclined to think that some of this may be trying to be legit rotation. So, if we have any ground truth, if we do have any ground truth of this of these supercells down here, especially this one near Oakdale, 
uh, Louisiana to the south of Alexandria. That would be great. It does look pretty convincing, and I think that is a tornado warning coming through now for a new tornado uh, this cell right issued. here. Yes, so that's for Allen and Evangeline Parishes here. That's going to be for this supercell down here. We can see some pretty tight rotation just over Elizabeth. Uh, if there is a tornado on the ground right now, I imagine it's weak, but it's going to uh, tr it's going to travel off to the east mostly here. Uh, so we'll take a look at that, um, or to the east northeast rather. So this is our area of concern right in here, just over Elizabeth. Tornado weak tornado is issued. possibly on the ground. There it is a second time in case you missed it. Uh, so, okay, so yeah, so Glen Mora, and eventually uh, Interstate 49 here near Meeker and Cheneyville um, will be in the path of this uh, tornado warned storm. So if Reed has, if Reed Timmer is looking at a tornado here, I wouldn't be surprised. There could definitely be, there definitely could be a funnel. Uh, over the Elizabeth, Louisiana area where this rotation is coming together just in here. You can see those reds and greens together. We're also going to see a lot of those, those BB beeps, because um, that is, those are considerable severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, and for hail, considerable means oh, nearly two inches, golf ball size hail. So if you ever hold a golf ball up, in fact, I've got one I could show you, but... Um, you know, it's going to be a reference size. <laughs> I'll get my golf ball in just a bit so we can have live hail size comparisons here. All right, and let's make sure we go back to uh, Alabama here. This is southern Alabama. Our uh, previous tornado worn storm to the south of Op has been allowed to expire. As we noted, that rotation is weakening in here. Our reds and greens are becoming uh, diluted there, so I don't see anything imminent. We do have a bunch of weak rotation in all of these cells in southern and southeastern Alabama. Um, but I don't think that we need to relay anything about those besides the hail risk, the severe thunderstorm risk. So um, unfortunately today, the Montgomery, Alabama radar is, is, is down. So I can't... Um, we can't look at that. I don't think it's going to be back up at all today. So we're going to have a little bit of troubles with the radar um, as we go into the nighttime hours here in western Al southwestern Alabama. Uh, it's going to be difficult to look at storms uh, with that lack of radar. So I'm hoping that they don't um, pose a significant threat by then, but it's very likely that they will in southwestern Alabama later tonight. So... Oh, goodness, I hope that doesn't happen. Okay, so something else I also want to talk about. There's probably a decent number of people who are uh, watching in Illinois, and we've got some storms up here in uh, northeastern Illinois, including part of the Chicago metro here. And uh, these, simply put, are, a, are marginal storms here. So this is a dark green area, one out of five risk level. And that is going to be for wind and brief tornadoes. Brief tornadoes are possible with these strong storms up here. There's quite a few of them. Um, it's a, it's pretty mild, pretty chilly out with these storms in place. But there's just enough instability uh, for these cells up here near Chicago to potentially do something uh, along I-57 here and into northwestern corners of uh, the northwestern corner of Indiana. So we've got a bunch of cells popping up here in Illinois and Indiana. If there is a tornado warning issued up here, we'll definitely pay attention to it. Uh, I'll be watching to see if I can relay something ahead of time if uh, one of these cells does something up there. So that's another area that we're watching that is much less of a much, much lower of a threat uh, today than our, our cells down here in the deep south. All right, so let's look again here near Oakdale. It does look like the rotation's mostly falling apart, but there are there is an area of concern probably right in here to the northwest of Oakdale. It's catching my eye. But again, like I said, this is still producing quite a bit of hail. So our uh, our wind profiles in the atmosphere, they really don't become supportive for uh, tornadoes as much until later tonight. But once they do... It's not looking that great, guys. It's it's really not. So um, it, all of these storms going east for hours and hours will bear 
uh, a threat for tornadoes, especially as we go on with time here. So I would say that with each hour of the stream today, the tornado threat is going to increase until it peaks uh, probably anywhere from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. Central Time. Uh, and eventually also in probably past midnight as well. Yeah, we were we covered the uh, Heart Cell Alabama tornado warning. It was tough to see it on radar, but it did actually produce a, a significant tornado in Heart Cell Alabama on Friday. So that's why you pay attention to the tornado warnings because radars are not end all, you know, evidence. If if it doesn't show on radar, it's not happening. That is not true. That is not true, and that's why that tornado warning in place was very important. Very important. Uh, let's take a look at our correlation coefficient here to see if we can uh, scout for debris here. Any any particular sign that there may have been damage done? Go back in some scans here, just in case. There is nothing definitive on radar that I can see here on our correlation coefficient product. So if there was a tornado on the ground near Elizabeth, Louisiana, I don't see it on radar at the moment. And we don't have a confirmed tornado warning. We don't have a confirmed tornado warning at the moment, but it may be upgraded based on uh, surface observations. So if Reed's seen a tornado and he's got damage on it, he can report that to the National Weather Service office uh, and um, actually you know, get this warning upgraded if there is enough uh, evidence there. So that that's possible. We could see that confirmation coming through. Um, further to the north, I believe these cells are uh, possibly on our warm front uh, today, so we're going to be monitoring them. Uh, there are so many places today where uh, a storm could just latch on to something and uh, spin up a tornado as well. So even if the even if the tornado threat doesn't increase until these cells really head into the southwestern corner of Mississippi, um, at any point there is a possibility that um, any one of these supercells could uh, latch on to a boundary and uh, possibly spin up a tornado. So we're watching that. Like, This is a really tough day because of how many things we just have to watch at the same time. There's so many severe thunderstorm warnings, and any one of them could uh, just go berserk. If I'm not watching it closely, I'm going to fall behind. So uh, I need my eyes on radar today. You have to have damage to say it's a tornado. Uh, not necessarily, but it. I mean, the the funnel showing up at the surface and you know any dirt flying around is is the most clear way to say that there may be a tornado that has uh, formed and is uh, doing damage at the surface. It's it's obvious. If there is nothing flying up around, it's hard to say whether it's connected to the surface or not. So um, I I will leave that part to you know anyone who has. Uh, you know, a bird's eye view here or is looking at the ground. Maybe they have a drone flying up. <clears throat> Thank you, Desire or Desiree. I appreciate the support. Much appreciated. I I heard a lot of people in uh in Ohio and Pennsylvania, y'all there's a lot of power outages up there, right? Uh, I talked about those high winds constantly on Friday. Uh, we brought them up several, several times, and I think there's actually quite a few power outages over there. Um, so if you if you lost power, but you have a backup there, um, love to know about that. Love to know if um, you know talking about that has uh, verified. Uh, but I do see a lot of power outages, so I bet you that um, that did occur. If we have anyone in Ohio or Pennsylvania. Very, very windy. Yeah, it is not a confirmed warning yet. Watching all cells over here and also in uh, southern Alabama at the moment. Uh, all these ones in southeastern Alabama and into western Georgia seem to be exhibiting weak rotation. I think they're weak. Uh, but some of the uh, radar sites over here are down, so I can't see, I can't see um, them very closely, but yeah. I think these are mostly producing some significant hail. So let's take a look at that. Golf ball size hail in Lumpkin and Richland, Georgia down here in Stewart County, Webster County. 
Uh, Junction City in Talbot County in Georgia is also experiencing some probably uh, up to golf ball size hail here uh, in this pink, these areas of pink on the radar here. So Junction City, uh, Richland and Lumpkin and Preston. Those severe storms are entering your area and uh, bringing a bunch of hail with them. Man, that's probably hailing quite a bit. Yeah, thank you guys. If you're uh, if you're just getting here and you want to watch the per the meteorolo meteorologist perspective, I've always had problems with that word. I have to say it all the time. I'm in meteorology. I'm a meteorologist. How many vowels are in there? <laughs> Uh, you can get tongue you can get tongue twisted so easily. It's also a, a strong storm headed into Waynesboro, Mississippi. All right, let me see what Ryan wants here. Yeah, I'm here, Ryan. What you need? <laughs> okay, Ryan, I'm on Zoom now. Um, yeah, I could try. So it is tough, but actually I have a parallel to give. There was, there was a storm basically in the same area of, you know, a few months ago in the winter season and the velocities looked like nothing then as well, but there is actually a damage, uh, like a tornado debris signature, you know, back in December sometime. Uh, I'm sure the residents in, in and around Woodworth and Alexandria remember that one. Um, but Man, I like the velocities sometimes are hard to see uh, based on your proximity to radar. And uh, if that happens, it, you know, depending on where the beam is going versus where the winds are showing up, it can be tough to see. Uh, but if you look at the scan now, you can t you can tell there's this big area of red uh, showing up here. And uh, that I, that definitely tells me that this storm is rotating no matter how difficult it is to see. Um, and it has the potential to produce damage. So, uh, that's probably why we saw it. And, you know, if you see a funnel cloud and it's really thin, um, so if Reed saw a really thin cone tornado, for example, um, it's very possible that that, the resolution of these radars is, you know, not good enough. It's not fine enough to actually see it show up, uh, because it's so small. Um, so that's my best guess at it. And it should go to tell you that these, you know, when there's a tornado warning, the cell is dangerous no matter what tell what shows up on the radar. All right, guys, there we go. <clears throat> there we go, there we go. Yeah, so that tornado warning was allowed to expire, uh, for those of y'all watching here. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, Ryan is streaming on normal latency. You'll see his about 25 seconds, but for anyone who is curious and you, you're efficient with uh, watching the broadcast here on YouTube, you can actually go into the settings icon in the bottom right of the video player, and you can change the uh, speed of the live stream to two times. Eventually, it'll stop speeding up, and at that point, you'll have about equal uh, delay between my stream and Ryan's. But um, for everybody, you know, who's just casually watching, you don't need to do that. Sometimes 20 seconds is uh, a big difference maker, though. So I have low latency enabled for my stream over here. Your willow tree came down in Ohio. Man, those winds were strong. Man, those winds were strong. Dang, thanks for the verification, PCOMs. Pcorn, sorry. Gotcha. <laughs> the R and the N, they blend together. It's tough to see. <clears throat> All right, still watching these. Here's a great point. Here's a great point, guys. Take a look at this uh, supercell up here. This is to the north of Alexandria near Georgetown. We've been looking at this one. You can see this shape to it. If you look at it, it's kind of got like this shape, and then it comes out like this with the split updraft. When it when it looks like this, this is a hail. This is a supercell that's producing hail. This is not supportive of, uh, of tornadoes. To get tornadoes, we really have to see this hook instead of going this direction. It's got to come around like this. 
Um, and that is a clear-cut definition of uh, the wind profiles that these supercells are currently in. So the wind's going up in the atmosphere. Uh, they kind of make the cell just look like this up here uh, to the north of Alexandria. When, uh, when that hail subsides, so when this pink uh, here in the middle of the core here, if that goes away, it tells me that now the wind profile doesn't support as much of the hail threat, but now it's supporting more of the tornadic threat. So we're really watching and seeing if these hail cores disappear. And when that happens, we could see the tornado threat with any one of these storms uh, immediately become a problem. That is a, another instance of pat pattern recognition that's going to be pretty important today. Of course, part of this is in a radar hole, of course. Uh, man, that's really annoying because this cell over here looks pretty gnarly. Uh, headed towards uh, Newelton and St. Joseph in Louisiana along the river here. Eventually Port Gibson in Mississippi. Uh, that's probably going to produce some wind and hail damage at the moment, but that one could become a focus uh, later. Any one of these storms could be become a focus for tornadoes. <clears throat> yeah, glad to have you all here. Make sure for the best coverage possible you're watching Ryan and I. He's going to ping me on Zello whenever I need to come through, uh, and then I'll do exactly that. Then I'll do exactly that. So let me tell him that real quick. <laughs> Man, the, the operation we've got going on here is awesome that Ryan and I can work together like this. Ryan and I, I say it so fast now, I just, I, I push it all together. <laughs> it's already a catchphrase, Ryan and I, Ryan and I. <laughs> yep, everyone who's here, feel free to like uh, the, the live stream. It helps it get out to more people. Any sort of interaction is uh, great for the stream so that weather information goes out to as many people as possible. And please do the same to Ryan's. If you, if, you, if you can, just move the mouse a little bit or tap on the screen, tap that like button. And of course, we're almost to 50,000 subs here. If we're not already, I don't know yet. Uh, I, I can't tell. So 50K is on the way. <laughs> Do you like that rhyme? And then uh, also, uh, you know, that's halfway to 100k, and you guys know what that means. That's a YouTube play button. Never thought I would own one of those. Never, never, never. Very good, very good. Thank you all. Thank you all for the support. Yes, I did go to University of North Carolina, Asheville. That is where I got my meteorology degree, and also a concentration in climatology. Thanks for the questions, y'all. Paying attention to chat here. I can do really, really well with the chat here when we've got about a thousand people here. Uh, later on, though, Ryan is going to do something called redirect, which is literally, uh, if you're familiar with the platform Twitch for live streaming, it's raiding another channel. So you send every viewer over to another YouTube channel. We're going to try that later today because he's getting ready to go out and do some uh, recovery efforts in Mississippi um, with, with the team. He's going to cook hundreds thousands of meals for people he's going to deliver you know all sorts of uh, supplies and and aid over there which is just incredible but to do that he has to leave early tonight and then i will be manning the ship so to speak yeah it's like it's like raiding so you send every single viewer over to another channel it's going to get chaotic here and i'm going to do my best but i'm going to lose sight of the chat at that moment so anyone who's here now y'all are super nice super special uh to be watching both of us and i'll I'll be able to pay more attention to you. So yeah, those considerable severe thunderstorm warnings are coming through um, for areas in Georgia, especially large hail, man. Golf ball size hail. Let me get a golf ball. You guys know how large a golf ball is? Let me show you this. So um, I've got thin fingers, but a golf ball, the, these are falling out of the sky. And they're also being pushed forward probably at 60 miles an hour. Got to make sure I don't break my screen there. <laughs> I'm going to break the monitor. So golf ball size hail there. In, in Georgia, it doesn't happen that often because it's really hard to get the, the atmosphere that you need in place to support large hail like that uh, down in the deep south and in the southeast. 
it's very difficult to get that. But today, we have that dry air streaming in four miles above the surface from Texas, uh, New Mexico, northern Mexico as well. All that air is coming in from over there. It's dry, and that means that it's unstable, and uh, that can be a really efficient hail producer in any supercells. Is there any way to look at the soundings? Yeah, so I I will show soundings from time to time, but I'm not going to focus on them too much because uh, while we're going to focus on the meteorology, uh, an important part of the stream is also making sure that it's uh, digestible. Digestible. You live in Mars Hill. Very nice, very nice. you only seen hail once in your life in central Mississippi. Dang. Yeah, I mean, if you're north of Jackson or pretty far north of Jackson, you're probably not going to see hail today. But, I mean, there's a pretty gnarly uh, cell headed towards Jackson, Mississippi right now. Let's take a look at that, actually. Oops. Let's take a look at that. Because Jackson, Mississippi, you guys might be about to get hit by a pretty significant storm here. Yeah, look. Wow. Okay. That is pretty wicked. I'm going to tell Ryan about this. This is pretty ridiculous. Let me Let me give Ryan a green light here. Let's see if that works. Oh, it does. Nice. Hey, thanks, Ryan. I'm going to tell you right now, since we don't have any active tornado warnings, about this storm that's headed towards Jackson, Mississippi in particular. Look at the velocities and look at the hail. And that hail core there is nasty. That is wind-driven hail. That's golf ball size hail you can see right here. This is golf ball, and that's going to be thrown forward, you know, maybe 60, even 70 miles an hour, right towards the Jackson, Mississippi metro at the moment. I think this is our most alarming storm in terms of uh, doing severe damage at the moment. And if it uh, does happen to, uh, you know, spin up a tornado here, um, I mean, it's got, the, it's got the really dynamic winds here to do exactly that. So uh, this is a storm that bears our utmost attention right now, I think, as it's about 15 minutes from Jackson, maybe 20 minutes. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, man, look at that. This is nasty in those in uh, this area in the blues and greens here. You guys can see on the right side of the screen. This is this is a uh, this is like sixty. Yeah, this is seventy mile an hour winds. Only about fourteen, fifteen hundred feet above the surface. So, you know, that's the that's the height of a tall skyscraper. Seventy mile an hour. Well, actually, that's the height of the Empire State Building. I think so. It's pretty. It's pretty high up there. But seventy mile an hour winds up there. Those can easily make it down to the surface if they're descending. And with that comes the hail. So, uh, yeah, this is a pretty nasty one. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you're in Jackson, Mississippi, that the if uh, tornado sirens go off for this storm, even if it's not tornado warned. Uh, quite frequently, emergency management services that man those uh, those sirens will actually uh, sound them for, you know, significant severe thunderstorms like this one. Uh, this one definitely poses a threat. Uh, it might actually clip the northern side of Jackson, so maybe uh, Tougaloo and Ridgeland and Madison here to the north of Jackson will get the uh, primary impacts of this storm uh, as it gets closer, but... Yeah, it does look like it might go just to the north, but it has the chance to develop south at any time. So this is definitely a gnarly looking storm. I don't like this one. I don't like that one. So definitely good to come through to Ryan with that. Make sure we're looking at it. Very populated suburbs. Yeah. You have a friend in Raymond, Mississippi. Yeah, maybe maybe they'll stay away from the worst of this because it does look like the pocket of damaging winds is actually headed up towards Bolton. So anywhere Raymond and south of this line should hopefully stay out of the worst impacts of this in uh, Hines County down here. Yeah, if I don't like it, you don't like it either. That's a great, great uh, philosophy to abide by. Absolutely. I would recommend that. <laughs> How did I get warnings to automatically trigger? We've got National Weather Service backend being fed into custom graphics on a server um, operated by some of our tech people that are absolutely wonderful people. So it's it's all custom, all custom. 
the server streams to us, and then we stream it to you. As Outlook for Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama should be south of most all of the intense severe weather today. You can see that this uh, area in red here, that's our moderate risk. This is our enhanced risk. And then the slight risk up here goes right through Tuscaloosa uh, and down to just about Mobile. If you're north of that in Birmingham, the worst should be removed from you. But you're, you might still see a strong storm tonight. Uh, into the early night hours, the evening and the early night. Maybe even several rounds are possible. When you have a long, long old threat like this, this is our moderate risk for the most part here. It's so long because all these cells are just going to go through it for hours like this issued. from west to east. When you have that, um, flooding. Flooding is a big issue because you've got storms right here to the east of Laurel. Then these guys over here are going to track over the same spot. That's a, that's a good, good notion for flooding. Um, so definitely watch out for floods here today in these areas. On top of strong storms, man. Don't want to see it. Thank you for the support, Thomas. Much appreciated. Golf ball size 8 inches deep. Yeah, it's possible with the uh, significant hail threat today, uh, especially back in back in here in uh, southwestern Mississippi, uh, that you could get you could get a storm that just dumps, you know, not just hail on the ground, but like a layer deep of hail. So it could just be a layer deep of hail. That's definitely possible today. But it's not going to happen to everybody. Where in California did I live? I grew up in Ventura County. To the northwest of LA. Alright, so we still got this cell down here. This is to the south of Alexandria, Louisiana. You can see I'm zoomed out here. There's Louisiana. South of Alexandria in the center of the state. Uh, this was previously tornado warned. Um, again, we're watching this right here. My pattern recognition right here is this. This pink core. There's a bunch of hail up in here. Cheneyville, Meeker, uh, Interstate 49 here is getting slammed by hail at the moment. So hopefully we don't lose some windshields there. But if this right here, if this goes away and it, it just turns into some reds and oranges here, and then we see a hook come down like this, that is bad. That is what I'm watching for first and foremost today. That could happen uh, anywhere along the line from Mansura, Marksville, Black Hawk in Louisiana, Fort Adams into Woodville, Mississippi here. Uh, if that happens, that tells me that we have switched from favorable for hail to favorable for tornadoes. And um, that is the first thing that I will relay, uh, both to you guys here and to Ryan. We've also got this supercell over here. Again, I, I was talking about Nagatish. Natchitoches up here in Louisiana. This supercell's uh, pretty healthy looking. You can actually see that shape really nicely there. Look at that. At the moment, it's only got weak rotation. Maybe even a little bit of a convergence signature, a, a hybrid here uh, on this side of the storm and also right here. So this one bears watching as well. But I think our uh, our conditions back here, the wind is not as supportive for tornadoes. Uh, back in here towards Natchitoches. And Natchez, I think, is the uh, pronunciation. So um, we'll be watching all of these. There's so much to look at tonight. So much to look at. So you can follow the path of the storms uh, based on like the orientation of these warnings. You see how the warnings are like, most of them are these boxes. If you follow the boxes, you, they're all moving from west to east inside of these boxes issued by the National Weather Service. So I follow them like this, that direction, this direction, this direction. So most of the storms are going to be moving just about that. So a little bit north, mostly east is what we're looking at. Uh, if you could tell me where Cobb County is, it's, it's going to take me a while to find it. But, um, most of Georgia, man, look at that. Most of Georgia right now is mostly looking at, um, most of, uh, central and southern Georgia, rather, is looking at hail risk. First and foremost, we've got weekly rotating storms over there. They're weak, uh, but they are dropping some pretty impressive hail for a lot of people in, uh, Georgia. Western Georgia, mostly. I'll show you that here. 
So that's a look at this um, over here towards Americus uh, in Georgia. That's where our strongest cells are uh, to the south of Columbus. So along, um, along Highway 280 here, headed towards Interstate 75, this should leave Macon, Georgia alone for the most part, and maybe even uh, and also Warner Robins. Uh, so th this area should be left alone from the strongest storms. It looks like Americus in Georgia is going to take a hit from this, uh, this hailer, though, that we've talked about earlier near Lumpkin and Richland. So yeah, that's a that's a little update on Georgia. We've got all these storms over here um, in eastern Alabama, southeastern Alabama, that are going to pose mostly a hail threat, and uh, they're going to continue off to the north and east here into this part of South Carolina, including Charleston and Columbia, and also eventually to Myrtle Beach and Wilmington through the nighttime hours in this uh, area in yellow. So we have got a long way to go, long way to go. Let's go back to Jackson. That's the cell I'm most interested in. It looks absolutely disgusting. Man, this is just not good. We got 80 mile an hour winds here in the core, just over Bolton, uh, Mississippi. And we've got this, uh, these pinks and purples here. This is hail. This is big hail, possibly. If this isn't large hail, this could also just be a, a hail blizzard of sorts. So the the darker this uh, pink, these pinks and purples here in the core of it near Bolton, in uh, to the west of Jackson are the the darker those are, the more hail there is, and also the larger the hail could be. That's not one to one, so we always got to talk about both. It could be it could be a blizzard of little marbles, or it could be hail that is also uh, up to golf ball size, and it's also very very windy. Not a good sign. Yeah, if they're not ish, if they're not sounding the tornado sirens in Jackson right now, then they probably should be because this is this is definitely a severe thunderstorm that is worthy of getting people inside. That's what those sirens are for. Get inside, you know, and take shelter from a severe thunderstorm. You will be injured by this storm if you're outside in it and not in shelter. I will say that. What causes hail to form? Um, storms have updrafts in them. That's what makes a storm. You have to get that rising air, and it has to keep going. If the rising air is moving fast enough, it can it can hold things up in the storm. You know, you could you could hold the weight of a golf ball if the air is moving fast enough going up, and as it moves the air around while it's holding it up, it um and any ice particle can just start accumulating ice from around it in the cloud. It'll accrete onto that ice until it becomes too heavy, and then it falls out as hail. That's how that happens, in in a very basic sense. So it does look like the vast majority of the storm, Jackson, it's now pouring over the metro, but that's not the storm to be worried about. So you guys are getting a lot of heavy rain right now, but this guy back in here is to your west. He's going mostly to the east, a little bit north with the heaviest stuff. So Tougaloo, <clears throat> Tougaloo. Ridgeland and Madison on the northern side of Jackson, Mississippi, are about to be impacted by a pretty significant storm here. Skies turned a bit green. Yes, hail. That big hail there that's the size of the golf balls like this, that big hail is going to um, refract light. And simply enough, uh, when there's enough of that hail, it turns the cloud green. You might have heard of that before. Um, because all the light is going through the hail, and it's getting bounced around, and the result is your eyes see a green tint to it. So that's how you know hail is going on. That is not a good sign, of course, but it does tell us that we've got, you know, some ground truth here uh, headed into Jackson that some large hail might be happening here. The forecast is extreme for Texas later this week. We don't know yet. We can see this far out an area of concern for northern Texas through Oklahoma into southern Kansas. That's for next Thursday. And then a large area uh, next Friday as well that encompasses Missouri, Arkansas, uh, even up into the Midwest as possible. Um, but that is far out. To, it's too far out for us to nail down the specifics. All we can say is that um, there is a risk area here that could develop. It could get worse. Um and it could uh, pose a significant threat. So we're, the Storm Prediction Center is outlining it days in advance uh, to the best of their knowledge. 
uh, to, uh, you know, give you an advance heads up that you should be weather aware. That's what the purpose is. You should be weather aware. Uh, so next Thursday and Friday for a lot of areas. I wish I could show that to you, but it's not working on Radar Omega. I think they're working on that. So let me do this a little. This, this is going to be a little bit uh, a blunt here. No, don't pay attention to that right now. All right, let's look at uh, let's look at our storm prediction center here. See if this works. All right, this is this is the best I can do. I think. There we go. So this is uh, next week. This is for next Thursday. So here's our fifteen percent area for Thursday. Uh, you've got this here again through much of Kansas. It's now gone into northern Kansas, even towards Kansas City. It's, it includes Dallas-Fort Worth down in this area and Oklahoma City. Next Thursday, you're looking at that. And then here's our Friday risk. Next Friday, I will be streaming for Thursday and Friday more than likely. So these areas, if you live there, you know somebody there, uh, that bears uh, interest here. So all of this area for Friday, next Friday on uh, the uh, the 30th. I think is the day. Yeah, the 30th. Or the 31st. The 31st of, of March is Friday. And the 30th is Thursday. So pay attention to those days if you live in these areas. That severe threat will also continue off to the, the east, but it's a little bit less defined uh, as we go through next week. Okay? So everybody's paying attention to that. Here's a look at our dashboard. This is letting me know when the warnings are coming through. So we still we don't have any active tornado warnings at the moment, but we probably will get some very soon here uh, due to the storms that we're watching. All right, so back to Jackson. We are a, a few minutes out. You might be getting some hail from this uh, cell that's popped up in front, uh, but this uh, severe thunderstorm is going to impact the northern metro, it looks like. Uh, but all of the metros warned at the moment should hopefully be hearing uh, tornado sirens in uh, Jackson. If not, um, just be taking shelter. It's definitely wise to uh, have multiple ways to get a uh, warning of a big time storm going through here. Nope, tonight our risk is focused all in the south here. So you can see uh, wherever this yellow outline ends is the main focus of storms moving through. So all, all along here, south of Atlanta, south of Birmingham, and uh, north of Gulfport and Mobile is really where our risk is going to travel through and focus tonight. So, you know, nobody in Tennessee is going to see much of anything today other than maybe some winds coming through. And, uh, and yeah, definitely nobody in southern Illinois. We do have this of, up here, though. Uh, so our marginal threat up here in Illinois is focused around Chicago and just to the south, maybe as far south as uh, Champaign and Urbana in Illinois, and uh, per perhaps around Lafayette and Louisiana, or Louisiana, in Indiana, rather. Uh, these cells are just posing a marginal threat in the dark green here, so if uh, a warning does come through up here, like the severe thunderstorm warning uh, to the south of Joliet, then... Um, uh, that's uh, something we'll take a brief look at, but uh, these cells up here are going to pale in comparison to our risk down to the south that we're focusing on right now. Man, I really hope that this wind-driven hail does not... Okay, so I mean, we are talking about this right here. Right here, it's a little tough to see, but just over Bolton... We've got a report of golf ball size hail. So we have verification that what's going on right here, about to impact Clinton, Mississippi, and move into the northern part of Jackson primarily, is uh, is doing what we hope it's not doing, which is uh, some intense uh, wind and hail here. So we've got, we've got reports of people picking up golf ball size hail uh, to the west of Jackson here. So definitely be inside for this one. Man, that is a dangerous storm. You're not going to see large hail like this in Jackson very often. Uh, so let's take a look at our other storms. My goodness, look at that. So Ryan was just focusing on this one. I saw him looking at it down here uh, to the southeast of Alexandria. Oh. Okay, so close eye to be kept. Over here near Natchitoches in Louisiana, that cell is still strong. It doesn't look uh, imminently concerning, though. Probably some big hail is about to fall near Natchez uh, in the south part in uh, Natchitoches Parish here. 
I think that I think that Shreveport, if you're in Shreveport, Louisiana, you should be fine. You should be fine today. So um, hopefully the worst of it has passed through your area and nothing else develops in the back. Uh, but I'll keep an eye on that. So hopefully Shreveport is good to go. All right. Okay, so let's let's uh, take a closer look at this storm. So if we go up in height uh, with these uh, scans here on velocity, we can see a little bit of what's going on here. Um, it does look like there is a, I mean, the the mesocyclone that's very high up in the storm. It, it doesn't look that strong, but what's happening here toward the surface is this uh, part of the storm back in here is pushing out and, and forming this hook that we always look at here. And uh, at that point, if it sustains itself and we're pushing down like this, and we get some inflow down from the south into the notch here, uh, and that's where we can get tornado genesis, and it does look like we've got a chance at that. We've still got some large hail going on here in the in the uh, part of the storm, though, so this, this is classic. A classic presentation. If these pinks and purples, if they start to go down, they start to disappear, um, we're not looking good, okay? That's one sign that could accentuate that this is uh, possibly going to produce a tornado uh, very shortly after that point, so... We're watching this at the moment. It is warned for two inch hail in the core here. So Cheneyville in Louisiana probably just got smacked with some large hail. And that's going to go towards Hesmer and Marksville and Mansura in uh, Louisiana. So yeah, that is not a good storm. Man, these are intense storms. Jackson, we've got a few more minutes. This radar scan is uh, three minutes ago. Here's our next one. Clinton is getting smashed right now by heavy winds, and uh, shortly after that, some hail. Hopefully, they're hopefully they're not together, but I have a feeling that they are. All right. Anything else ongoing? All right. Mm. Man. And this is a core here of uh, 75, even 80 mile an hour winds here, just over Clinton, Mississippi. I'm telling you guys, north of Jackson, that's north part of the metro, and up to Tougaloo is really going to get smacked here. Uh, I think those traffic cams are really going to look, um, man, they're going to look... They're going to look like heck, I'll tell you that. Alright, so uh, we're watching those storms most intently. Um, we've also got all the ones in Alabama and Georgia to take a peek at. I might open a third uh, radar instance here. I'm going to have three radars going here. I think that's a good idea. So let me pull this up and make sure I'm looking at uh, Alabama and Georgia as well. Because there is a lot happening right now. Radar scans, if you're curious, uh, usually when we're in severe weather, radar is scanning about every minute and a half to three minutes on that lowest level that we're usually looking at, closest to the surface. So uh, we have, you know, usually about two minutes to look around at storms if you're in my chair um, before, you know, the next scan of data comes in and we can relay what's going on with the trend of the storm. So uh, that's why I look around every now and then, make sure that everywhere else is uh, accounted for, that we're thinking of everybody, and we can do all of that in a two-minute period here while we keep track of as much as possible. South of Hattiesburg. Hattiesburg is definitely in the line for some severe weather later tonight. Um, you can see these cells popping up right now. These are just little shrimps. These are just little shrimps at the moment, but eventually they are going to keep moving to the north here, and they're going to interact with plenty of boundaries that exist in a lot of places here. Any number of those boundaries can serve as a means for the storm to uh, grow upscale. Um, if you're in Wiggins, though, you're pretty removed from the primary corridor here, which is you know just kind of going through this area. 
uh, just to the north of Hattiesburg, but also including Hattiesburg and uh, up to Jackson. So hopefully Wiggins down here um, and also down to Gulfport and Mobile is out of the worst of it, but uh, the risk still includes some of you guys down there. Meridian, Mississippi, you're right in that primary corridor, guys. You got to be weather aware through the night. Th this is the direction these storms are going to go. The storms are going to get to you in Meridian, Mississippi. They will be there. It's just going to take them some a couple hours to get there. All right, so we've got, uh, man, on top of all of this, look at that right there. You can see this bit of the storm pushing down here. We do have some rotation popping up right in there. One part of the storm is stronger. This is a little bit of a rear flank at the moment. Let me draw that in black. A little bit of a rear flank at the moment is showing up right here and uh, concentrating. If this part of the storm right here in red, this part of the storm right here establishes itself and uh, gets to this point, we could see this uh, pop up right over Jackson. So a little bit of a concerning signature there. Uh, I don't need to tell Ryan about that one, though, because he's seeing the same thing. He's seeing the same thing. So we're seeing a little bit of an indication here that something's trying to take place on the southern side of this, which will impact downtown Jackson. So we're hoping that that does not happen right before it gets there. How fast are these storms moving? Uh, they are moving east at about 40 miles an hour. East at 40 miles an hour. So yeah, Meridian, Mississippi, you're in the corridor of highest tornado potential today. I'm, uh, I'll show you, you know, you see all of these warnings coming through, all these red boxes here. Uh, over here, moving through western Mississippi and also from south uh, southwestern Mississippi. They are going to travel this entire corridor. It's going to be the same cells. There's going to be things that merge with them that come up from the, the shoreline there. And uh, they're all just going to merge together, but they're going to keep going keep going for hours and hours uh, to the east so these are the ones we're going to be watching all day it is ridiculous to say that but that is what's going to happen <clears throat> missouri nope you guys should be fine in missouri today missouri you have to be weather aware next week into friday especially next friday the 31st be paying attention in missouri okay before we get our velocity data in, let's take a real quick look at that. That's bad. Okay, I'm hoping that this data is garbled. Let's look at CDR. Oh, I hope that's not a tornado on the ground. We need velocity data very, very soon. Very soon. Can we get velocity data, please? Three seconds. Okay. Uh, that doesn't tell me very much here, but this is not a good signature. So you can see the hook right here approaching Jackson. Uh, this area is the one to be concerned about, particular in this, uh, this northwest part of where the reds meet the yellows here. But um, So we got some pretty impressive winds that are moving into Jackson right now. It is definitely rotating. I'm just not sure if it's establishing anything. To the best of our ability, looking at uh, correlation coefficient, no, I don't think there's a tornado on the ground at the moment. But we definitely got some powerful winds and possibly some large hail falling right in here in the storm. No tornado warning for this yet. It does look concerning, though, and a lot of Jackson is going to get in on some very large hail and heavy rain here. I am seeing these pinks begin to disperse a little bit. But they are, I mean, you don't have to have pinks and purples in here to get two-inch hail, I'll tell you. So Tougaloo, Ridgeland, Jackson proper, brace yourselves for a pretty powerful storm coming through. For some of you, it might be something like you haven't seen in quite some time. Definitely with the hail. It's going to be loud. Definitely going to be loud. What is going on down here? That might be contaminated. Let's take a look. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this is in our water tower. <laughs> this is in the water tower line, uh, the classic. So there is actually a water tower here in uh, Brandon, Mississippi, that blocks this part of the radar, and I was looking at that. I got fooled by the water tower again. It blocks part of the radar beams, <laughs> and we can't see that very, very specific line of sight there. 
So I, I got fooled by it. Always have to check yourself on radar. Make sure you're looking at something correctly. Because there is a lot to the science of reading this stuff. But it's very important in meteorology. Alright, still looking down here again. You can kind of see this uh, This is down here in uh, central, the eastern Miss uh, Louisiana right now. It's moving toward Woodville, Mississippi, across the border. Uh, first, it's going to impact quite a few uh, towns here in uh, Louisiana, heading towards the Mississippi River. Um, but what you can see here is this area of pinks here. It's pretty big hail right now, pretty large hail. And the supercell looks a little weird. It's got like this large bit coming down and it goes around like this. Draw that in black for you again so you can see it. Draw in black for you again so you can see it. It goes around like this. So this long dangly bit here is uh, not exactly good for tornado genesis. It's much diff much more difficult to get a tornado when the cell uh, looks kind of like this shape. It can still happen, though, and we've got some concerning velocities that are, you know, pointing to possible weak tornadoes that could occur with this. But uh, at the moment, this is still telling me that the winds in the atmosphere are more supportive for hail than they are for uh, tornado genesis. Uh, that is not uh, that does not exclude tornadoes, though. That is just what I'm looking at. So if this area of pink here disappears. Um, we could be looking at more of a tornado or tornadic threat with uh, this cell in particular. It is definitely a big old supercell, though. This one up here by Natchez, south of Natchitoches, it doesn't look uh, too impressive. Again, our our uh, our environment up here is not as favorable for severe weather as it is. It is maximized over... Uh, Jackson to Brookhaven in Mississippi and to the east. That's uh, really our uh, area of interest for most of today. So let's see if this goes up at all. We do have a pretty strong mesocyclone with this, yeah. So these tan, these this area of tan right here on the uh, velocities on the right side of your screen, um, this is about 60 mile an hour winds, maybe even 70 mile an hour winds. So uh, if that uh, continues to be the case, although I think... Yeah, if this continues to be the case, then uh, we could definitely see some rotation ramp up. So watching this at the moment, but again, I think that this this uh, orientation of the supercell, when it looks more like this, it is uh, not as it's not going to be as efficient of a tornado producer, but it still has the chance to spin one up here. So let's uh, briefly check and make sure that's the case. Looks like it. I don't see a debris signature yet watching that one closely. Let's go back to Jackson. Jackson, Mississippi. I don't see a... Uh, it seems like our rotation area has definitely, uh, you know, it has definitely went kaput. So that's good. I don't see any imminent rotation right now, but this is still, you know, these, these winds here are pushing into Jackson very quickly. Um, so they could cause just as much damage as a weak tornado could, especially with the hail. I'm really thinking that a lot of the North Metro here is going to see some pretty large hail. Uh, and these, uh, this light blue area that's about to overcome Tougaloo and Ridgeland, these are 65 mile an hour winds, up to 70 mile an hour winds showing up pretty close to the surface. Um, so you're probably feeling those wind gusts at the moment. That's going to be a pretty dangerous storm. Pretty good look uh, at the power of a storm, too. This cell right here has popped up right in front of, uh, of the Jackson cell that's moving through. And it's already, got, it's already producing some really large hail. So in no time, the, the updraft of the storm has managed to um, form really, you know, pretty large hail here and start to drop it, uh, you know, only in the matter of 15 minutes or so as it uh, tracked over Jackson. So there it is forming right there. And there it is with a, some bright pinks in there. Possible golf ball size hail already showing up here. 15 minutes after the storm forms. It's really fast. Yeah, this could definitely be a very long Sunday evening. And a big problem is uh, Jackson. You know, you're getting through this, and you're like, oh, man, finally the storm's done. Once it, once it moves through, you're getting the worst of it now. And you're like, oh, man, the storm's done. Well, nope. You got a big old flooding risk behind you because this storm back here, 
Uh, that's tracking along Interstate 20 is also going to dump an inch of rain for a lot of people. And then you might even get some more after that. So we've got like several rounds of cells just moving in the same direction here. And that's going to uh, that's gonna drop a lot of rain. A lot of rain in this area. So definitely a flooding risk. I imagine we might see some flash flood warnings come out uh, probably within the next hour. Maybe a little bit after that after all these cells have moved through this area. And then after that, you've got cells all the way out here in central northern Louisiana that are going to go in the same path. They're going to go in the same direction. Um, even more rain, you don't want to see that. So Clinton, Mississippi, we got golf ball size hail. So that's, uh, that's definitely fallen uh, for a lot of the Jackson Metro at the moment. It does look like most of the heaviest winds are uh, to the north here in Tougaloo and Ridgeland and Madison, like I've been talking about. So um, hopefully everybody there is not caught outside in that storm, not losing any windshields. Yeah, definitely. If this if this storm can produce that sort of hail and wind, it can definitely knock down some power lines. Can definitely take some shingles off the roof. No, no problems. No doubt about that. Is there a river to flood? I am not certain, uh, but there's probably plenty, plenty of creeks down here in Lowlands. So, if I had to guess, flooding could be a could be a concern. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's another thing we should be talking about. The lightning. The lightning is going to be absolutely massive with this. There's going to be so much lightning. There's going to be so much lightning with these storms, and the reason for that is because we're in very large instability. So it's it got very warm. very warm and issued. very humid out there. Very warm, very humid out there today, and uh, there, and that's going to mean that these storms are going to produce just as much lightning. So the more humid it got, the the warmer it got out there in southern A Mississippi right now, has been the issued. more lightning there's going to be. All right, so here's our tornado warning. I'm zoomed in on the storm. We finally got a little bit of a concerning uh, area of rotation. It's been sustaining itself. So you can see it here. This is about 10 minutes ago. This is about five minutes ago. And this is now with our tornado warning. Uh, there's been just enough rotation, I think, just around Cottonport and Long Bridge in Louisiana to uh, warrant this tornado warning. So no surprise there. And... Uh, Somebody put the pronunciation for that in, in chat. Avoyel, av Avoyelis. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Avol, Avols, Avoyels, 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 Avoyels. There we go. All right, Avoyels Parish here in Louisiana. Avoyels is in a is in a tornado warning. So Mansura, Moroville, Bordelonville, and Big Bend all be should be taking shelter. Of oils. There we go. Yeah, nonstop lightning for a lot of these storms in uh, Mississippi and Louisiana and eventually into Alabama. All of you are going to get in on some intense lightning. Intense lightning today. So I bet, uh, I bet Meridian, Mississippi, you all could see lightning there for sure uh, from that storm that's near you. Man. That's going to be a lot of lightning. We did make it 50k subs. Let's go. We got to keep it going. Keep it going. Thank you guys for the subs. Going to get there to 100k in no time. Covering this uh, springtime weather. I wish I could have made a video too about the, the storm that's coming up. It's going to impact California as well. We're going to get some more rain and wind there. Uh, another possible atmospheric river event, and that's going to move across the across the states, just like this one is, or uh, just like the last one did. And this, people in Wisconsin, some people in Wisconsin got a foot of snow from that, if not more than that, um, this morning. So these storms are big time spring storms, and uh, we're going to get another one of them too for the next week. So hopefully, I can make a video about that. But I've been a little bit overwhelmed by these streams, and I, I think these streams are uh, super important to do as well. Just as pertinent. Just as important of immediate threat here that we need to cover. So 
So what's this? Uh, I can't see this report here because it's on top of each other. But I imagine that that does look like it says... Man, why can't I see that? There's definitely some two-inch hail in Jackson. Definitely some big-time hail has just moved through. It's going to go to the, the eastern side now along I-20, especially. There could be large hail down here with the cell as it continues. Uh, this one up here is kind of is uh, starting to merge with the uh, main cell. So um, this one could also be a... This one is also producing some big-time hail. I think it's over here. There may be a little bit more rural of an area. Uh, but eventually it's going to make its way into Scott and Leak counties in Mississippi. All right, so let's go back to Louisiana. <laughs> Again, not anything on radar that tells us too much, but at any point there could be a weak tornado with a, a radar presentation like this. There could be a weak tornado ongoing, so let's take a quick look at our correlation coefficient. Yep, nothing that is uh, showing up here in our returns. I don't see a, I don't see evidence on radar of a tornado, but that it doesn't have to show up on radar. We're looking about four thousand feet up into the storm here, and uh, it could be doing damage at the surface while not showing us much up here. So this is a tornado warned storm for Avoyles Parish in Louisiana. So uh, make sure you guys are taking shelter here. Big hail is also going to come through. Possibly even a, a downburst in uh, in accordance with this. This uh, this area right here could either be some big hail or a, a downburst or even as even a microburst with uh, some small hail in it, and that'll show up with uh, plenty like blinding rain. So definitely don't want to be driving out in that. Hopefully nobody. Hopefully nobody's outside in this. And, and even so, like the amount of lightning would make it just as dangerous too. Let me check up on that lightning. I want to see how much lightning there is. Because I think it's going to be a lot. Yeah, there, there, there's a pretty good amount of lightning. These are some real springtime storms. Real springtime storms. Thank you, Judy, for the support. Oh, yeah, I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it that along I-20 is receiving some uh, pretty major damage here from the storm or any one of these storms with uh, big hail and winds. The winds that blew through some of these areas were definitely 60, 70 mile an hour winds that can easily topple over bunches of power lines and stop traffic both directions. Easily, easily, easily. All right, let's take a look at our friends over here in southeastern Alabama real quick. This strong storm is just to the south of Dothan. Uh, I believe it's just possibly producing wind and hail damage at the moment. does not look tornadic as it stands here in Houston County in Alabama. So I think we're all good there. Of course, we've lost the uh, we've lost the Montgomery radar today, so we're going to be working with limited data here, but... Do the, I'll do the best I can. Uh, over here in Georgia, we talked about Americus just a bit ago. It looks like the storm is going to move up to the north of Americus in uh, Georgia, in Webster County, and also Sumter County. So it looks like uh, Schley or Schley County, Ellaville, jo Ellaville, Georgia, will probably get in on a strong storm here. Uh, but really, the, the extent of these storms, if you're watching the radar here, uh, they they're moving just about this direction. Anything south of Atlanta uh, and anything to the north of uh, probably the Florida state line right now is going to remain mostly sub-severe. So uh, anywhere in here, so including uh, maybe Macon and Warner Robins, Georgia, uh, all the way over to uh, Montgomery, Alabama, and down through I-75 to uh, Valdosta is probably the extent of our severe weather uh, with these storms over here. Plenty of hail reports and wind damage reports coming out of the Jackson Metro as we expected. Looks like up to one inch hail has fallen across eastern Jackson. Pretty gnarly storm here, but no, no tornado warning with this one. We did have a brief area of concerning rotation in the Jackson cell. Uh, if I saw another one come through and Ryan didn't see it, then I would uh, let him know. I'd come over the air. 
we'd uh, collaborate here. But as far as I can tell, he is on top of everything that I'm also looking at. Uh, but we have got so much stuff to look at today. And it's only, I think, I think the tornado threat only goes up with every hour that we stream. Every hour that we're live today. Thank you, April, for the support. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Our tornado warning is in pink here in Avoyles uh, Parish in Louisiana. This is in eastern Louisiana, headed towards the Mississippi River. So anyone in Avoyles Parish hopefully is taking shelter right now. Um, hopefully, uh, I think Marksville is, is in the clear from this storm, other than some spare lightning strikes that may occur. So it's definitely one you just want to stay inside for. But anyone take shelter in Avoyles Parish in the interior most room of your house. Definitely some large hail coming down here. Man. <laughs> no, it's all right. I got plenty of water. Thank you, guys. Yeah, the difference between multiple tilts and the radar is literally just the radar is sending out a beam this direction, and then a beam this direction, and then a beam this direction. Bunch of little different angle differences, so it's scanning all sorts of uh, parts of the sky here. And we call that complete scan, all, all of that in there, a volume. So usually we're looking at the lowest part of that volume, because that's the closest to the surface. That's what we care about for most of the people in the path of the storms, is to get the ground truth, or as close to it as possible. But there's also some valuable data as we go up in the air, so that's why the radar scans uh, quite a few spots. Thank you for the support, Linda. Appreciate it. Why does the donut hole form? So yeah, we you can see uh, what we typically call a donut hole here on the left-hand side of your screen here. It's over Moreauville in Louisiana at the moment. Uh, this happens because further up in the storm, we can see the back end of the storm wrapping around like this and uh, going towards the surface and descending. The updraft is over here and ascending and then going out into the storm like this so um we when that happens we can see them just sort of uh, form this weak echo region right in the center here that's the center of our updraft right there in the center of the updraft um it's going aloft into the storm and then all the rain just falls on this side all the rain falls on this side and gets wrapped around like that because it's a rotating storm so that's uh that's what we're looking at there that's a that's a donut hole <laughs> we got all sorts of names for things like that. Yeah, it's also called a bounded weak echo region. No, multiple names for it, but the donut hole is the one you should remember. The, the easiest one to remember. Let me let me go to live chat here. Whoops. What is the radar elevation? Uh... This, uh, this radar in particular is scanning at about 0.4 degrees uh, from the... Uh, I don't know how high up it's sitting, though. I don't know that about every radar. Uh, but right now, the storm that we're looking at here is about 4,600 feet from, uh, from Fort Polk. This is a, almost a mile up into the storm that we're looking at right here on this scan. So we can see hail in this area right here, and the pink's primarily about a mile up into the storm. That's what we're looking at there. All right, let's go back and look at Jackson, make sure nothing bad's happening there. We're right on top of the radar, though, so the data becomes just a little bit garbled. Can't tell very much what's going on here besides some strong winds. Hopefully we don't lose the radar right here. They're built to withstand a, quite a bit of a beating here, but uh, this supercell is not a joke. Not a joke. So... We, we need this data for sure, so let's let's not lose the radar right now. Cross your fingers for the radar. <laughs> Thank you, Cody. Appreciate the support. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you guys for being here, of course. Hopefully you're able to watch both Ryan and I to get the best coverage on YouTube now. We're working together. Make sure we don't miss anything. Make sure we don't miss anything. And while we got, uh, while we got a, a, a smaller audience here, I can help you guys out to the best of my ability. Roanoke, Alabama. I see that in the chat. I think you guys are 
mostly removed from the primary corridor of activity today? Uh, let me show you. Let me show you. So uh, right here is Roanoke, Alabama. I'm going to circle it for you. There you are to the north of Columbus, Georgia. Uh, you're in the slight risk, and you're right on that border there of uh, where the primary risk is to your south. So uh, I would be more worried in Auburn, Alabama, and, and uh, possibly Columbus, Georgia, and definitely Montgomery, Alabama. Roanoke, you should be on the northern side. The northern side of these storms going through this uh, path, this area here. Do it in black for you. Uh, on the northern side, you're definitely get some heavy rain up here. You might get some hail with it too, but you're a little bit removed from the primary tornado threat today. Okay. Yeah, you can find the Twitch channel in the description, actually. It's down in there. There's plenty of links down there. Who is Ryan? <laughs> Ryan Hall, y'all. You know, the guy I work with. <laughs> Alright, let me look at Silas, Alabama next. I won't be able to do this for everyone, but I am going to try the best I can. Try the best I can. Silas, you are pretty much in the um, the main risk area here. I think. There you are. So you are in the uh, you are in the moderate risk today. There you got there you guys are on the border, Alabama and uh, Mississippi. So anywhere from Meridian down to Silas through Waynesboro, Mississippi, this area is a moderate risk. A four out of five essentially means that there is a moderate certainty of severe weather coming through here. There's a certainty of some moderate severe weather coming through. So um, you're definitely going to see something nearby you. It might not be over top of you, but uh, this warrants being weather aware. I think you just had this severe storm go through, which is why you're asking me about that. Uh, and that's uh, that's good. That's good that you're paying attention. It's good that you're paying attention. So I bet uh, you might have seen some wind or hail come through there in uh, that area just just recently. I think Dothan, Alabama is mostly the the city proper should mostly be removed from this storm now that's impacting you all down there. Uh, in southeastern Alabama, but there are some strong winds uh, showing up along State Road 53. So Ashford and Gordon in uh, in uh, Alabama down here could be getting ready to uh, get in on some uh, some severe weather from this. Not tornado warned at the moment. We just got a severe thunderstorm warning down here. So some uh, heavy winds coming through. All right, back to Mississippi here in Jackson. We've still got golf ball size hail showing up in reports here uh, to the north of Brandon and Value in Rankin County. The storm's going to pass, continue to pass right along I-24 for um, hours. It's going to pass along I-24, probably hours. And if it's not that one, it's going to be the one behind it. These storms are going to be here for a long time. And you can see how powerful these winds are. This is our radar site right here. You know, it's got this uh, black outline. That's too close to scan. Uh, but right above it, just 50 feet above the surface, 65 mile an hour winds just there. Uh, and that's going to overtake I-20 here. So anyone driving along Interstate 20 is going to be in the path of a very uh, significant storm here. And there's, a, there's the flash flood warning I was talking about, y'all. Yeah, big old flash flood warning for Jackson Metro. Yep, that's going to be the story. There's so many uh, there's so many uh, heavy thunderstorms just moving through here. It's going to pose a, a flooding risk for sure. So we've already got flash flood warning issued for this in green here. You can see that outline in green there. That's the flash flood warning uh, in that green box. And then we've still got this heavy thunderstorm moving into the warning itself. So uh, quite a bit of... Uh, Quite a bit of rain is going to fall here. Interstate 20 is going to be a mess. All right, we've got uh, we've got Brad Arnold. Um, we got two Brad Arnolds there actually. Let me change that for you. Let me see. Uh, they're all Brad Arnold. Which one's not Brad Arnold? There we go. So we got Chris Hall's uh, feed down below me. That's Chris Hall, Storm Chaser Chris Hall, currently uh, sitting in Mississippi. Chris is uh, is going around 
and making sure that everybody from Friday's uh, tornadoes are is accounted for. So he's looking around at, uh, at the damage, and uh, he's collaborating with people. But down below that, uh, that second one down there in the bottom right, that's Brad Arnold. He's fueling up right now. Um, Ryan's also got Brad Arnold on his stream, I think, from time to time. He is in Woodville, Mississippi. So if I circle that for you, Brad, Brad Arnold's right here, right here in the blue circle. And uh, this uh, cell that is currently tornado warned in Avoyles Parish is headed towards him in that general area. So uh, his feed will be one to watch. I can bring him up on the big screen and we'll watch Brad Arnold. So I, I got the chasers on the stream this time so you guys can uh, keep track of it as best as possible. Once again, uh, the meteorology side of this thing, um, this supercell is not looking uh, very healthy for tornado genesis. So right now the tornado threat is a bit less with this cell, and it's because it's taking this shape right here. So watch me draw it. You can see it take this shape right here where the, the bottom part of the storm here is kind of uh, pointing this direction instead of uh, coming out in a hook like this. So because of that, I think that this cell is not immediately going to produce a uh you know a strong tornado it could produce weak tornadoes that cycle quickly um but uh, we're, we're seeing that shape of the supercell at the moment once it changes which i think it will it's going to move into an environment that i think it will change uh that is going to be something very much worth watching so continue to watch the uh, presentation of this cell the moment it starts to hook out in front like that um we'll take a closer look at it uh, but also we see this uh, pink area here. This is all that hail in there. That's another thing that tells me that this uh, the atmosphere right here is produce is good for producing hail. It's not so good for tornadoes. It's hard to get those two together. So if we see the hail disappear, we could see tornadoes. Um, that is a that's a pattern I'm going to be paying attention to tonight. If you're just tuning in. Atlanta should be good. You'll be on the northern side of everything up there. Um, for the entirety of this uh, severe weather day into next morning. So um, Atlanta should be mostly fine. You might get a strong storm or two coming through, but nothing nothing in comparison to uh, the folks that are going to be in this area, this area down here in the red and the orange. So you can see that outlined all through here. Let me draw that in black. All through here is our primary corridor for severe weather today so atlanta you're all the way up there let me scroll to the right atlanta you're all the way up there birmingham you're all the way up here you should be removed from most of it but you could see some issues with strong storms and some flooding that's what i think yep make sure you guys get this info out like both ryan and i streams uh and uh, sub to the channel if you haven't already these streams are something we've been developing and working on for a long time and uh now that i've started my chapter streaming here you get multiple perspectives into the team multiple perspectives to see just how we work together um and uh really how we do such good coverage and be able to help so many people the columbus georgia area you guys are going to get some heavy heavy rain and some hail probably uh, moving through you can see this uh, side of the storms over here these storms have popped up earlier in the day and uh, they're going to track off to the east all the way through south carolina all the way to wilmington north carolina going to track off all the way over here in the yellow uh through the night and uh, those are going to be primarily for damaging wind and hail that's going to be the theme over here for now these cells back here are tracking through an environment that's going to be very favorable for tornadoes into the night. So a long time to go. All of these cells right here that are in Jackson, all this, uh, all these cells that are down here headed towards Macomb and Brookhaven in Mississippi, these ones are going to continue to move all the way east through this red area on the map, all the way east to the orange area, and eventually reach Columbus, Georgia as well. So... All the way over here, you guys do have a tornadic threat, strong storm threat from these cells that we're watching over here right now. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. So now we've got a destructive severe thunderstorm. That's just come through right there. Uh, and I believe that is... That's for Alabama, actually. And I know exactly why that's happening. 
I know exactly why that's happening. It is def. I think it is uh, this one over here near Silas, right? No, it is not. It is. It is for Montgomery. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. 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 Ah. Wow. Look at that, guys. Look at that. Dang. There, see how many see how many storms there are to look at today. I can't almost hardly keep track of all of them. So much is happening. Uh, so this destructive thunderstorm, it, it is a um, incredibly dangerous thunderstorm for Shorter, Milstead, and Franklin, in uh, to the east of Montgomery. Incredibly dangerous. It's going to head up towards Auburn, Alabama, as well. And uh, what you see here on the radar, what you see here on the radar, this is a this is a hail spike. I'll draw it for you. So this part of the return right here, the radar is uh, coming this way, coming through the storm just like this. And here's all that hail in the pink and purple. And uh, the, the radar beams are hitting the hail, hitting the surface. They're getting reflected down the surface, back up off the surface, and back off the hail to the radar. So we call this a three-body scatter spike because of that. Three-body scatter spike. And all that, all that means to you guys is that there is large hail. Super large hail. And uh, so this destructive severe thunderstorm warning is for baseball size hail. Baseballs are falling out of the sky over here. Uh, and they're going to come pretty close to Tuskegee. And they're going to pass over uh, Interstate um, 65. What is that? 85 there? Interstate 85 there, east of Montgomery. Yep, I-85 there. So, really strong thunderstorm over here. Like I've been mentioning, uh, all these cells in eastern Alabama, southeastern Alabama, moving into Georgia, are primarily for hail. They're primarily threatening for hail right now. Um, so, yep, there's your truth right there. Now we have baseballs. Now we got baseballs falling out of the sky. Oof. Okay. Take another look at Jackson, and then we'll look at our other supercell entering southwestern Alabama. Or not Alabama, southwestern Mississippi. My stream doesn't have closed captions because we have low latency. Closed captions are not available when, it, when you have low latency. So I'd have to stream with a 30-second delay for closed captions to come up. Ryan's got closed captions on his stream, so... Um, if you need closed captions, he's got a more, you know, he's got a more uh, direct line of uh, communication to you in terms of, like, what you need to be looking at. I am making sure that I'm looking at everything that I can tell Ryan to look at. So we're the, we're the first line of defense here, and then Ryan's the, Ryan's the main relay here to all of y'all, making sure that you understand it. Still got a 2.5 inch hail report 14 minutes ago. 14 minutes ago um, for this cell that's just moved through Jackson. So very, very large hail is still possible still possible as it moves towards Branch and Forkville and uh, Morton and areas along Interstate 20 for a very long time here in uh, southern Mississippi. Very long time here, man. Okay, thankfully, uh, we are that uh, tornado warning was just allowed to expire. That was in Louisiana, so we are without a tornado warning at the moment. But we do have like, uh, we do have a good you know twelve to fifteen severe thunderstorm warnings. So uh, definitely nothing to play around with right now. This is the hail part of our severe threat today. All the hail's falling right now, and then it might transition. The risk is going to go up. Uh, as we go into the night, it's going to transition to a tornado threat first and foremost. So, first of all, we're getting all this uh, golf ball and baseball size hail falling all over the place here. Um, and then next up, we will see the tornado threat start to ramp up quite a bit tonight. So, wind-driven hail, just as dangerous in certain spots as a tornado can be. Tuskegee, thank you. Got it, got it. Yeah, you. I mean, 
and you're just not going to see, you know, baseball size hail is something you see in Kansas and Nebraska in the plains. They, they, they know the, the stories of that. Down here in the Gulf states, though, you don't really see baseballs all that often. That's not, that's not a frequent occurrence. That's not a frequent occurrence, so... So this uh this destructive severe thunderstorm it does look like um that hail definitely peaked there just a couple minutes ago you can see that look at that spike come out of it oop wow, how long did this go look at that spike come out of it there bang so now we've still got large hail in this in this storm but hopefully the the largest hail may have just fallen uh and the storm may be starting to peter out. That's the hope here. And, and, and this storm in particular, if you're curious, is moving more to the northeast like this instead of to the east like our storms over near Jackson. This one's moving more to the northeast because um, it's, it's what's called a left split. Um, it, it's a, it's a hailstorm and it's a splitting off. It's splitting off a previous cell a long time ago, but also just now. You can see this. Uh, watch this in the last couple scans here. So this cell was kind of together. You see that right there? It's just one little guy near Pike Road. I saw somebody in chat asking about Pike Road, Alabama. And uh, so you guys got some heavy rain and hail then. But then the storm split apart like that. And this one went up to the north. And this one uh, down here near Cecil is going down to the south and more to the east. That's our right split. And then we've got our left split cell up here. So that happens when the updraft itself splits apart. And we get two different storms as a result. Um, and um, really, you see that in a, a particular environment where uh, usually the winds are mostly going the same direction as you go up in height. So usually they're going the same direction. Uh, and when that happens, each side of the storm can take off and split apart. So some pretty large hail. And typically left splits here, especially in the in the Great Plains, not in the Gulf states, but in the Great Plains, the left splits do carry a big hail risk with them. Big hail risk. Um, uh, but this time we're seeing it in the Plains because, or not in the Plains, this time we're seeing it in Alabama. So that doesn't happen very often. Y'all down here in Tallahassee, Franklin and Milstead in Alabama are going these people are probably seeing the largest hail they've seen in many many years if they've always lived here many years might be the largest hail they've ever seen uh, for some people down here all right so let's go back to louisiana still watching this storm it's going to move into an area of poor radar coverage for a while here uh, as it approaches Woodville, but we've got Storm Chaser Brad Arnold uh, down two to the sat down two from me. I don't know why this keeps moving around on me. This is real annoying. <laughs> I got to figure out a way to fix that. Got to figure out a way to fix that. Let's see. Let me get uh, the proper tag on here. There's Chris Hall's stream. There's Brad Arnold. So Brad Arnold's that bottom camera down there. Tallahassee, thank you. So Brad Arnold's down there. You can see the the top of that storm. He is over here in Woodville. There's this uh, little indicator. It's pretty small there, but you can see him over here in Woodville. This is that supercell, and you can see actually the supercell shape on the left side of Brad Arnold's screen. We can actually bring that up. Let's do that. Let's do that. Let's look at Brad Arnold here. So here, look at look at this. On the left side of Brad Arnold's screen here, you can see a new tornado the, the part of the issue. supercell to the that you you can see the edge of the cloud. So uh, down to the south of the storm, it's clear skies and sunny skies, but uh, off to the north of the storm, you've got that big part of the supercell that's coming up, and that's what you're looking at on the right side of the screen right here. So there's a uh, there's Brad Arnold's stream looking at the uh, supercell. A new tornado watch has this been is issued. Not virtual. This is not virtual rail fan. This is Brad Arnold. I'll have to fix that later. So that's what we're looking at there. Pretty cool stuff. So let me show you that again here on the radar. Here's Brad Arnold in Woodville, Mississippi, hanging out here. Here's the supercell. On the southern part is the, the clear skies right here. You, this, this is where the clear skies are to the south. 
And then up here, you see that big old anvil that's overtaking Brad's location there in Woodville. <laughs> really cool to see that. Like, literally just, literally just tilt this radar image as if you're Brad Arnold looking at it, and then there you go. You can see the supercell out in front of you. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah, thanks for the grats on 50k. We're halfway to 100k. Halfway to 100k. Yeah, we're looking at Indiana and Illinois, uh, northwest Indiana and Illinois on the occasion watch today. Has been issued. So we can look up at that. So up here, we do have that marginal risk up here for uh, Indiana and Illinois. As I said, you can see all these cells moving through. It looks to be over for most of Chicago. These cells moved through. There was one severe thunderstorm warning here uh, for uh, the Gary and Valparaiso. These, these areas up here uh, are in a severe thunderstorm warning, but that's really just going to be for wind. It doesn't look like there's a tornadic threat with these storms up here, but um, there is a marginal risk for uh, much of northwestern Indiana and northeastern Illinois and eastern. So we've got also a strong cell down here. We can take a close look at that. Uh, briefly here before we return to the south. So let's take a let's take a closer look at that. Here's a strong cell near Tuscola, Illinois, and Mattoon. Uh, and if we look at the velocity, we can see if there's any rotation. Well, I need the high res velocity. There we go. Yeah, not really any rotation to talk about here. Uh, in this cell. So there is a chance for some brief tornadoes up in here, uh, but most of the cells have moved out of the Chicago area and are now uh, in northwestern Illinois or northwestern Indiana. So hopefully Gary, Gary, Indiana is out of the most of it. And uh, and this area in near the university is uh, getting ready to go through the worst of it um, with some heavy rain and gusty winds. It's pretty chilly outside though, I think. This is a this is a cold core risk. So it, it bears some heavy rain and so forth, but we don't have that same we don't have that same big old risk uh up here. Not even close. So just a just a one out of five in this dark green for a slight chance at some tornadoes. Some strong storms though, definitely for it being, you know what's what's the temp out there? Is it like fifty degrees out there, fifty five or sixty? You know. Where I'm, where I was from in Southern California, that's definitely just a little bit of a, some t-shirt weather. <laughs> but 60 degrees in California, man, uh, you'd probably be putting on a coat at that point. Metro Atlanta should be mostly fine. <clears throat> Metro Atlanta, you're just going to be on the northern side of the risk today. You can see that down here. Here you are over here in the the marginal, the dark green, one out of five. Uh, you'll be on the northern side of all these storms that are passing through. You can see all our warnings down here. We'll take a close look at that again and go through them all. Uh, but uh, up here, you're just going to be on the northern side. So removed from um, most of the severe potential, but you will probably see some strong storms uh, in the vicinity going through tonight into the early morning hours. Absolutely. Okay, so uh, let's go back here. We got all night to go, guys. We got all night to go. Looking again at eastern Mississippi, I saw something that was actually, I think we can see it better on uh, Radar Omega here. A little bit lower, re uh, a little bit lower of uh, some uh, resolution here, but if I play this back, if I play this back, you can really see some interesting storm uh, dynamics here. Watch this right here. Watch this cell right here as it passes in Alabama. It, you can see it just split apart. So this part goes up to the north like that, and this part goes to the east. This was the storm near Silas, Alabama that we were paying attention to just a little bit ago. Both of them have a hail core in them, and both of them have severe thunderstorm risks. So both of these split, both these storms that have split off of one are now producing hail and severe thunderstorms, uh, and we've got some incredible interactions going on. So this cell right here, let me draw it. This cell's going this direction toward Thomasville in Alabama. This cell's going north, and eventually that one going to the north is also going to run into this one going to the east near Meridian. 
All sorts of cells going everywhere here. Man, that was ridiculous. Left and right split supercells everywhere you look. Actually, this whole line is split into the left and right. You can kind of see that here. That was our this was our right split earlier that's fizzled out, and now this was the the left split up here that's producing baseball size hail near Tus Tuskegee and eventually towards Auburn, Alabama. All of these cells over here again are going to be primarily uh, big old hail threats, especially this one near Dothan, uh, approaching Albany in Georgia. All these cells up here are big time hail threats right now. The tornado threat does not start up. Well, actually, it is basically started up now, but with each hour of this stream, it gets more and more uh, dangerous. So tornadoes, we're really looking uh, every hour of the stream that passes. Uh, as we go into the night here, I'll be here. Uh, the tornado threat in increases. Until we will probably reach the apex right about anywhere from 9 to 12, 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. to midnight uh, central. South of Atlanta for Noonan to Peachtree City. It's possible that a cell could track on the northern side of this risk, yeah. And if, if it is up there, it will probably be um, the primary risk for it in the nighttime hours would probably be tornadoes, yes. It might hit, we might get some storms in Atlanta in the morning, but um, again, they're not, they're not going to be as strong as they are uh, going through these areas primarily. I'm not I'm not going to leave you guys out in Atlanta of any, you know, possibility of storms. You are in a marginal 1 out of 5 lowest risk. So, there could be strong storms go through, but um the chance is much lower for this for this area up here uh in the Atlanta metro, especially because when the storms get to you, they'll be uh they'll be much weaker in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to include as many people as possible. You see all these uh, all these supercells over here. They will probably in some form, or these guys up here, these storms right here, will probably in some form through the night track all the way to the east into South Carolina, Charleston, Columbia, and eventually to the coast of uh, North Carolina for Wilmington. So southern North Carolina <laughs> and eastern South Carolina, if you can remember all those directions. Um, this uh, area in yellow is really where these storms are going to travel through the morning. Up there, though, the tornado threat should not be as high as what we're looking at here in the orange and red. This is really the the maximized corridor for tornado potential right now. As we go into the uh, as we go into the evening, we're really watching these storms move in this direction. When should you be on alert? We can play it out. We can take a look at uh, the latest model run that's going to tell us uh, when this stuff is happening. So here's our model run. Uh, from the latest hour, let me make sure I got more data. More data is good. So if we play this out, right now we're looking at about um, 7 p.m. Central. So in an hour from now, uh, Columbus could be in on some of these storms that are passing through the area. Macon and Warner Robins could be in, in these storms. And then it does look like they actually want... To, this model wants to resolve them all going to the north. So perhaps into the nighttime hours, there's going to be a lot of rain up here. For Birmingham and Atlanta, and even uh, Greenville, South Carolina. So it may, it looks like these storms might actually just continue to grow and go upscale. But there you can see, look at all the stronger storms that are passing through this yellow area. They're kind of just staying to the south of Atlanta as we go on. So that's why, that's why this uh, yellow risk area is in place. That's our two out of five. And to the north, you just have this uh, heavier rain passing through, but all the stronger stuff is just to your south. So perhaps Peachtree City and uh, Noonan would be closer to the stronger storms into the nighttime hours. Active night ahead, for sure. This is what you don't want to see, though, over here. This is what you don't want to see. This is, this is around 7 p.m. Big time cells moving through 10 p.m. Uh, Central Time here. And then 2 a.m. Central Time, and then 5 a.m. Central Time. Like, these, they're still here. They're still in our, our primary risk area, just still going. It lasts so long today. So that's why, uh, I, I mean, I'll try to be on as late as I can be. As late as I can be. 
Uh, but I can tell you that right now, Ryan is not. Ryan is going to be on until he has to go to sleep because he will be assisting with um, tornado recovery efforts from Friday's storms in uh, northeastern Mississippi. So he has to he has to go to bed for that. And when that happens, I will take over. He'll send everyone over there over here, and we'll uh, do our, I'll do my best. Thunder boomers, plenty of thunder boomers out there. All right, let's go back and look at some more storms in depth here. Make sure that I don't have anything that I need to tell Ryan imminently. Got some new radar data to go through. All this stuff in Jackson, lots of heavy rain falling right now. Um, all this in Mississippi, it looks like it's uh, just become a damaging wind and, and uh, some hail for the most part here. So this is kind of a mess. This is kind of a mess up here, but what we're going to be watching, actually, is uh, these cells to the south. So Monticello or Monticello in Mississippi, Brookhaven to Hattiesburg. You can see, we were talking about this earlier, they're, they've been moving up. And they are going to the north. And as they go to the north, they could be developing. When they reach anything that's coming out of this storm up here, I'm going to draw that in blue. This wind is coming out of the storm going to the south like this, and it's going to create a boundary just about here. These storms are going to reach that boundary, and they could latch onto it and produce tornadoes right along this uh, this path right here. So an area of immediate concern maybe uh, for the next hour or so would be right about here along Mendenhall to Raleigh, uh, Mississippi, because these storms are possibly going to interact with each other. And when they do that constructively, that could lead to tornado genesis. So we're looking for constructive uh, interference here. Some large, some large words to make sure that um, you know we're we're keeping track of the risk as best we can. And yeah, make sure you all, all of y'all are uh, make sure all of y'all are hydrating, taking care of yourselves. Good to see you all. I'm taking over Ryan's stream right now. I see that. Um, I'm doing my own thing over here on my channel. You can find that um, hopefully pretty easily, but um, it is featured all over Ryan's channel. If you want to watch both of our streams at the same time, I've got you here. I'm uh, keeping track of the meteorological side of things here. If you've ever seen me pop up on Ryan's stream, I'm in the background right now, um, and I'm actually streaming my perspective. This is the second time I've done this. Uh, so we're getting used to things over here, voicing my thoughts, and putting it into, uh, trying to make it make as much sense as possible. So right now, again, we don't have any uh, severe thunder, or I'm sorry, we don't have any tornado warnings. Um, I've got the same overlay. Tornado warnings will pop up for me just like they will on Ryan's stream. So um, yeah, this is good. Whenever I need to come through, I will put uh, those green lights on. So don't worry, still working closely with Ryan. We're covering all these storms right now, but I was just talking about, I think I was coming through there. I was just talking about how um, this uh, line of storms right here that's just moving through Jackson at the moment in Mississippi is going to put out these uh, winds to the south here. They're all going to come out of the storm to the south, and then these guys are moving north up here. So watch that Watch that animation there. See how they're moving north and developing there as they uh, come towards uh, Mendenhall and uh, up to Collins and Seminary north of Hattiesburg in Mississippi. When they come together up here... Uh, and meet the the outflow from these storms up here. There could be some problems. We could have some problems up here. So uh, that's the next area I'm watching. But I want to let you know that every single hour that Ryan and I are streaming tonight, the tornado threat is going to go up. So right now we're watching a bunch of severe thunderstorm warnings, a bunch of golf ball size hail. We've even seen baseball size hail reports today already. Um, but as the night goes on, we're going to transition from mostly a hail threat to more of a tornado threat. Uh, and let me show that off on Radar Omega right here. We take a look. In our, in our areas in red, uh, on, the, on the radar here, this area of red that you see here, this is our moderate risk. And if you've heard that a lot, a moderate risk is simply a, um, a, f a 4 out of 5 risk. And uh, so 5 out of 5 being the highest risk, that is our moderate risk area. And it means that there is a moderate certainty of severe weather occurring. A moderate certainty of severe weather in this area will happen. 
And then also in the enhanced for everybody else, that's a an enhanced threat of severe weather. So once we get into the four and five, once we get into the fours and the fives of uh, severe weather, uh, storm prediction center outlooks. That's when we really start to see the moderate and the cert and the high certainty of severe weather occurring. So that's what that means here in the red. Man. So yeah, that golf ball size hail, guys. I'm I'm seeing that damage. On, I've got Ryan's stream pulled up, so I can watch everything and listen to him at the same time. Um, yeah, that is that is wild. We've been we've been ho hooting and hollering about it. We've been hooting and hollering up about it, y'all, on my stream and on Ryan's stream, hooting and hollering. And there you go, on Ryan Ryan's showing that hail damage now. It is ridiculous. Sorry for all the caps. If you if you're gonna if you're gonna talk in the chat, make sure you don't talk in all caps. It might uh, get timed out. But I I see that Stephanie. Thank you for the th thank you for the message. Thank you for the message. We just got to keep the we got to keep the chat as clean clear as possible so that um, information is relayed efficiently if it needs to be in every every manner that we have access to. Tennessee is in the clear, yeah. I have PayPal. You can go, you can donate to the channel. Um, first and foremost, we'll we'll find ways to integrate more things in the future. But right now, we're working with the basics. So any support, I appreciate it. But always take care of yourselves first. All right. Uh, if you do want to support, I think that that uh, button is right below where you send a message in the chat. But again, I'm not going. I would I would prefer you buy yourself a coffee first. <laughs> Yep, I've got, I already downed a, a whole glass of water, and if I ever have to take a break because of that, you know, um, I'm going to put Ryan's uh, audio up so you'll be able to hear stuff. So don't worry, plenty of, uh, plenty of, uh, no silence on this stream, I hope. Not for too long. It's true, Jackie, you're absolutely correct. Um, I'll, I'll figure out a way to integrate that, and I'll have it in the description so that it's not in the front of everyone's faces, okay? I do appreciate that, um your uh your your knowledge there though your your outreach it does mean a lot because yes super chats some of them go to some of the portion goes to youtube <clears throat> it is it's a good take it's a good take about time i go solo nah i really like let me tell you why let me tell you why i don't want to go solo right now the reason that I'm staying with Ryan is because I believe in his mission and we have an incredible presence together to get this out to as many people as possible. And, you know, even it's it's telling as many people as possible about the weather, yes, but it's also inspiring as many people as possible. Inspiring as many people as possible. If I can inspire the next, you know, some of the next generation of meteorologists by doing something like this and focusing on some of the technical and scientific aspects of this, that is perfect. Okay. And then the other part that I'm going to say about that is I, when Ryan hired me a year ago, what happened on Friday is like, he's like, that's what we're going to do. A year ago, he's like, this this is the plan. Eventually, we're going to be able to do that. And then yesterday, and then on Friday, we raised $120,000 for tornado victims. And uh, we did the absolute best we could to get all that info out. That's what I, that's why I'm doing this. It's a big reason why. <laughs> Have there been any analyses of the Rolling Fork tornado? <clears throat> or, uh, oh, you're saying comparisons? Uh, probably, but I think what I would wait, wait for when we're looking at those uh, tornadoes that happened on Friday is just a, a, a complete um, National Weather Service report of them. So right now they, they have preliminary data, and uh, we, have, we have to wait for them to really uh, complete that stuff so that we can... Because I, I don't want to speak for them. They're out there in the field actually actively looking at what's happening. We probably only have snapshots and a couple of videos, you know? Yeah, even if it's not like your if even if it's not a career choice to go in the weather, it's an interest. And the more people who are interested in weather, the more weather aware people there are as a result. Because y'all aren't gonna just keep it to yourselves. You're gonna talk to people about it. And if more people know about it, that's good. 
It's the best thing that we can do. You only just learned about who Ryan is? Well, welcome, Joey. I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be new people. We hit 50,000 subs here. This is my second stream on YouTube. Like, there is going to be new people, and I absolutely don't want to leave y'all out. So I, I appreciate you coming here. Ryan is my, Ryan's my coworker. Ryan's my coworker. Ryan is who I work with, so uh, he's also my boss in a sense of it. But, you know, he's, he's the person who has given me this opportunity. <laughs> When are we getting merch? We'll have to come up with Andy merch in the future, but right now that's not that's not a main focus. I, and I want to talk less about that stuff on stream because I know a lot of people don't really like the the merch talk on stream as much when we're trying to cover severe weather. This is definitely focused on the science and technical side of things here to make sure that um, everything makes sense. Everything together with Ryan's stream is uh, of utmost and peak quality, uh, quality check, quality control, and you know, things that make sense to the best of our ability. Yeah, Tennessee, you guys are fine today. In fact, the weather map across the entire U.S., if we take a quick look at that, if we take a quick look at that, I can show you that right here. This is the map of the U.S. from the National Weather Service. We don't see any of those big old areas of light brown, uh, except for some in uh, eastern New Mexico here in southern uh, southern Colorado. So just about right here is our only uh, wind warnings. But uh, the rest of this is just um, we've got you know our tornado watch back in here, severe thunderstorm watch over here, and some flood watches that are ongoing. Uh, for central Alabama and, and central Georgia. But the rest of the country, you know, besides some Rocky Mountain winter storm stuff, uh, the West in California is starting to ramp up with this storm that's approaching. That's going to be the case over the next few days. It's going to come through through the inland and then cause some severe weather in uh, next week for, you know, all the areas in here. So uh, we're going to be watching that severe weather next. But right now, it looks pretty good for everybody who's not in the south. Almost everybody else is dealing with mostly quiet or calm weather. Maybe a little bit of unsettled stuff here and there. But um, California, you're next in line. And then we'll see that go across the country once again. So look at our dashboard here. This is where our warnings come through. This is also where I can change the lights for Ryan. I'll be on this page whenever I do that. Um, we've just got a bunch of severe thunderstorm warnings, just so many of them in orange there. That's something I'm paying attention to. And yeah, if you're watching today, you're watching Ryan and I, Ryan is eventually going to do what's called a redirect on YouTube. He's going to give it a shot. When that happens, everyone from Ryan's stream will be over here. And the reason for that is because um, he has got to go to sleep because he is going to help tornado victims tomorrow and for a long time. Okay, so when that happens, uh, I will be taking over and hopefully uh, getting as many people as I can uh, their weather here for the night because he's going to go to sleep maybe 10, 11 p.m. Eastern. So in a few hours from now. And there's still probably going to be quite a bit of stuff happening there. We're hoping not. The, the hope is that nothing else is going on. This is not like Friday at all. That's what we want. We want this not to be like Friday, this uh, last Friday that just happened. If it's, a, if it's just a bunch of hail for a while, we're good. If it's a couple of weak tornadoes, hopefully that won't hit anyone. Um, but we really don't want to, I really, I really don't want to see Friday again. That was bad. That was bad, but we did the best we could. Uh, around uh, Natchitoches and Natchez, you'll probably have some strong showers coming through. Like all of these back in here in eastern Texas uh, in this area is going to move through the Natchitoches area and eventually Alexandria. Um, but I think that I think that we're really going to see our severe threat maximized in Mississippi. Uh, possibly these cells over here near Georgetown, uh, Louisiana, and maybe up to Monroe. Uh, those ones are pretty strong at the moment, but, um, you know, I'm not sure if those are going to become tornadic storms. Uh, all I know is that everything along here will experience a transition to a higher tornado threat uh, with each hour of the stream that we do here. So each hour that passes, higher tornado threat. 
Right now, I guess it's pretty low because we have only had a couple of tornado warnings and uh, we've only had storm chasers report some weak circulations on the ground. Uh, thank you for the support, Janet. Much appreciated. Thank you, Brandon. Love in-depth analysis. I do my best. I'm glad that you're aspiring as a result. I hope I can help uh, fuel that passion. Thank you for the support, Dreamweaver. Is Lynn in chat? Lynn, I'll give you mod. I know you. There you go. Welcome, Lynn. Appreciate you. I have the power to do it. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. <clears throat> is there a reason South is getting hammered constantly with tornadoes? Yeah. So, wow, tornadoes again. Wow, severe weather again in the South. This is actually when it happens for uh, this area. This is the peak of severe weather season for the Deep South, for the Gulf States. Um, March into April is really when most of our, our low pressure systems, all our big old storms, they come through the U.S. and they really uh, maximize the severe weather in the deep south. Once we get into May and then into June, that risk transitions to the plains and goes up north. That's a, that's a severe weather climatology. It's the regularity of uh, storm season. It shifts with time each year. It doesn't shift. Uh, it shifts a little bit overall, but each year we see primary risks uh, in different months. What is for dinner? Jersey Mike's. Y'all are so curious about that. I have Jersey Mike's in the fridge too, so whenever we're done here, I've got another sandwich to go, but I am fueled up for all this stream. Yeah, so Midwesterners are going to have to start really paying attention in, uh, in you know, May and June. Maybe even, I mean, there might be a, there could even be a risk that includes some of the Midwest uh, next Friday. So April through June, anything's possible up there. This is GR2 Analyst, Gibson Ridge. It's a pretty expensive radar program, but this is also what uh, a lot of the National Weather Service uh, employees like to use. They use this along with a different radar program called CAVE or AWIPS 2. So this is the this is the detailed analysis radar program. It's got a hefty price tag, but it is very useful. And then of course, we've also got Radar Omega here. You guys, a lot of y'all know and love Radar Omega, but if you don't know about it, you'll definitely see it in uh, videos from Ryan and I all the time. Yeah, it is dang worth it. In fact, before Ryan, I actually never, I never did have a GR2, so I'm really happy that, um, I mean, I've taken to this program almost instantly. I've always used Radar Scope in the past, so um, now that I have multiple radar programs that I can switch between and uh, use the advantages of each of them, like Radar Omega has so much data, uh, and GR2 really can show the fine level detail very efficiently and include a lot of uh, uh, optimal things, like all these these pink blobs here that tell that tell me all the data, you know, relevant to the atmosphere. We got Cape there, Storm Fuel. We got all sorts of stuff that I can just hover over. Yep, I've seen day five and six. Hopefully making a video about that. Uh, Ryan is not going to be available to stream next week. He will be helping out in Mississippi. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to cover. If we do need a live stream on Thursday, then I will be, I'll be uh, on, at the helm here. And possibly even Friday as well. Right now we don't know that yet. It's a little far out for severe weather. These cells down here are really starting to grow. We were talking about this again. I'll, I'll reiterate what I said just a bit ago. But um, these, uh, this blob of cells up here that's produced a lot of wind and hail, it's got a boundary just about here. It's got these winds coming out of the storm and pushing to the south just like this. Uh, so uh, these cells are going to the north, and they're going to hit this boundary just about at Mendenhall, Raleigh, maybe a little bit south. Uh, and if they do so in the right fashion, we can start to see them spin like a top and uh, start to produce tornadoes or have a tornado threat associated with them. So um, really watching these guys here in south central Mississippi as they go off to the north. 
What's the synoptic setup today? A very interesting one. That's a good question. Uh, up aloft, we've got dry air streaming in from uh, Texas and Mexico. So this is all the wind, uh, like miles above the surface, is coming from this direction, and it's all dry, dry air over there, dry and cold air over there, which is uh, supporting our big time hail threat today, uh, with a lot of instability. And then eventually, um, into the nighttime hours, that'll become more of a tornadic threat because the wind profile will change, and we'll get some of that uh, nocturnal jet coming through. Uh, but our, uh, in terms of pressure, this is just a tiny little short wave, just a tiny little short wave that's uh, off the southern extent of our trough. There's a big trough, but it's up to the north, so this is very subtle forcing along a, a warm front. So I can show that to you real quick, actually. This is a good visualization. Let's take a look at that. I think if I do this. Yeah, that's pretty good. So um, let me draw it for you right issued. here, and then we'll get to our tornado warning there in Alabama. If I draw it right here, you can see the warm front passing right about this area. I'll draw it in black just so you can see it better. This is the warm front just about here, and the A air is streaming to the north into issued. it. Tornado warning again if you didn't hear it the first time. So this warm air is streaming north into it, and um, if you remember our cold front from Friday, it kind of just pushed through this area, just like that, and then it stalled out right here. And now this warm front is now it's become a warm front. So cold fronts can become warm fronts. They stop moving, and then they start moving the other direction, and warm air comes in. So uh, that's what's happening here. And this warm front right here is serving as a boundary for all these storms. You can see all these little blips showing up there. Uh, all along our front. So there's our there's our forcing for storms, forcing those storms up uh, along the warm front. So that's what's happening today. It's uh th there's a reason why the stream on Friday I was talking about was like, oh man, you know this is just a a marginal risk on Friday. Today's risk was marginal, and now it's gone all the way up to moderate. So uh, the verification I was talking about, you know, like we we got to go back and see why that happened. Why Why is it that our risk has escalated so much as we get to the day of? And it's because it's really come into focus that that front has uh, stalled in the area and that uh, everything else in the atmosphere is like, hey, this is really, really supportive for uh, severe weather. So that's why the risk has gone up since then. I talked about it a few times um, that, you know, we were expecting a lot of cloud cover over the next couple of days in this area. Now there's not as many clouds. Now the surface heats up. Now everything is unstable and ready to blow. Ready to blow. So I drew it as best I could. So here's our tornado warning. Um, I talked about Thomasville in Alabama uh, a little bit ago. This is the storm that went through Silas. I know we have uh, a viewer or so from Silas, Alabama. So this is that same storm. Now it's approaching Thomasville. And uh, from this far up in the radar, it's... A little bit difficult to see, but our rotation, I'll circle it right here. This is where Brett Adair is. Our rotation right there is where the greens and the reds are touching. So um, this storm is rotating, but we're looking at we're looking at it about a mile and a half up. So we have no clue what's happening at the surface. But Brett Adair is right there. And if Brett Adair is streaming, we might have a little bit more information about what this storm is doing, but I think it might be rain-wrapped. Thank you for the support, John, from Quebec. I appreciate it. So yeah, we've, we've still got, we've got some rotation in here. That's prompted this tornado warning. Lots of cells to look at today. We're focusing all over the place, but I mean, you can just see all these cells in a in a line here. Look at all these cells in a line. And they're all moving the same direction to the east and uh, slightly to the east-northeast. Unless it's this one. This one right here has just decided, nope, I'm not going to move the same direction. We're talking about some left split supercells here. Let's see if I can uh, get a better look at this. This is that left split near Meridian. It's traveling mostly to the north. And uh, anything that's uh, split off to the left, let me sh let me see if I can show you guys this. Does this go all the way back? Yeah. All right. So look at it here. We're near Silas, Alabama, uh, near Waynesboro. This was this was about um, how long ago was this? 
this was uh, over an hour ago. So over an hour ago, this cell was right here near Silas. And then since then, it has moved in this direction. Just watch it go through. Watch this. Watch it just split apart into two. That's so cool. I mean, when you get an example like that, that you just got to watch that. You just got to watch that. So uh, whenever we get a, a split like that, the right moving cell, the cell that is moving to the east here, that one's going to pose more of a tornadic threat. And the one that's moving to the left or towards the north, this one is more of a hail threat. Uh, and that's almost, almost always going to be true. So um, whenever we see that, we've got a uh, more of a tornadic threat with the southern one and more of a hail threat with the northern one. And that's happening more than once today. We, we're seeing that all along this line in Alabama. Sp cells are splitting apart here. That's not going to stay true, I think, uh, because into the night, the wind profile that's supporting something like that in the atmosphere is going to change. And I think that it's going to change towards, um, you know, being more conducive for tornadoes and sustained cells rather than splitting ones. <clears throat> do I use Radar Omega? Yep, sure do. Here it is right here. This is Radar Omega. I'll be switching to it here, here and there every now and then. Right now, I really like using it to show you guys the risks and all the data that comes with that. But if we're looking at the Radar program here... We're looking at a GR2 analyst, and this is what I use to tell Ryan things like, hey, you should look at the storm. So um, whenever I have something to relay, it's because I'm looking at this. So yeah, I, uh, if we're looking at this screen, I'll give you a brief overview. Let's go back to uh, Mississippi. So we're looking down here in Mississippi, south central Mississippi here. Uh, and on the left, you've got what the radar is showing in terms of the, the rainfall we've got here and possibly even some hail in the uh, darker reds to pinks. And then on the right side, you got the winds. So if you can imagine this, the radar site is up here. Winds going away from it are going to be in red and winds going toward it are going to be in green. That's really tough to remember. It took me a long time to, you know, nail this down. Um, so it's not expected for anyone to just know this off the top of their head, but we're looking at the wind and we're looking at the rain. Should be uh, hopefully pretty simple. And then I'll tell you what's going on. <laughs> There's a lot to look at. If a tornado forms in the left split, will it be anticyclonic? More likely anticyclonic? Uh, it could be. Um, honestly, the dynamics of a left split are going to be dependent on each cell in its environment um, whether or not it becomes tornadic and spins either direction is almost going to be i mean i would say it's pretty hard to tell it's pretty hard to tell there are there are a few cases though that uh, could say that you know it will be anticyclonic rather than cyclonic but uh, that's some that's some of the fine-tuned stuff that I am not going to prioritize on this stream. <laughs> That's that fine-tuned stuff. And sometimes we can't even tell, you know. Like, we'll do the best we can, but it'll be a bunch of uh, post-analysis that will be needed to tell us why. All sorts of data. <clears throat> So uh, if these cells, yeah, so we're still watching these cells again. Um, this one is just tracking right along I-20 and just probably causing plenty of wind damage all along the interstate here. That's going to reach Meridian, uh, Mississippi, before all of these ones down here are going to reach that area. So these ones are moving more north. Some of them are starting to move to the right, uh, more to the east. But I think that at Meridian... You're probably going to see mostly damage from this supercell up here that is, uh, I don't even know. I mean, it is a supercell, but it's also just a big mess, a big old blob of uh, heavy winds. So hopefully the tornado threat is minimized for Meridian, Mississippi. Um, I could see the tornado threat being maximized more down here um, in, the, in this area towards Laurel. So hopefully, it, hopefully Meridian just gets um, the damaging winds because 
Uh, you guys are going to get something, so I'm hoping that it's not a, a I'm hoping that it's not a tornado threat. I think our newest area of concern down here is near Laurel as well. If we look at this cell, it's beginning it's rapidly beginning to rotate. So I I might come through and tell Ryan about that since we talked about that. Uh, while I was on Ryan's stream for just a moment. This is probably the one that I think we might have to watch for a while here. So let me see if I can, uh, let me see if I can come through there, turn the lights green. Oh, he's so fast. Hey, Ryan, uh, I'm watching just to the west of the storm that you're looking at now. Um, I think the one near Laurel, Mississippi here, it's going to come up to the north. And eventually, um, it's starting to get some rotation. So I think that one, you know, depending on how it interacts with the storms that are tracking along I-20, uh, we could see this one start to uh, produce a much more significant imminent tornadic threat uh, along Interstate 59 here. So I've got my eye on Soso and Laurel, Mississippi at the moment, as well as the storm behind it. Well, there you go, Kelly. I was just on Ryan's place just for a second now. <laughs> Got to turn the lights green. Absolutely, Tim. I do my best to inform. Is the space between the split called the dry line? No. The space between the split is... I don't think there's a name for that. Uh, where that split happens is really just... Uh, that's just where the updraft that's supporting the storm itself has a split apart. So I don't think there's a name for that. Not that I know. <laughs> Hope you're all doing well. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves. We're getting started with coverage tonight. I'll be on for a long time. A long time. I'm thinking and I'm thinking it's probably going to be another six hours or so from this point. Um, Ryan will be on for another few hours, but not that entire time. Eventually, um, it'll all come over here to this channel. Uh, as we go into the night, and hopefully there's not too much of a tornadic threat to pay attention to, but I will do my best to uh, lead through then. What causes the cells to split? It is mostly, so these cells over here are splitting. They split just about this area in Silas, because right here, the wind is all mostly traveling the same direction as we go up with height. So what that ha what that does is it causes things to split this direction, and also this direction around where every bit of the wind is moving the same path. So things are going to split off in either direction when we have a straight wind profile. I'm up here in Minneapolis. Absolutely, Karen. Yep, I feel great today, guys. I hope I can be on for the entire time and not have many or any interruptions. Feel great. Thank you, Frank. Much appreciated. Let's make up a name for it. Oh... If there were a significant reason for that area to, like, you know, be of concern, like, there's a, this is where it split, so that tells us something about this location, then we could come up with a name for it, sure. But I don't think that's necessary at the moment. <laughs> is North Alabama in danger? If you're in Huntsville, if you're in Decatur, or Athens, Georgia, or Florence, you should be fine. You should be fine today. You know, if any storms come through, they're going to be garden variety, I hope. The risk to Hattiesburg, you guys are in a pretty significant risk right now over the next uh, over the next few hours, I'd say, down here in southeastern Mississippi. Hattiesburg is in that moderate risk from the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, and that is primarily for tornadoes down there. So there is a good chance that... Um, there there will be a strong storm capable of producing tornadoes somewhere in the vicinity but not um but hopefully that doesn't happen if it does we'll be here for you central louisiana we're still watching back there i'm waiting for more warnings to come out i'm checking occasionally but uh back in here i think the environment is more is more uh geared towards hail so any supercells like this one up here to the north and east of Georgetown, it's been going for a while, but it has not uh, looked tornadic whatsoever. It looks like it's a, a, a big-time hailer. So until that changes for Louisiana, which it will, 
it will in this area. It will become more supportive for tornadoes as we go into the evening. Um, but until that happens, um, I'll keep an occasional eye on it to see if any storms are going to, you know, exhibit rotation that we need to talk about. Uh, but until then, we're really looking at hail mostly over here and heavy rain. Appreciate it, Jennifer. Appreciate the mods here as well. Why are the storms with large hail not listed as PDS? We actually did have one uh, that was a destructive severe thunderstorm earlier in uh, eastern Alabama, and that was for baseball size hail. So once you get up there to destructive, then they're going to be called extremely dangerous uh, storms. So extremely dangerous severe weather because you don't want to get hit in the head with a baseball. The chase cams have been frozen for a while. Oh, yeah, they have. Good point. Good point. Uh, I don't know if I can fix that. Let me see if that works. Thank you for telling me. This is the first time I'm trying to use the, these uh, chaser cams, so hopefully I can uh, pay as much attention to them as possible. All right, let's see if that works. Thank you for bringing that to my attention. Hope you're doing well up there in Canada. If Brad, if uh, Brad Arnold's feed down here doesn't come back, it's it's mostly because uh, it's mostly because he's in a in a cell dead zone. But there we go, we got it back. Appreciate you. I'm trying to pay as much attention as I can to everything. But this is my first stream that I've got the the chaser feeds up. Why are we getting so many tornadoes this year? Um, some years are just going to be more active. It's highly dependent on these big-time events. If they produce a lot of tornadoes, everything comes together with each event. Then um, we're going to see more. Every, we're going to see more for the year. So central Louisiana, we're still looking at central and northern Louisiana. We're really looking at that hail risk right now. So uh, Rayville, Delhi, Tyndall, and Tallulah in northeastern Louisiana. Uh, this storm is pretty, the storm's probably producing some pretty big hail, or quite a bit of hail, so, um, up here, uh, along I-20 again, everywhere along I-20 is just getting battered with hail today, uh, if you're in Louisiana or Mississippi, so, I-20 is not a good interstate to be driving on today, but yeah, more so, we're looking at hail up here for the most part, that's why you keep hearing those beeps coming through. Um, those are for golf ball size hail, severe thunderstorm warnings, and um, you're looking at the result of that. So this uh, area of pink and purple up here, golf ball size hail up in there probably in Richland Parish. And uh, some uh, golf ball size hail possible down here in this uh, area of pink in this storm headed towards Extension and uh, Gilbert and Chase in Franklin Parish. All right, let's head back over to Mississippi. Now that we've looked at those storms, I think we're still just looking at hail for the most part there. I appreciate the support. Sorry if I missed anybody. Thank you, guys. Very much appreciate the support. We passed 50K subs today. We're on our way up to 100. On our way up to 100K YouTube subs. And we'll be making more. We'll be making more videos for that. Uh, for more weather coverage, of course, it's got to be made worth your while if you are gonna sub. Of course, we're looking at GR2 analysts right now in this. Uh, this is our radar program, but I've also got radar Omega up. Nope, Tennessee is fine today. Tennessee is okay. No severe weather for y'all up there. Should be good. Yep, you're all safe up there. A little bit of a risk is uh, probably concluding in the next hour or two for northwestern Indiana and uh, northeastern Illinois up here. We're probably going to see this uh, tone down very quickly into the evening as we lose all of our support for uh, any severe weather up there. So we just got a marginal risk. A little bit of stuff is happening up there. If there is a tornado warning up there, I would go up to it and cover it. But um, it is a marginal risk up there. So uh, a very low chance. Dispatch center, yep, yep. Yeah, GR2 is really good for this. Ooh, man. 
Yeah, good to see you. After some nasty weather that came through on Friday, yeah, I hope you guys in Tennessee are doing fine. But we gotta we gotta be looking out for our friends down here in the deep south. This is their peak severe weather season uh, in March and April, so uh, we definitely gotta be looking out for them. <laughs> yeah, may maybe we can get some Midas in here at some point. Speaking of which. <laughs> He hears his name and he and he comes through there. I don't know if he came through the mic, but funny old cat there. You got a funny old kitty. He might show up sometime on the stream. Explain the channel swap. Well, my channel here is meant to accentuate Ryan's channel. When we stream together like this, um, and we, we both create videos. It's meant to give you as much information as possible in a couple of different perspectives so that if you need my channel in particular to understand the weather, or you're more interested in the science side of it, um, you can come over here. And if you need Ryan's channel in particular for, you know, the, the, the weather forecasting that you've come to know and love, uh, hopefully, because I work on Ryan's videos as well. <laughs> My input goes into that as well. Um, that, uh, you know, us together can serve to give you the best information possible. So, Meridian, you're shaping up to get something here. The cell is once again exhibiting quite a bit of a impressive wind signature. You see here near Newton... Uh, Mississippi, this is this area in the tan is uh, about 60, 60, 65 mile an hour winds, um, uh, a little bit above the surface here, but y'all are in a considerable severe thunderstorm warning now for two inch hail and 70 mile an hour wind gusts. This storm is not going to be a joke. It is going to reach Meridian, as I was saying a little bit ago and a while ago. So um, Meridian, Mississippi, you're up next for this uh, big time wind and hail storm that's about to come through. Still not seeing anything that's imminently tornadic down here in southern Mississippi, uh, below I-20 here. But these are definitely storms that I am watching closely. This one I don't feel great about, but I'm hoping that we haven't reached our uh, peak tornado, you know, time frame yet. So hopefully this doesn't uh, produce anything in the near term. Hopefully it doesn't produce anything at all. Exactly, yeah. Um, Ryan and I together should be a, a, a thing that just gives you as much info as possible. That's what the goal is. <laughs> wow, that you have a do you have a mobile car hail damage? <laughs> That's pretty impressive, Tim. I like that line of work. I hope that I hope that it's sustainable, not too stressful. How fast are these storms moving? That one in Mississippi is moving about 40, 45 miles an hour <laughs> to the east. So this storm is still tornado worn down here. It has exited the Thomasville, Alabama vicinity, it is now moving closer to Camden, Alabama, and Wilcox County. Um, we're going to see it uh, in that go in that direction. So I hope y'all are taking shelter over here in Pine Hill, Alabama, and Camden. Uh, down here in southern uh, and southwestern Alabama. My goodness, man. I wish we, ha I wish we had some uh, radar data over here that I could look at. It's rough. It's rough not having radars over here, but I'm doing my best. Let's see if we can see see if we can see anything from Birmingham up here because we are lacking the Montgomery radar today. It is down for um, uh, an update to the hardware. It takes a while. Unfortunately, you know they, they planned this in advance and on Sunday or on, on Friday, today, Sunday's risk looked like nothing. But now, today, it's already to the second highest level issued by the Storm Prediction Center uh, for tornadoes out here, uh, hail and tornadoes out here in this area. So, unfortunately, things can just crop up really quickly, and, you know, the radar repair, the radar update is underway. It can't just be stopped. We can't just be putting it back online, so we have to deal with what we got. And, unfortunately, that's going to impact our, our means to relay weather efficiently to y'all. 
Yeah, we've thought about educational videos quite often, actually. Um, I don't know exactly how I'm going to do that, though, because the the forecasting element to the channel is very important to maintain. Um, and uh, if we do educational videos, it's possible that they could they, they are very valuable to a lot of people, but they don't perform well. And um, that, uh, unfortunately, because YouTube is the way it is, is not... Um, it's not conducive to as many people receiving weather information as possible. So yeah, yeah, Skillshare. We'll do another. We'll do it on another platform, huh? Do it on another platform. There are definitely ideas out there to get something like that going, but I, I'm already really busy. I got a lot on my plate, so. Yeah, lots of lightning with these storms anywhere anywhere in our risk areas today. Uh, all of these cells down here are going to have so much lightning activity with them, and that's because it's getting real muggy down there. It's got real muggy down there today, and that's a lot of fuel for these storms to just have so much lightning. Especially because of the, you know, the, the air aloft, like four miles up in these storms. That air is from Mexico, Texas, uh, over there where it's dry. And that means that there's more instability, that means there's more lightning, so really big lightning uh, producers today expected uh, through the night yeah so if you're watching the chasers below me i've got chris hall up just below me he is in uh, the areas of mississippi that were hit on friday uh, by some significant tornadoes um so he's driving around and showing that perspective um in and around a uh, rolling fork in mississippi that tornado we covered uh, one of many we covered on friday and then Brad Arnold is actually out in uh, the storms today that are impacting southwestern Mississippi. So those are the two chasers you're watching over here. Um, they're also on Ryan's stream, but we've got more chasers over there as well, including Brett Adair uh, and uh, Brandon Clement and Ryan Carty. So plenty of chasers working with us today. <laughs> Happy to support the chasers as well. Yep, muggy is warm, moist heat. Yeah, we're really going to see a lot of lightning today, so, man, I, we're seeing all these storms over here with posing such a significant hail threat. Um, I was talking about Auburn, Alabama earlier. I think that they may have escaped the worst of any of these storms that went through. I think they went to the west, more towards Waverly and Camp Hill, because this is some pretty significant hail uh, here in eastern Alabama. And hopefully uh, Columbus, Georgia, and Phoenix City and Alabama were able to escape most of the severe weather in these cells in particular. They are moving up to the north here. Um, so these cells down here in eastern Alabama, they could move up to the north and impact the Noonan area uh, and the Peachtree City, you know, the southwestern suburbs of the Atlanta metro going out away from it. Um, by then, they should lose a lot of their steam, and especially by the time they approach Atlanta, they should lose most all of their steam. Um, but it's very possible that right here uh, south of uh, Atlanta and Georgia will be the focus for some severe weather to crop up. We've been talking about that. There's still that risk uh, present there, but it's definitely uh, more of a risk as you go further south. So that's what's happening over here. Still got this tornado warning. This one down here in um, southwestern Alabama that's headed towards Camden. We've been talking about it a little bit. Um, it is far away, so we can't really tell if it is going to produce a tornado at the surface. Um, the best we can do is tell you to follow the uh, tornado warning that's issued for this area and make sure you're in your uh, interior most room of your house in Camden in Alabama and uh, areas surrounding Camden because there's going to be some pretty significant hail Severe thunderstorm conditions, you know, in Yellow Bluff here, and uh, eventually in Camden in, you know, 10 minutes or so. Uh, but there is also the threat for tornadoes with this, so you just want to be, you want to be prepared. Don't be scared, be prepared. Uh, update, upstate South Carolina, yeah, we're watching this risk. I mean, look at how extensive this risk is today. It's eventually, these storms are going to find their way all the way over here uh, along the South Carolina coast into Wilmington, North Carolina, as we go on through the day. We've got all these cells popping up right here, and they should uh, keep track in, uh, mostly to the east here uh, through this area in yellow, which is the slight risk. Uh, 
from the Storm Prediction Center. So all, all of these areas, these are our first blobs uh, for the eastern part of the uh, risk area today. They're all going to move up this direction, whether or not they, or except for these ones, which are left split supercells. So they're going to move up this direction, hopefully lose steam pretty quickly um, so that they that Atlanta avoids most of the impacts. But it's possible these could reach Atlanta. So we'll keep a close eye on that. Uh, but the rest of this will be severe weather that makes it over here at some point, maybe a couple rounds for these areas uh, through the morning hours. All right, let's look back at Mississippi. We want to make sure everyone in Meridian, Mississippi is prepared. Uh, here it is in East Central Mississippi. We want to make sure they're prepared for this storm that's coming in. It's going to be a doozy. Uh, big time hail and wind is happening all along Interstate 20 here and rapidly approaching Lauderdale County in Mississippi. So th this is going to be just like what Jackson saw. Jackson saw this uh, about an hour ago. Now we've got uh, flash flood warnings all along this area. Uh, and Meridian, Mississippi, you're up next. So you're going to get real bad here, some wind and hail. Um, I, I think uh, Ryan showed a few images of uh, some uh, hail damage and things ripping through, you know, um, tarps. Like if, if you got tarps over anything, we saw some hail damage ripping through tarps. Couldn't think of the word. <laughs> So uh, that same that same thing is going to be possible here in Meridian. Sightings of houses could be damaged. So uh, lots lots of stuff is going to happen here in this area shortly. All right. I know Ryan's been looking at this storm for a little bit now. This is north of Basefield in Mississippi, headed towards Collins. This one's about to go through a merger. So this cell down, this little cell down here is separate and is moving into this supercell up here, uh, which has this shape. So this one's a this one's separate. It's about to merge together. You see it there happening there. Uh, so if that is supporting tornado genesis, that's going to come together pretty quickly here. And I think we're going to see a warning for this. This is probably going to get a tornado warning here in uh, Covington County in Mississippi. I know Ryan's looking at that, so I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll tell him again what's, what's happening. Hey Ryan, I, I'm watching, I think I heard you talk about it, but it's this cell that's uh, near Collins, Mississippi, the one north of Basefield. Um, it's going through a cell merger at the moment that we're watching over here on my stream. Um, this one's got my eye more closely than anything, because uh, as you know, those cell mergers come through, and if they happen in the right way, um, it could cause some imminent tornado genesis. So uh, I would not be surprised if there was a tornado warning sometime soon for Covington County in Mississippi. Uh, and moving off to the east-northeast here. I don't know why my camera's so bright. <laughs> Man, my second camera looks real bad. <laughs> I like I like how I'm so bright there, though, on Ryan's stream. It does look like this merger here is a little bit destructive. So um, if it were constructive, we'd really see these greens start turning into blues here uh, and some reds and pinks over on this side. But this may be inhibiting uh, tornado genesis on, in this part of the cell. So hopefully that's the case. Either constructive or destructive is possible. Uh, and the best case is that it does not produce a tornado. So... We're hoping that that uh, is going to be the case with that one because, yeah, I've been talking about these cells down here for a while as they begin to interact with the, the, the big old mess that we have here moving through eastern Mississippi now. So hopefully that continues to be the case, but it could change every new radar scan that we get, every little bit of data. Of course, we've got this one over here near Heidelberg as well. Um... Not too much to say about this one. It looks a little concerning, but um, 
Yeah, so a close eye on that one. Some rotation, but a weak rotation being exhibited with this storm. What is conducive? Uh, it, it's too tough to tell what... I mean, I say constructive and destructive because we can't tell. We can't really tell whether it's going to go into the spinning part of the storm in the right side or the left or the wrong side. So if it goes in just right and it adds to the rotation, that's constructive. Uh, but if it ruins it all when it goes into it, that'll be destructive. It's a little, it's too difficult to tell what which uh, scenario is going to happen uh, beforehand because you know any part of the storm can rain on the wrong spot, and there you go. So. This one is hopefully trending away from uh, producing a tornado, but yeah, I, I'm watching it closely. Thank you, James, for the support. Much appreciated. Yeah, the coordination is beautiful. I want to give you guys here in this chat a little bit more of a heads up when I'm going to change his lights. Um, because uh, if, I, if I do that, I feel like that's pretty interactive, and then y'all can be like, oh, Andy's about to come through. <laughs> Ah, uh, that's funny. Ooh, I don't like this. I don't like this. Let's see if... Let's see the trend on this storm up here. Yeah, so we've got uh, the most... The most dangerous looking part of this storm headed into Meridian. It looks like it's going to go through the north side. Um, possibly with 70 mile an hour winds. Maybe a little bit uh, greater winds there. So this this part of the storm is probably really uh, worth paying attention to, and if just right, if just right here, yeah, we could see a tornado form there on the northern side as well. So I'll tell Ryan about that. In addition to this, so I'm gonna switch the lights. Gonna switch the lights here. <laughs> oh, did you say go ahead, Andy? Okay. I'm ready. All right. Uh, so I'm watching Meridian as well, Ryan. Uh, we've got that big time uh, line of storms moving in with rain and hail. But also, if you look at the northern part of it, we've got a little bit of a hook bulging out here on the northern part of Meridian. And if that inflow it connects with it, um, that's a pretty dangerous situation. This is what happens when we got that powerful uh, storm pushing out in front of it. So if that air wraps around in front of where it's pushing out, we could see um, a quick tornado spin up here. So that'll be to the north of Meridian, impacting Lauderdale, Mississippi, and uh, Bailey, Mississippi in you know the next minute or so, if that does happen. So hopefully that doesn't happen. But man, that that is a that is impressive. When this happens, guys, um, here near Sukulena, <laughs> that one that one's a tough one. When this happens, what you're watching here in blue, this blue arrow is a concentrated jet of air. We call it the rear inflow jet, um, and it's it's coming down and pushing this part of the storm forward much faster than the rest of it. Uh, and when that happens. Um, you, you could see any number of things uh, occur, but the worst thing that could happen is probably what's going on right now, where this hook shows up and air flows into the other side and starts rotating. So if this happens, uh, and it does produce a tornado right here, uh, we've got it right on the radar for you. Right on the radar for you. A new tornado warning. So that new issued. tornado warning is also for Wilcox County, includes Camden, Alabama. Uh, so we, we've been watching that cell for a while now too, but I would not be surprised if something gets issued up here for Meridian in Lauderdale a County. A new tornado warning has been issued. Same warning, uh, National Weather Service warnings are being duplicated for a lot of programs at the moment. So if you didn't hear it the first time, there it is again, make sure you know about it. Oh, man. Okay, it does look like this one down here was uh, not contributing to rotation. That is a good thing here in Covington County in Mississippi. Um, but I'll continue to keep my eye on that because if you look at it, we get we do get a little bit of convergence here uh, with winds coming from both directions and meeting up right about Collins. So hopefully that does not uh, hopefully that does not organize. If it does, we'll have an eye on it. This one over here near Heidelberg, Mississippi, moving up towards Shibuda. And DeSoto and Quitman uh, here along uh, Highway 46 in eastern Mississippi. There's some weak rotation there. 
but I think that this one is mostly still a hailer. It's a beefy supercell, though, so we're paying attention to it. Still some weak rotation down here near uh, Ellisville as well, to the south. And that's north of Hattiesburg. So Lauderdale uh, County in Mississippi, especially the northern part of the county, um, hopefully y'all are paying attention to this. Eventually Livingston down the line will need to pay, pay attention to this storm moving through because it is packing a punch no matter uh, if it has a tornado or not. Okay, so we've got that going on Ryan's stream now. Here's a look at our uh, tornado worn storm again. Camden in Alabama, Oak Hill, Snow Hill, in uh, uh, Pineapple in Wilcox County in Alabama should be taking shelter now. Uh, we've got some broad rotation with this storm right here. Here's that broad rotation showing up in, circled in blue there. Hopefully it, uh, it passes south of Camden, but if that happens, Camden, Alabama is going to get in on the worst of the hail here. So it's going to be, this might be a pretty costly storm for Camden. Uh, because we could see we could see a pretty a pretty large hailstorm moving through this uh, town right now. My streaming Thursday and Friday. We don't know yet. We don't know yet if thurs next Thursday and Friday will uh, warrant a stream for severe weather. But we do have outlooks um, for those days. We do have outlooks for those days from the Storm Prediction Center. So if if it does warrant a stream, I will be here for it. Yes. Barasa, thank you for the support. Yep, this Wilcox cell is its looking really nasty, whether it's got a tornado or not. So definitely a storm that even if there is no tornado ongoing with this, it's still very wise to take shelter. Still very wise to take shelter. Yes, I could get Brad Adair's stream. Today I've got Chris and um, Brad on because I've got two slots on all of my uh, stream setups here. So um, I could get Brett later, but right now I'm set up with uh, Chris and Brad. So we'll see in the future if I can uh, add more to that. But yeah, I'm definitely, definitely want to, uh, we got Brad Arnold today. Yeah. We got Brad Arnold today and Chris Hall. Yep. So interior most room of your house down here in Wilcox County in Alabama. Make sure you have your shoes and so forth. Even if Brett's not streaming on YouTube, we can we can get his feed. We have access to it. So Ryan's got Brett's feed. Uh, so if you want to watch if you want to watch Brett Adair, he's over on Ryan's stream right now, actually. So perfect. And look at all this hail over here. Really, this this hail threat today has definitely come to fruition. It's impress. I'm sure it's. I'm sure it's going to be a memorable storm for anyone who is who goes through uh, one of these uh, one of the cores of these storms and gets in on this big time hail. Um, so any anyone down here, like Camden residents, are probably going to remember this storm for a while because of some really large or some really impactful hail uh, coming through. Uh, and we could take another look at our, our destructive severe thunderstorm warning over here. Um, this one's been a problem with hail for a while now. It is tracking to the east, to the northeast mostly, and um, so parts of Lafayette, Alabama, Five Points, Stroud, and Roanoke, Alabama, along uh, Highway 431 here, are going to see um, probably some really bad impacts from this storm because this one is warned for a baseball size hail at the moment. Baseball size hail at the moment. So uh, definitely a dangerous storm over there. Let's go back towards Mississippi. Actually, a brief look at uh, Louisiana real quick to make sure we're not missing anything over here. These are mostly still looking like hail. Uh, big time hail supercells, but nothing tornadic over here in uh, central to northern Louisiana. Okay. Now let's look at Mississippi. Yeah, I really don't, I really don't like the look of this. So, um, hopefully, oh, oh man, hopefully y'all in Meridian are not losing power right now, especially Marion in, uh, Mississippi here. 
it doesn't matter if there's a tornado here because it's going to be a very significant storm moving through this area. But I would not be surprised again if we saw a tornado warning for Lauderdale County here because uh, this looks pretty nasty. And we can go up. We can go up in height and see that that kind of persists for a while. Um, just a little bit up in the storm. But right here, what we're seeing is uh, closer to the surface where the winds are pushing out in front uh, here and some of the winds are wrapping back around and this could cause an area of uh, rotation here to the north of Meridian that will head towards uh, Lauderdale, Mississippi. Uh, so if there is a tornado warning, that's why that will uh, that's why that'll come through. But either way, this is a this is definitely an impactful storm. Still some rotation down here near Ellisville. We can take a look at correlation coefficient quickly to see if anything is kicking up debris on any of these storms. I don't see it. Looks like it looks like we're fine for the most part. But again, you know, all all of these storms taking shape down here, and uh, you know, they they look like supercells. Like all all these, they they look like supercells. You know, we we just got all these supercellular shapes down here all over the place and you know that just tells me that pretty soon we're going to see we're going to see some tornado threats coming through like this one up here that's possible uh, near meridian yeah tornadoes can be very wide Huge tornadoes are possible, small and thin tornadoes are possible, all different sizes. We lose Brad Arnold's feet again. Let's see if I can fix that. See if that comes back through. Yeah, some of the ones on Friday that Im that significantly impacted some uh, Mississippi towns like Rolling Fork, uh, those could easily be you know upwards of a mile of a mile long or a mile wide rather. So yeah, definitely possible. We're really really hoping that that doesn't happen again today. <laughs> and some pretty big wind driven hail happening right now in Meridian. Hoping uh, that most people here are uh, able to keep power. Hoping everybody's inside in East Mississippi. Uh, Livingston, Alabama, this is coming for you next. Some uh, pretty impressive storms over here. Let's look at the Birmingham radar. I can't really get a good look at this one near Linden, Alabama, but I think that this one's probably got some significant... Um, some big time hail happening here. This one's one of the most impressive signatures. You can see these purples in here, uh, just to the northwest of the town in Marengo County. Uh, this right here is uh, either some large hail or a lot, a lot of very small hail. Not very small, but a lot of small hail or just a lot of hail. And there you go. Now it's been uh, upgraded to a destructive severe thunderstorm, just as we were talking about it. So now Linden and uh, Galleon and Fonsdale and New Bern and Greensboro, Alabama are in a severe thunderstorm warning for baseball size hail. So that, uh, that severe thunderstorm warning was just upgraded. Just as we were looking at it. It's definitely ramped up so we can take a look at it uh, ramping up there. So there it is right there. It's just producing heavy rain at this point. Starts to do a little bit of hail. A lot more hail there, and bam, now it's a destructive storm. Baseball size hail is possible here. That is not that is not an uh that's not an exaggeration. So if you're if you live in these areas in Marengo County, uh and Hale County in Alabama, it, don't be surprised if there are any tornado sirens. Um, because uh, tornado sirens should be used and are typically used by emergency management services to tell you to go inside. And when baseball size hail is possible, you should be inside. So I wouldn't want to be out in that. Uh, and you can also see uh, this uh, signature coming out of the, the storm a little bit here. This is another hail spike. So the radar beam is traveling through the hail just like that, and it's producing this uh, artifact on the other side of the storm. 
So uh, this also is yet another thing that's telling us that there's some really large hail uh, in this storm. So it can definitely fall out of it and reach the surface. No, a, a bike helmet, a helmet would definitely do at least a little bit for you uh, against baseball size hail. In Marengo County, yeah, definitely be paying attention to this. It's going to, oh, man, it's hopefully going to go to the south of Demopolis. I think that Galleon, Fonsdale, and New Bern are in the direct line of uh, sight for this. But either way, there's probably some prolific lightning with this thing. Uh, pro probably quite a bit of lightning, and that will keep uh, being the case into the evening. Mm. down here in camden you guys are getting an update here you're probably getting into some of the big hail here in uh wilcox county and the town of camden uh all of y'all in pineapple oak hill and snow hill are still under that tornado warning as well uh that is being continued that's being continued so hopefully you're taking shelter right now in the polygon <clears throat> Tennessee is fine tonight. Tennessee is fine tonight. All right, our other uh, destructive severe thunderstorm warning um, is probably going to be allowed to expire here, but this is still a considerable thunderstorm that is producing uh, up to golf ball size hail. The hope is that all the cells over here that we're watching uh, that are moving north up toward Atlanta, you see these uh, starting to track north. Atlanta's up here. Uh, they're moving in the general vicinity of the Atlanta metro. The hope is that uh, uh, they will very quickly begin to die off as they get north towards Noonan uh, and, the, and the Peachtree City area. So around here, hopefully uh, they lose their steam and Atlanta doesn't have uh, any sort of hail come through. Uh, but if they are still severe by the time they make it to the metro up here, then I expect uh, I expect it to be a lesser severe threat, but still not one you want to discount. Could get a pretty good storm up there. Man. We're watching all we're watching all of this area through the night. There's a lot of time to go yet uh, in the yellow, orange, and red here on uh, Radar Omega. So we're, we're really, I mean, all these storms back here in Louisiana right now over here are just going to track all along this corridor for, uh, you know, throughout the night. And I think really as we get into the, the late evening, into the early night, we're really going to see that tornado threat start to um, start to increase with any supercells that are on their own out here. So even though we've had big storms come through Jackson, Mississippi, and so forth, you guys are not done with uh, the, the severe weather threat tonight, and you should be worried about the flash flooding as well if you have to go outside. Hopefully, um, you, can, hopefully you can just put off driving out in that because that's no good. So yeah, these cells back in here, they could pose another uh, round of uh, severe weather, for this area, they will do that actually, uh, but they could also pose a, a tornado threat. Really hoping that that doesn't happen, but we know that as we get into the night, there's a chance that it will. Yeah, a lot of people up in uh, a lot of people up in Ohio are still without power in western Pennsylvania. We talked about those uh, wind advisories and the high wind warnings. That windstorm did come through. Um, I, I said that at least six or seven times. We went over it uh, many times on the last stream. So hopefully that uh, made it through to some people up there. Talking about the wind is, is very important. It's uh, it's important to talk about the wind because y'all are going to experience that. You're going to feel it. Um, and I think that we don't talk about that enough. So hopefully that helped. <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching, of course. Thanks for all the comments. Lots of lightning today for anyone who's going to see a storm. Man, it's going to be really electrically active. <clears throat> so there is a new a tornado, tornado warning, warning that's going to come through here for Hale and Marengo County. That's the same cell we've been looking at. 
uh, they have warned that now because there is um, an area that could be rotating in the storm. Here it is in blue right here. Draw it again in black so you can see it. A new this area right here near Providence is issued. rotating. So this is already a very dangerous storm uh, with uh, baseball size hail possible. But now we see uh, the chance at some uh, significant rotation here, which has prompted a tornado warning. Honestly, you can just see how fast that uh, crops up when you can't see the radar. Like, see how the see how in the radar it's kind of just garbled there. The purples tell us that we're not really getting any data here from the velocity scans. There, there's a whole reason for that. But um, it, um, now the storm has moved out of that area of no data, and immediately we see rotation taking place. So the National Weather Service has already gone ahead and warned that, which is good on them. Good on them. Malady having a good time there, right? <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. Y'all in the chat. Y'all in the chat. So we got two tornado warnings active now in uh, southwestern Alabama. Camden, you're in a tornado warning, but you're probably getting hit by some large hail right now. Um, there's definitely some rotation in here, though. You can see this area right here in the black circle on the right side of the screen. We got winds rotating, so um, I think that um, I think that Brett Adair is on this rotating storm. We might get some ground truth here, but uh, he's kind of in the middle of the hail. So um, yeah, I'm sure that's not looking pretty there. I can see his feet on Ryan's channel actually. If this isn't hail that we're looking at right here, which it more than likely is at least some hail, uh, this in the pink can also be an um, extremely heavy downpour. Extremely heavy downpour is possible when we see radar returns like this uh, on, our, um, on our reflectivity, which tells us where the precip is happening, where the rain is. Yeah, so this purple, this purple is called range folding. It's, uh, it's limitations of technology. the limit of the range here so sometimes we get garbled scans right about then <laughs> oh my the chat's so silly you know the fact that the the chasers are below me right now they are getting they are getting a a lot we are paying them a lot we're supporting the chasers right now quite a bit so anything Anything you anything you hear from them, you know, that's just a it's a bunch of baloney. <laughs> right now, um, we're really happy to work with these chasers. So, um, of course, we're going to support them. Ryan and I are supporting them as much as we can. Uh, that's an important thing. Hopefully, I can get Brad Arnold's feedback here. Let's see if I can try that again. Brad up or no? Brad Arnold, can I get your feedback? We'll see if his feed comes back in. That's a part of chasing, too, is, like, these guys are going out there trying to get feed and so forth. There we go. We got Brad back, just as we lost, lost Chris. Always got one chaser on. Um, it's very important, and they, they try their best, but they only have access to the cell tower. So, you know, it, it is it is all they can do uh, to try to help out there with surface observations. Yeah, absolutely a ton of lightning with this storm. Uh, anywhere that uh, microburst is occurring or, um, you know, really heavy downpours or some hail, absolutely going to see a lot of lightning here. I need a catchy phrase like, don't be scared, be prepared. Why not that one? It's pretty simple. You don't have to, you don't have to say too much more. <sighs> exactly, Adria. Exactly. We need everybody to have that perspective. The equipment is expensive. Yeah, every part of chasing is uh, when you when you do it to this caliber, it is an endeavor. You know, you got to think about the you got to think about the mental state too. They're in there in the moment and a lot of adrenaline pumping through. But you know, anytime that storms aren't happening and all they have to deal with, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to chase. You know, uh, me being a meteorologist, I wouldn't recommend people to chase. Uh, we, you know, you can become a professional in chasing. It takes experience, but chasing is not for the faint of heart. 
stay sky aware. We'll think of one. I appreciate the I appreciate the thought process. Yeah, man. Man, look at all this heavy rain. All of these are rotating just a little bit. Some weak rotation, lots of these. So whenever a storm is rotating, we it does qualify as a supercell when it's nice and mature like all these are. So we got plenty of supercells out here moving in every which direction. So these ones are still maintaining a pretty significant hail threat as they approach uh, Noonan and Peachtree City. Still watching those. Right now, I'm only concerned with the hail and wind up here. That's what I'm looking at in uh, western Georgia up to uh, up to eastern Alabama. Or eastern Alabama and western Georgia up to Atlanta. Really looking at only hail there for now. Okay. RFD stands for rear flank downdraft. Let me show you one of our tornado worn storms. Uh, and I will, or maybe even just a supercell in general, and I can really illustrate. Man, look at that hail. Hold on. <laughs> Taking a look at this first. We have some big time hail probably about to move right next to Soso, -so, Mississippi. That is a huge hail core there, so real big hail happening to the west of Laurel. Watch that through. Hold on. Yeah, look how, look how fast that popped up. Suddenly, bam. Big time hail in the pinks and purples here. Wow. Probably a ton of golf balls falling right now, just to the west of Sosu. Uh, and sure enough, if this is Jones County, Mississippi, which it is, that is now a destructive severe thunderstorm. So we're about to see this warning right here for Sosu and Laurel be upgraded to a extremely dangerous storm. There it is. Three inch hail. Those are apples. Apples. Apples are falling right now, uh, right near Soso, -so, Mississippi. That's how fast that pops up, guys. My goodness. Big time hail today. Let me tell Ryan about that. I don't know if he's paying any attention to it, so I'll come through. Come through with the green lights. So let's see what I can say to Ryan here. Wrong kind of apples, I know, right? Dangerous hail. Hey, Ryan, that new ex uh, extremely dangerous uh, uh, severe weather... Oh, man, that just... It's extremely dangerous storm that just came through. Our destructive severe thunderstorm is for Jones County, Mississippi. You can, wa you can just watch that loop near Laurel. It's in uh, southeast Mississippi. How fast that popped up. Now there's just a... This uh, warning is now for three-inch hail, which is apples. Just apples falling out of the sky here near Soso. Uh, and it really just popped up in the last five minutes. Suddenly we have a huge hail core. Um, so an incredibly dangerous storm here that is going to approach Sandersville and Heidelberg in Mississippi. You betcha. I'm not too good at that one yet. I, I'm a, you know, I'm only been in Minnesota for a couple of years now, so uh, I, I got to get better at that one if that's going to be the catchphrase. <laughs> I like y'all's ideas. I like it. As long as they're not honey crisps. I know honey crisps are huge. Hmm. <clears throat> I mean, you just don't see this. Like, it's one thing to get a three-inch hail warning, but it's another thing for it to be in southeastern Mississippi. That doesn't happen. That does not happen that often. This is the perfect uh, storm for hail in this area. You guys down here, have you probably only see three-inch hail, you know, once every five years, maybe once a decade in these places like it's really difficult for um the atmosphere to set up just the right way with dry air coming in from texas and making it all the way over here to the gulf states uh and and, to, and then support you know a, a supercell with three inch hail it is def it's really one of the examples of perfect storm down here um, because it's really difficult to get an environment that supports that so man big time hail All right, let's check up back towards uh, Jackson since we just had we have some flash flood reports here. Uh, 
plenty of ponding water and so forth in the Jackson Metro, and now we've got some storms approaching them again. Um, these ones still look like wind and hail, so you can kind of see this uh, this structure here uh, near Vicksburg, Mississippi. This storm kind of just looks like this. It kind of just goes straight down in the, the southern extent of it, and um, when that happens, uh, we call that outflow dominant. So that means that uh, the winds are just pushing it forward here. There's not really any rotation at all, so this is just being pushed forward and posing a uh, wind and hail threat, even though it is a supercell. Can I change the color so the storms aren't so strong? I wish. I would do anything I can to make these storms weaker, but unfortunately, all I can do is uh, tell you about them so that we can at least get info out about them. Appreciate you guys. You guys are important. Everyone who's thanking me for whatever, you guys are just as important for watching us, Ryan and I, and making sure that, you know, if, if something is, you know, important to somebody that you know, or somebody you know who knows somebody who is in this these areas, talking about it is the most important thing. And the more people we have that do that, uh, the more um, that the more prepared they can be, really. It's just an exponentially growing reach um, that I'm happy I can support, in part. No, every, everyone who was uh, impacted by strong tornadoes on Friday, this past Friday, in northeastern Mississippi and also western Mississippi should hopefully be mostly to the south of uh, the strongest storms today. But you can see right here, this is Rolling Fork. Uh, so this area in Sharkey County is still going to see some heavy rain here, but they're a little bit north of that. Um, they're a little bit north of that, the severe weather that's rolling through. So hopefully that stays south of those vulnerable areas. But and in addition to that, I hope everyone has you know got shelter up there. A terrible, terrible scene up there. I can't believe we watched that live on Friday. But I, I also can hardly believe we raised over a hundred thousand dollars to help them out. And you're gonna see that happen too. You're gonna see the results of that. Chris is actually driving toward that storm I was just talking about. He's uh, he's over here to the south of Rolling Fork. Um, and I guess he's going to intercept this uh, supercell right here that's going to have some hail and wind with it. So Brett's got hail. Chris is probably going to see some hail. Uh, and uh, where's Brad Arnold at? Brad Arnold's trying to catch up with storms, I think. He's in southern Mississippi. I think he's trying to come over here to southeastern Mississippi. Oh, man. So how are y'all doing? We've got a bunch of hail going on, a couple tornado warnings, so I hope everyone is, uh, I hope everyone's feeling well. This is definitely, definitely a little bit easier to cover than, uh, Friday's severe weather, but, um, you know, at any, at any point tonight, that can change. It was definitely devastating, yeah. Make sure you're taking care of yourselves, too. Bad weather for the summer, it depends on where it sets up. You're good, rogue veteran. I appreciate you to I appreciate you chatting at all. <clears throat> yeah, a little bit a little bit nervous, but that's you know, like to a certain point, that's how we should be when we watch weather events like this. It's a it's a heightened awareness that's most important um to have here so it, because if you're if you're aware you're weather aware then you're doing what i just talked about which is probably talking about the weather with other people relaying the important information about what's going on today to anyone who could be in the path of this you know um the the last thing i saw and it may have it may have gone up since then but the rolling fork supercell that crossed the entirety of mississippi you know it resulted in a lot of loss of life exactly what moose is saying right now in the chat it resulted in a lot of loss of life because people didn't know so like even though we are talking as much about it as possible and we eventually down the line through word of mouth may have reached a few more people in the town because somebody they knew was watching us um and they and that person told them and they were in the path that's the that's the goal here but we weren't even able to save everybody we weren't able to save everybody. So, like, the, the goal is to just go more and more, more and more people to get to save more and more people. Word of mouth is strong.
Yeah, thank you guys. So if you're just joining us, Ryan and I today, um, this severe threat right now is primarily hail. Uh, but every single storm here, we're watching it as it uh, goes into the night here. As we go into the night here, the hail threat may go down just a little bit, but will still be there. But our tornadic threat is probably going to increase. If our tornadic threat increases with each hour tonight, it will be at, or as it, if it increases, it will be with each hour as we go. It will probably peak around 10 p.m. To, to midnight or so for the central time zone here. I bet I bet that after 9 p.m., if we are going to see tornadoes today, that's probably when we'll start seeing uh, a few more warnings come out. And, you know, Ryan and I, they, we say that from time to time. The reason for that is a little complicated, but it's, a, it's about a mile, or not a mile, it's about a thousand feet above the surface. We have a, a stream of air, and that's called the low-level jet. It's, it's our nadir juice. So we have shirts that say nadir juice on them. Unfortunately, not wearing mine today. Uh, but the, the nadir juice that Ryan talks about is that low-level jet, just about 1,000, 1,500 feet above the surface, uh, the, the height of the Empire State Building. Up there, the winds start to accelerate at night, and when they accelerate, um, that increases the chance for rotation to occur. That's, a, that's as simple as it can get. So just think about it at the height of the Empire State Building. Winds are starting to increase because we go into the nighttime hours, and bang. That's when you start to see the increase in tornado potential. Word of mouth is the best advertisement. So is the YouTube algorithm, though. That's why we're doing it on this platform, because through the power of y'all, liking the video and subbing to the channels and so forth, it tells YouTube that, hey, more people are interested in this. More people need to be interested in this so that as many people as possible can receive information uh, about weather impacting them. So that's why we've that's why we've really chosen this platform. Uh, Chris is in western Mississippi. He's headed into a non-tornadic supercell at the moment. Uh, so that's why he is. That's where he is. In, uh, exiting Sharkey County to the south. <clears throat> so it's as simple as that. Simple as that. That's why we do what we do. Thank you, Kyle, for the support. Much appreciated, friends. <laughs> yes, very different weather in Tennessee than California. California, the weather changes once a day. In Tennessee, it changes every 10 minutes, right? Or is it five minutes over there? What do you think? In the Laurel area? Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy that a lot of y'all in the chat are showing up in uh, these areas that are being impacted today. So we still have two tornado warnings. <clears throat> this one down here for Wilcox County in Alabama. It's now moved to the east of Camden, but we still got some heavy rain and winds occurring in Camden in uh, Alabama here. So the rest of Oak Hill to Snow Hill in Wilcox County should hopefully be in shelter. This is still exhibiting some rotation that you can see here. We've got a rotating part of the storm just like that, drawing the arrows. Rotation right in the center here. Um, I don't believe this is producing a tornado yet that we know of. Brett Adair is right right outside of the circulation. His little dot is right here, and he's approaching this uh, the center of the rotation right here. But I don't think this is producing a tornado at the moment. This other, this other warning encompasses uh, northern Marengo County in Alabama uh, and also southeastern Hale County. So, uh, e even if, uh, so here's the thing, like we're starting to see this. So this one was warned for, you know, baseball size hail just a bit ago. So this is about, um, this is about 25 minutes ago. We had these big time returns showing up, dropping huge hail. And now that that hail has kind of fallen apart here, we don't see maybe as much of a hail signature in the center of the storm. That to me tells me that this could become tornadic once again. Um, so we'll, we'll watch this one closely, but it doesn't really look like it's, uh, forming much of a hook here. So for now, this cell, uh, hopefully just remains, uh, a severe thunderstorm warning. Yep. I think, uh, California is going to see one more storm coming through over the next couple of days. 
Is there a way to show cape values? There is, but I'm I'm trending mostly away from doing that for now because I want to make sure that uh, the most pertinent inf information gets through. And I, I can talk about instability and kinematics and so forth all day, but um, I would uh, rather make sure that we're covering the radar and the we're doing the now casting, which is literally forecasting right now what's happening with the storms uh, as best as we can here. So that's that's my focus. But if we have time and it fits into my spiels here, I will tell you about the science behind these things. All right, looking into uh, northern uh, and central Louisiana again here, we have one more strong storm approaching Natchitoches in Louisiana and uh, Natchez here. Uh, this one doesn't look like it's rotating at all, so we should just have some heavy rain and maybe small hail entering the city over here. Uh, and then we've also got Winsboro about to get impacted probably by some hail or very heavy rain up here in Franklin Parish. But uh, nothing tornadic over here. It doesn't look like uh, the, that low-level jet, that nadir juice we were talking about, is actually uh, coming up here yet. So I think it might be a little slow to start here, which is great. The less time we have to spend talking about tornadoes, the better. So yeah, this, this cell up here is pretty um, non-tornadic because uh, the shape of it is kind of like this. I'll draw it in for you. It's, it's kind of like this mess here. When, when you see something like this, it, you know, like this just tells me that the wind profile kind of looks like a tooth. <laughs> the tooth storm. Uh, the wind profile here is not conducive for uh, rotation because uh, it's just a mess. So we've got some outflow dominant parts of the storm here instead of a hook like this. The storm's actually coming out this direction. My goodness, Chris, did you see that lightning strike? Gosh. So Chris is over here near Vicksburg. Man, did you see that lightning strike? That was ridiculous. Tooth storm. Look, Chris is right here. This is a proper supercell with some hail and wind, but uh, yeah, we, we're, we've been talking about the lightning uh, associated with these storms today. There's so much lightning with these storms today. I mean, right around, right around Redwood here in uh, Mississippi, I see, I see about a good thirty to forty lightning strikes here. New tornado warning coming out. A new tornado warning has been issued. Choctaw County. Uh, but yeah, this storm right here, just right where the strongest part of the storm is, where this hail is, um, I'm seeing like 30 to, 40 light, 30 to 40 lightning strikes recently. There's that warning again, in case you didn't hear it the first time. So yeah, there in Vicksburg, uh, you might get some pretty powerful winds. It's going to be a mess here, but I think the, the strongest part of the cell is right where Chris is uh, stopped right now. <laughs> on Highway 61 near Redwood. So this this is definitely going to carry a pretty powerful punch here. And you're going to see that on the feed right here. Right below me. That's Chris Hall. So let's look at Choctaw County. Uh, yeah. So this, this is the radar hole. A lot of warnings for Butler, Lisman, Needham, Pennington in uh, Choctaw County of Alabama. You guys get what are called preventative tornado warnings. Because this right here is 7,500 feet up in the storm. It's a mile and a half. That's where we're able to actually see what's happening. And you can see rotation. It's uh, it's pretty telltale. There's a lot of inflow here. And uh, some rotation on the other side of this. So quite possibly rotating uh, part of the storm here. But it's very much well removed from the surface. As a result, we can only guess what's happening here, and we can, and the National Weather Service can issue a preventative warning uh, for the storm as it passes off to this area, or we get separate areas of rotation that may move in, in, in any direction over here. So definitely take shelter in Choctaw County. Uh, and honestly, I would take shelter down in Silas as well. Strong storms moving through. We've been talking about this. We get a couple rounds for a lot of people in the, the risk areas today. So that's our new tornado warning. 
you know, there, I would have come through and told Ryan about this and seen it a, a while ago and talked about it, but um, the reason I haven't is because it's in a radar hole. And because it's so far away from radars. Radar beams, by the way, they don't just go flat out from the from the the dome there that uh, scans. They They actually go up with height. They go a little bit up. They go a little bit up as they go away, so... The further away from one we are, the higher up in the storm we're sampling, and, I mean, the less we really know about anything tornadic at the surface. So, uh, that's why we see preventative warnings over here. Alright, let's take a look over at the Atlanta Metro, because we do have these storms coming up toward them. In fact, I can just go to this radar site now. The hope is that all of these, uh, all of these uh, supercells that are moving mostly to the north, uh, the north northeast here, will uh, fall apart. So we kind of see that here. A little bit ago, um, this cell was probably a little bit more powerful. It's still going to have some heavy rain with it as it uh, approaches Noonan in uh, Georgia here. But the hail threat should hopefully decrease with these storms uh, as they head off to the north here, this direction. So they will approach Atlanta eventually, but the you know the hope is that it's not severe by that time, and we just see some heavy rain showers there in and around the Atlanta area. Definitely nothing tornadic with any of the storms approaching Atlanta. So all these guys right here are going this direction primarily up into the north and east. Uh, these are not looking tornadic at all for now. Don't have to worry about this. Uh, don't have to worry about that, rather. This one down here towards Thomaston does have some rotation in uh, uh, down in uh, west-central Georgia. It should track to the north of Macon, go towards Forsyth or Forsyth, whichever pronunciation is correct. Uh, but I'm not sure that it's, you know, th this is a storm that bears watching, so you should be weather aware over here in Monroe County and uh, Lamar County in Georgia. But I think that uh, we don't even have a severe warning on this, so if it does do something, I'll keep a close eye on it, okay? For our friends in central Georgia, I know a lot of you are probably uh, up in the Warner Robins to Macon to, you know, all along Interstate 75 there. <laughs> all right let's see these are um, these storms are all in a radar hole right now so yeah I'm, I'm trying to scout them out but i can't see too much about them i do like some of what i'm seeing here um a lot of these storms have kind of just congealed together in this big mess here uh, that that big mess there should hopefully prevent a lot of the possibility of tornadoes. If they do occur, they're going to be embedded in this mess, which is very dangerous. But um, it's much much better a case than if they were out on their own. Uh, so we see that with the discrete supercells. So these all being together in a mess means that hopefully the tornado threat overall is uh, is muted, uh, but it may not be. So I mean, we see some pretty concerning rotation here. Um, but we're not, we're too far away from the radar site here to actually see, you know, if this is going to produce a debris signature for now. Uh, but you guys are in, in Choctaw County, Alabama, are in a warning. So I hope that, in a tornado warning, so I hope you're taking a shelter. And Chris is driving through the uh, core of that supercell in western Mississippi, right below me right there. Uh, and Brad is in, Brad is in, um, let's see where Brad's at. Brad is moving through Jefferson Davis County right now, so he's uh, he's near Basefield. He's trying to catch up with the uh, the southern part of the storms down here. So here's Brad in the blue here on the left side of your screen. He's going this direction towards uh, the, the trailing part of this uh, big line of storms here. So he's going to see if he can catch anything uh, down here near Laurel in uh, Mississippi. A new tornado warning. Not seeing has any rotation issued. near Vicksburg. 
<clears throat> yep, so our new warning that come through is for, uh, again, Wilcox County. That's Camden, uh, Alabama, so we'll take another look issued. at that. There it is again. Take another look at that real quick. Sixty-seven hail reports already today. Yeah, I don't doubt it at all. All right, so we still got that rotation down here. Definitely worth uh, another warning here. This is the the edge of uh of the National Weather Service mobiles uh, uh their uh f their warning area. So um this is this is the warning they they'll issue here. So if you hear another warning come through, uh, it's probably going to be the rest of the polygon that probably will exist here as the storm moves off to the uh, northeast towards uh, Hainville, Leadahatchee, and, and Calhoun in uh, Alabama here towards the Montgomery area. So this is definitely a dangerous cell um, that's headed generally towards Montgomery, Alabama, uh, and areas to the south are probably in the line. So in advance, y'all watch out here in Montgomery County. Uh, this supercell is more than likely going to make it to you, and it has a history of uh, rotation such that it may uh, be producing some tornadoes at any given point. So uh, y'all watch out all along the line here um, towards this path. So here's here's the path there going generally this direction at about, at about 30 miles an hour. So you got some time yet. It'll probably take about, um, you know, 45 minutes or so to reach Montgomery proper. And by then it may have changed a lot, but um, we've got that tornado warning issued for it still. And may see another one to uh, complete the polygon here from the National Weather Service, uh, probably at Birmingham. Or maybe this is a southeastern Alabama, south central Alabama county. I'm not sure if that's Birmingham's area or uh, perhaps uh, uh, Tallahassee. So whichever county or whichever warning office has to issue for this, we might see that extended there. Hello from Dothan. Yep, I've been uh, keeping track of Dothan for a while. It looks like you guys are all clear for a little bit now, thankfully, because we had some we had some strong storms go through there earlier, but primarily they were for a little bit of a hail risk. And then much earlier in the morning, I believe there uh, may have been some tornadic storms there. So it goes it goes to show that you know even though we were talking about this a couple of days ago on the last stream I did, how oh man, it's just a marginal risk tomorrow, and then a marginal risk for Sunday. That's what we had at the time. Uh, at any point, it's worth being weather aware because those risks can be upgraded and we can see some significant weather on, on both days. And we certainly did. We certainly did. So yeah, uh, this, this cell is worth watching for everyone in and around Montgomery, Alabama. Um, this supercell will track towards you over the next hour or so. So let's take another look in our radar hole. Um, can't really tell too much about this other than the cell is rotating. The storm is rotating as it goes over Choctaw County. It's also going to carry probably some large hail with it. This is just all around a mess. Just a mess. So I hope, um, I know we had some people watching in Meridian in Mississippi, so I hope that they were able to keep power and so forth. All right, one look at Louisiana now. These cells are probably just still um, non-tornadic cells. They look like it to me. Natchitoches, again, you're going to get in on another strong storm today, uh, probably producing a fair amount of lightning over here, but um, and it may become severe warned, but I don't see anything else about it besides some, you know, probably some uh, pretty gusty winds, very heavy rain, and possibly some hail. It looks like it looks like most of Louisiana may be out, you know, besides this uh, supercell that we've got over here near Natchitoches and uh, this one over here near Winsboro. Maybe most of Louisiana is out of the primary uh, threat here for uh, especially for tornadoes today. So I hope that that is uh, the truth. I hope that we don't get any more redevelopment uh, anywhere in the state and that we can just be done over here. So we'll 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 keep an eye on the, our friends in uh, Louisiana. All right. 
I was just talking about Noonan just a few minutes ago, so we'll go back over there once again. Since we're still looking at everything. Thomaston, this cell still looks like a... It's still got some rotation. I was talking about it just five minutes ago, so... Oh, man, okay. So we had a... Yeah, okay, so we had a brief area of pretty strong rotation. I'm glad I was talking about that storm. Uh, but it, it's, it's since fizzled out a little bit. They, I think the National Weather Service is definitely considering a tornado warning for this storm over here near McKinney, uh, headed towards a Forsyth or Forsyth, uh, Georgia. So luckily the rotation fizzled out here a little bit on the last frame, uh, but this one definitely bears watching. I'm glad I just talked about it, so y'all stay weather aware over here in the severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, down here in uh, west central Georgia. Should go to the north of Macon. So uh, I'm thinking of Forsyth, Juliet, Hillsboro, Adgateville, and uh, areas out of Monticello or Monticello uh, here in Georgia. Noonan, you're getting in on the heavy rain now. Hopefully this is the diminishing part of the storm. The severe threat should be diminishing. However, something that can happen in the diminishing stage of a, of a severe thunderstorm is, uh, is a microburst. So this, more, this is worth watching. When a storm eventually dies and it loses its updraft, everything in it can just fall out at the same time. Uh, and if that happens, you can get really, really powerful winds and very, very, very heavy rain. Um, so if this cell does take on the uh, dying stage of a thunderstorm as it approaches uh, anywhere along Palmetto, uh, Union City, Red Oak, definitely could see some localized uh, pretty bad impacts here. Um, and so that uh, that is worth a y'all watch out. And that will track basically directly into uh, the Atlanta metro in some capacity here. So watch, watch this uh, supercell in particular. Uh, as it approaches, just in case that, it, you know, it starts to fall apart, because even if it's falling apart, that doesn't mean everyone's safe. It means we could just see everything fall out of it once, and that's a lot of stuff that's got to go somewhere. A lot of stuff, so. This does bear uh, watching, so everyone in Atlanta should be weather aware right now. This one to, further to the west for Franklin, Georgia, may do the same thing. It's still got a hail core in it, so it's probably hailing over here near Franklin, Towards Central Hatchie. Monticello for Georgia. Thank you. Got it. Thank you, Alyssa. I'm sorry that you... Man, it's been a year and a half. I hope that... um, Man, I don't know. I don't know what to say, but... I hope you're doing okay. That's part of why we do this. There may be Forsy Forsyth. Thank you. Forsyth is the correct pronunciation. Got it. That's why we do what we do is so that, um, you know, people who get impacted by storms like that in that capacity, there's going to be a few of them from Mississippi uh, from Friday. Eventually, they might find the channel and uh, they might be avid followers of Ryan. Maybe myself. Depends on what they see in the weather. <laughs> it's okay, Leave. I I'm doing the best I can. I I definitely want to pay attention to as many people as possible. You know, in fact, I think I might have conjured that into existence. So that is my bad here. But uh, this area right here is either hail or an ongoing microburst. And uh, I mean, we're at an orientation to the radar that doesn't really tell me much about the winds here. So I'm hoping these winds are not picking up. But I think that this is probably a hail core redeveloping. So, yep, looks like some severe weather. Definitely headed towards uh, the Atlanta area right now. I was, I'm surprised that this is still going. That this is still, uh, you know, coming up with another hail core here. So, definitely will be watching out for Atlanta. <clears throat> I know I shouldn't have said anything. I shouldn't have said it. Definitely Bluey Lynn. I'm happy to hear it. Happy to hear it. It's going to get a little bit different when, uh, you know, we've got we've got the whole 
shebang set up here where Ryan eventually is going to redirect every one of his viewers over here into the night hours. And if the tornado threat ramps up while I'm while that's happening and there's going to be so many people here too, uh, perhaps the uh, you know the the pace will change a little bit. Perhaps it'll change a little bit. So I'm just hoping that it's a it's just big old nothing happening by that point. Just some heavy rain everywhere. So I just have to repeat myself two hundred times. <clears throat> Just ran a half marathon. Nice. Very nice. I'll be the night crew. Yep. I mean, I, I've talked about it a few times this stream so far, but this is our these are our risk areas here. You can see them on Radar Omega. Um, a lot of this risk area has already been traversed today, but we still got some remnant supercells over here uh, that are going to travel through favorable conditions uh, in uh, so south central Mississippi, all through southern Mississippi um, through the night. And then these ones over here could be our tornado producers as well. So still a couple of locations to watch for uh, tornadoes in particular. But if this is trending toward um, not being that big of a deal tornado-wise, that's what we want. That's what we want. And um, the only thing to, that I have to say about that other than that is that that's what we thought, yes, or on Friday. And then suddenly, bang. So never, never let your guard down. Never let your guard down. We've also got this uh, slight risk, which is a two out of five from the Storm Prediction Center. One being the lowest threat, and five being the highest. Uh, two out of five over here. This is, uh, you know, this is extending all the way through those areas I was talking about in Macon, and all the way up to Columbia and Charleston, South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, and Wilmington. In, uh, and then uh, Wilmington in North Carolina, that is. So that's going to happen throughout the night. So we can take a look at our uh, models here just to get an idea. The latest one that we've got here will tell us, you know, at what time things are going to happen. So these cells are tracking through Atlanta for the next hour or so. Then we got that big mess that's coming through. For a lot of us over here in the northern part of the risk area, this big mess of heavy rain here is going to come through, but not be not be severe in nature. Our, all of the severe stuff is down here. All these reds and pinks showing up here. And then eventually, so this is this is what it looks like at midnight. So at midnight, we could see the we could see the Selma Montgomery uh, corridor getting slammed with storms. We could see Meridian getting another round uh, that's moved through earlier. So this is 9 p.m. Central. This is midnight central and 3 a.m. central. You can see we've still got isolated strong cells here uh, all around western and central Alabama in uh, these risk areas, south central Alabama to be particular. And then they start getting over here. So this is at 3 a.m. Columbia, South Carolina might have had a bout of heavy rain going through in the early morning. Then they'll get another one. Fayetteville, North Carolina, heavy rain. Uh, and then Wilmington eventually at like 5 a.m. or 6 a.m. Eastern uh, over here. Absolutely ridiculous. So long, long-term severe weather threat tonight. Long-term severe weather threat. I'll try to be on uh, for it as long as I can be. Uh, but at some point, at some point, I gotta go to bed. <laughs> Oh, man. All right, so let's go back to the radar. Take a look if there's anything we need to relay to Ryan. That was Radar Omega we were just looking at. This is called GR2 here. Those are the radar programs I'm using. Thank you for the support today, by the way. I appreciate it. Brooke, thank you for the support. Thanks for that. <laughs> I definitely got uh, food and drink in the fridge. Don't worry about it. I am all good here. Thank you all for watching both of us. That's that's the point. I want to make sure both of the uh, both Ryan and I can do as much as we can to you know wrap up the uh, the coverage so that everybody is included. I sleep. I know, right? Well, thankfully, I didn't go to bed till five a.m. last night or this morning, so um, I've got plenty of energy left into the night hours. Nope, no Twitch tonight. YouTubers don't sleep. Now Ryan's going to sleep. You know why Ryan's going to sleep? 
Ryan's going to sleep because he is going to head out to Mississippi and in person, you know, help out thousands of people who are affected by tornadoes on Friday. That's why he's going to sleep. Uh, I'm up here in Minnesota. That would take me a while longer to do. I also am better. I'm best off here behind the desk because uh, I can't be on my feet too long. <laughs> they start to hurt real bad. Yeah, if that little one lets him, for sure. We got we got Steph. Steph is going to maintain the weather house with Carly. Actually, I don't know who all is going, so... Um, it's a lot to absorb, though, so definitely the best thing for Steph is probably um, staying home because, yeah, that's... I mean, not only is it a lot to absorb, you know, and the damage and the affected people, but it's also dangerous, you know, with all the debris scattered about. You don't want to be walking around in that. I'm going to be streaming on next Thursday and Friday. We do have risk areas next Thursday and Friday that could pose a uh, a need for a live stream as well. So we're a little far out to nail down whether those are going to be, um, you know, guaranteed streams. But um, on Thursday, Ryan will not be available no matter what on the on the 30th of March. So if that if there needs to be a stream for that, um, then I will be the one to do it. Yes. And then if there is one on Friday, we might be able to co-stream as well. So the, right now, they're giant risk areas. If they if things come together, if it looks more conducive when we're within that three-day period, or even four days out from each day, uh, so with, within the next couple of days, we'll, we'll probably figure out whether or not we need to stream. But it could take until the day before or the day of to uh, warrant a live stream from us. I don't have memberships yet, but we'll probably be looking into that. So, uh, <laughs> so stay tuned. Is what I'll say. Stay tuned. What kind of severe weather does Wilmington have? So we were looking at that severe weather primarily over there in South Carolina and North Carolina. It's going to be uh, wind and hail. The tornado, the tornado, tornado threat rather is uh is slight over there in south carolina and uh up to the north carolina border so uh, we're really looking probably at that line of storms coming through so i think it's going to be uh, you might see a shelf cloud if we reach the uh if we reach dawn and the sun starts shining you might see that cloud off in the distance do i have snow i think we only have a little bit of snow uh left a little bit of a snow pile left Thank you, Jet. Yeah, everybody who's subbing, I much appreciate you. We are on our way up to 100K. You're in Ohio, very close to Decatur. Possible major storm there. In Ohio, is he talking about next week? Uh, we have a big-time weather system moving through next week, but the details are a little fuzzy because it's pretty far out. But uh, for Ohio, you're probably, you're probably interested in uh, looking out on uh, Friday to Saturday, possibly even into Sunday. So next weekend. Next weekend for y'all. But um, that big time windstorm just came through there. So hopefully you, you got your power back or you didn't lose power. That's the best case there. Big time windstorm. We were talking about that on the last stream quite a few times. Quite a few times talking about uh, the windstorm. And uh, sure enough, lots of people saw that in Ohio and uh, Pennsylvania, especially in New York. So um, let it be known that I... I was hollering, hollering about it, <laughs> hollering about it. So, uh, yeah, wind is definitely an important thing to pay attention to. A lot of people are going to hear it and uh, know about it. So we got to talk about it. All right. Maybe some people in Natchitoches just went through some uh, hail there. The supercells now got a severe thunderstorm warning on it. Uh, as I said, it may uh, get one if a little bit ago. It's got some hail on it. Again, conditions still in Louisiana are supportive for hail. Uh, not so much tornadoes at the moment. So let me look. Let's see here. Hmm. I think that... Yeah, I really do think that our tornado risk is going to increase markedly into the night here we're really waiting for that nader juice to show up and i think that it's gonna from what i can tell we're looking at i'm looking at some model data 
I think that the, the tornado threat's actually really going to increase just right about in this corridor. And then a little bit to the east with time. Right about in here, south of Demopolis, is, I mean, the Storm Prediction Center's got the moderate risk here, but, like, this is really where um, I think that the uh, tornado risk could ramp up through the night. I'm looking at it, and the, the wind profiles start to become a little more favor favorable as we go with time, as we get that nadir juice in there. Uh, that's our winds about 1,000 feet above the surface. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for watching. We're going to be going for quite some time tonight. Thank you for the support, John. Much appreciated. <laughs> Funny dog sticker. Had some hail in Sterling, Illinois. Dang. Yeah, you got in on that uh, cold core risk. <clears throat> Where's the kitty? He's, he's sleeping somewhere. He's sleeping somewhere. Albertville, you should you should be uh, more fine up there. You're just outside uh, the uh, severe weather risk, just in a general thunderstorm risk. Everywhere up here, you know, well to the north of Birmingham, you're just going to get some rain. You're going to get some rain tonight, maybe a bit of winds. All right. Man. Yeah, this this uh this hail core is still still going strong here as it approaches Atlanta. Especially College Park, Union City, Forest Park. Uh, this area of southern Atlanta and southwestern Atlanta is probably going to see the effects of this hail core. I'm hoping that once again it falls out though and we we really don't see uh that much hail damage into the metro, but it's getting closer. We've been watching that for like uh, I don't even know now, like an hour and a half two hours these cells in particular honestly i'd say it's pretty freaking rare that um all these cells have lasted for uh, like an hour and a half like these are our left split super cells uh, you can see they just continue to go to the north like this usually left splits um they don't last that long that is incredible um, left splits like to die off pretty quickly. The fact that the environment is just still supportive for these things, um, even into the marginal risk, is it's impressive. So yeah, starting to get uh, the severe thunderstorm warnings into the Atlanta metro now. <clears throat> Man. Yeah, those are some. There's a. Those are some storms going through for sure. Uh, all these ones over here should be uh, concentrated around Forsyth uh, and areas to the north of Macon and Warner Robins. So, for now, these areas down here along Interstate, uh, or uh, yeah, Interstate 75. I knew that was 75. Not questioning myself. Uh, all these areas south of Macon, Georgia, uh, are fine for now. It's going to take some time before some more strong storms all the way over here in Alabama uh, start to move into the Georgia area and eventually through South Carolina like we were talking about. All right, let's uh, let's scout for some rotation as best we can. We are look, the main chunk of our storms here are, is in a radar hole, so uh, it's tough to tell. Tough to tell. This is just a big blob of storms, so any sort of spin up tornado is just gonna be just gonna be impossible to to find in here. It's too far away from the radar. Uh, it, it, it's blue candy with a K, but WX at the end of it. Am I going to make snow meters? And it hasn't snowed once. I don't know if my snow meter is going to make it snow for you. I'm sorry. Thank you guys for uh, thinking about the PayPal. I, I might put that in the description in the future, but uh, for now, we're, we're just going to go through YouTube. I know, I know that the, that YouTube takes uh, some, you know, takes some out of it, so. That's fine. 
Uh, thank you for th I all I have to say about that is even though like I, even though I don't have that I don't want that to be the main focus of uh, of our uh, stream here. Um, I, I appreciate the sentiment. It does mean a lot to me that you're you're thinking of you're thinking of it in that in that way. So I appreciate the sentiment. Yes, some I yeah I I understand. <laughs> Twitch is even worse, hey, you know. For the risk areas for Thursday and Friday, they're pretty expansive. Subject to change a little bit here, but I'll show them to you. Uh, so this is a little bit scuffed, but if I look at this, nope, that's even worse. That's even worse. It's a little scuffed, but if I this is for uh, next Thursday. So here it is in Kansas through Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, and uh, and uh, Dallas Fort Worth is also in the severe outlook in uh, for Thursday. And then for Friday, you can see it's just a massive, massive risk area here. So any anywhere in here, you know, this this could be this could lead to an upgrade in the severe weather anywhere inside of this risk, subject to shift to the west or east. Um, some fine tuning to go here. Uh, but yeah, that's a that's an outlook at next week. Thanks for being curious about that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I know. Will it be trimmed. It it will it will definitely be modified as we get closer to um closer to the risk. Closer to the day of. All the details now are a little fuzzy. You know, we we always talk about that, right? You're like, why is it fuzzy? Why why is it that um you you can't forecast the weather for me a week out? Why can't you tell me where the storm's gonna be? You can't tell me where I can't tell you where the storm's going to be a week out because of something called chaos theory. And that essentially means that everything that happens in the atmosphere is a cascading effect. One little molecular interaction here and they move a different direction uh, than you expect and it just changes everything down the line from there on. So we get a single solution that the models think are going to happen, uh, but anything can go differently. Anything can be resolved differently. And that means that past a certain point, which is about a week out for some things, um, we can't tell you anything. And the smaller the thing is, the harder it is to forecast further out. Mm -hmm, the butterfly wings, you might have heard of it. No, I don't think they would make a, a risk area large for the large spread of models. I think they would make a, a risk area large where there's consensus by the models. Consensus is the most powerful thing we have access to in uh, weather forecasting. <laughs> Rivers to, to shift to streams, atmospheric streams. Uh, perhaps they'll perhaps they'll lose a little bit of steam coming up. Yeah, hopefully. We can just get some, you know, light, steady rain. That's good for that's good for nature in California instead of the instead of that heavy stuff. But yeah, one more rain of it probably is gonna one more rain, one more round of it is probably gonna come through over the next couple days for the Pacific Coast. April probably won't be just as bad. I in my last video that I made on this channel, um, I showed the April outlook for precipitation from the Climate Prediction Center, and they actually had a pretty uh, wide area of, of below average precipitation expected for um, for uh, portions of Southern California, the desert Southwest. So perhaps that indicates that, you know, if we're expected to be a little bit below average, or there's a chance to be below average in precipitation, uh, that will, you know, will uh, tone down the frequency of these uh, atmospheric rivers coming through but this one more is going to come through here for now that we know about and then it's going to lead to that severe weather next week or this later this week um on thursday and friday for the center of the u.s central u.s and the midwest and so forth so a half dollar that's what we were just talking about and then a long time out still means we've got time to narrow it down and uh Converge on what's actually going to happen.
yeah, that, that atmospheric river that's impacting California, if you didn't put two and two together, it's going to cross over the Rocky Mountains, go over Utah, Colorado, and so forth. It's going to bring some disturbed weather in there, maybe some snow, if it's still real cold there, which I think it is. Uh, and as, as it goes through, um, it'll eventually come out on the Great Plains, and bam, there's your severe weather it's going to spin up. It's the same old storm system. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get modified over time. There's going to be things that batter into it and so forth, but that's really what's going to cause that uh, severe weather. Lots of waves going through the atmosphere. You either get all or nothing California true. Do I think El Nino will enhance severe weather risk? It will change the frequency for severe weather for some areas, yes, and it will reduce it for others, but... It is not the only thing that is happening in the atmosphere at the same time, so it's really difficult to reduce, um, you know, the reason for something happening to one uh, teleconnection, one oscillation, which is what you're talking about. El Nino is just one oscillation. It is a big one. It's a very important, but um, it's uh, it's difficult to uh, reduce it to that, so... It may have a slight impact on things, and we could try to attribute it to El Nino, but um, at the same time, you know, there's only so much data we can work with. Yep, I man, I wish it was easier to get to everybody, but I know everybody's going to be s cycling in and out, so I, I was talking about all this uh, area in the yellow uh, today. I'm up front, and there are slight risk or two out of five risk from the Storm Prediction Center, including South Carolina and Wilmington, North Carolina, into the morning here. Um, all these storms are just gonna are gonna go through here, so I'll show you. I'll show you how they go through. So here we are. Maybe. No, here we not are. Okay, let's try that again. Radar Omega. Work with me here. There we go. Uh, okay. Never mind. I can't make it work. <laughs> it, I think it wasn't loaded in. There we go. Now we're loaded in. I'm just refusing to work with me. So, as we go into the nighttime hours, here's midnight or 1 a.m. Uh, Eastern, rather. 1 a.m. Eastern. And then you can see for Columbia and so forth, Wilmington, that into the early morning hours, here's 1 a.m., 4 a.m. and uh, and 7 a.m. here. So, for a lot of these areas in South Carolina, North Carolina, and also into Central Georgia, you're going to see a bout of heavy rain probably into the early morning hours. Radar Omega lol. Yep. True. All right. Our most pertinent, uh, our most pertinent storm here is in the Atlanta metro uh, proper now. So let's take a look. Atlanta and uh, the northern metro is probably going to be in a severe thunderstorm warning shortly, um, and it is for this storm right here. So let's take a close look at that. I was hoping this wouldn't persist, but um, there might be a path right here of uh, some hail damage going out with this part of the storm. So this might go right through downtown. It might go just west of downtown. It's going to pass over I-285 and uh, I-20 and I-75 in uh, Atlanta. Right here through uh, this area is where I think the hail is going to track. Uh, so a, a lot of people in uh, to the west of College Park, here in the west part of the city and into uh, into north Atlanta could see the impacts of this. This hail course held on. Um, so this, uh, this storm is warned for golf ball size hail and it's, uh, it's very possible that right here in this hail core where these pinks are, uh, that golf ball size hail is uh, falling golf ball size hail. Bam. So hopefully that does not cause a lot of damage in, uh, Atlanta right now, but it does look like this is, uh, persisting. Brian's feeling like signing off soon. Yep, I'm listening to him. I'm listening to him. It's going to get chaotic. <laughs>
yeah, whenever membership comes through, I think Ryan will probably support the the membership thing here. But for now, we're uh, for now um, we don't have that set up. But we have super chats and so forth. But I'm I'm just trying not to focus too much on the financials. But I do appreciate everyone who's supporting. Oh man, yeah. I'm hoping that I'm hoping we don't get a lot of hail here in Atlanta. But yeah, I think that this right here, do my best to show you as close as possible. Here's our hail. Uh, the majority of the hail core is just along this area near Red Oak and College Park at the moment, and it's going to track mostly this direction. So everywhere, everywhere up and around here, uh, up and around here into North Atlanta, Oak Grove, and Vinings, uh, and downtown is might see a hail core coming in soon here. Uh, and is there a lot of lightning with this? Is there a lot of lightning with this? Oh yeah, there's quite a bit of lightning. It's probably looking real flashy for anyone in Atlanta. Thank you for the ten dollars, Kyle. Much appreciated. How can you create more useful data? The most useful data that can come from anything, any efforts that Ryan and I are doing, is based on the the masses, the the flux of the masses. So it's literally the information receiving. Like more people receiving information. It's the social aspect. So it's you telling people about the weather. It's you using us as a resource to tell them about the weather so that they can get information. Or And then that person can tell another person. It's all about the exponentials. The most important thing I think that can stem from what we're doing here on YouTube is the social side of it. Because... If you think about Rolling rolling Fork and all these uh, violent tornadoes we had on Friday that we covered here on, in a stream, there were still, you know, upwards of 25 or more casualties from those tornadoes. And it was because a lot of people were not aware. So we have work to do to let as many people know as possible about things like this when they're happening. Now, obviously, not everybody is going to be able to have access to technology or so forth, but um, you know, it's it's the best I it's the best we can do. Man, this uh this hail core still looks pretty nasty. I don't see really any signs of this one letting up. Uh, as it as it enters Atlanta, I think Atlanta is going to see a hailstorm right now. A lot, uh, a lot of Atlanta, especially the le the west side here, the southwest side, and then uh, through the north and probably the northeast side if this persists. All right, let's take a look everywhere else we can. Everywhere else, just to make sure we're not missing anything, uh, rotation wise. I can't really see much from this radar site. Yeah, this this is good. This is good, guys, that we have not really... We, we haven't really had a confirmed tornado warning yet today. There may have been some funnels or maybe a brief touchdown. I hate the word touchdown, honestly, for tornadoes. There may have been a brief, uh, you know, tornadic circulation reaching the ground here or coming up from the ground, rather. So we may have had a, an actual tornado today, and that will probably come through. National Weather Service reports will show us, but like, I'm I'm very happy that we just haven't seen you know something we can really look at and observe happening via the radar. So that's good. That's good, because that means we've uh, avoided the worst of a lot of it. But I think that there's still there's still a good uh, shot at things intensifying into the night. So don't let your guard down at all. Yeah, it, it's not no news because we did we we heard tr chasers trying to confirm a tornado back in Louisiana some, but the hope is that it hit next to nothing, next to nothing. But yeah, I'm I'm aware I'm aware of uh, what Reed had. Might be live Thursday. We do not know yet if the risk increases as we get closer to it. Then definitely yes. Made contact? Well, actually, most of them form from the ground up. 
is what a lot of uh, current meteorologists are thinking about uh, the theory of tornado genesis. So use that uh, for context. <laughs> Tree damage? Okay. Hopefully uh, no injuries then. Okay, so I don't see anything over here. Still watching it. Into Louisiana, I don't see very much of anything. Uh, this this storm right here is what we call outflow dominant. You can see instead of a hook forming, there is no hook there, but rather it's just uh, kind of forming a line here. Still a supercell though, and it's got some uh, it's got some hail risk in its core here and possibly damaging winds. So it's severe warned, headed toward the north of Alexandria, Georgetown, in for another round. Uh, but I don't see anything tornadic there. And then pretty much all the severe thunderstorm warnings here in uh, most all of Mississippi have been allowed to expire. These are still strong storms, though. Uh, with tons of heavy rain. And this, th the worst part about this, guys, the worst part about this is this over here. This over here is going to track into these green boxes, which are flash flood warnings. So another inch of rain, maybe even more from these uh these dumpers over here it's just gonna it's just gonna fall in a place that's already experiencing flash flooding so that's the bad part i think that's probably the worst part about these storms right now so we don't want to see that flash flooding occurring that could be one of the main things uh for the remainder of the night <laughs> well, it's dumping the rain. What else can I say? It's dumping the rain. <clears throat> Man, some good lightning strikes today, though, guys. Definitely the lightning activity has been a lot of the theme. This, this hail is not calming down. Atlanta is going to get uh, pretty smashed by this. Atlanta is going to get pretty smashed by this uh, this severe thunderstorm here. So this is definitely going to be one of the stories tonight because hailstorms can be really costly, really costly when they go through a metro area. And this is definitely people are starting to experience hail now. This is a populated area. People are starting to experience hail for sure. Be aware, don't get caught in your underwear. <laughs> it would work if both of those things weren't wear. We gotta get a little bit better of a rhyme there. <clears throat> Man. Brad's got some lightning showing up. It's really lightning and hail today. This, If this is just a lightning and hail day, man... We can rest a little easier. I definitely had to take an entire day yesterday to decompress from a Friday stream, guys. If you haven't watched Friday stream back, I would recommend that. Like, I feel like I, I feel like we did a really, really good job with Friday. Um, you know, th there was some emotion. It, it was warranted. Like, I, I didn't, I, I didn't post on social media at all yesterday. Uh, after that, um after that stream because I wanted the focus not to be on myself and my emotions, but rather the recovery efforts and that transfer of it, that, that communication of information. So I, I didn't say much of anything. I just wanted it to be on, Hey, let's get help to these people and information going through. I don't want to post about how, you know, wow, I was warned. I was definitely valid and, you know, you know, feeling pretty strongly about what we were looking at because, you know, I definitely saw the damage. So, Two eighty five traffic, yeah, with that hill moving through. Some people might have just got some busted windshields. I hope not. But um you see these pinks and purples here? Uh this is definitely either some pretty big hail or a lot of hail if it is smaller. Uh, so either way, this is gonna cause some hail damage. Um severe thunderstorm warning is probably coming really soon for these areas right here. Um 
well, let me draw that a little better. There's probably a severe thunderstorm warning just for these areas right here coming out. So North Atlanta, Chambly. I'm sorry, I tried that one. Mechanicsville, um, uh, ahead of the line. I think y'all are going to see a pretty good severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, and it might come through with some beeps here because this last one was just allowed to expire. So let's see what the National Weather Service has to say about this. I'm sure they've been receiving plenty of uh, hail reports. That's for Alabama right there. They're receiving plenty of hail reports, so they can do their best uh, case judgment here to say, oh, what is the max hail that this, uh, this storm is producing at the moment, so that they can warn for that. considerable which is for golf ball size hail so we got that considerable storm all of northern atlanta is included in that oh man i hope this doesn't do a lot of damage but there's definitely some hail happening here i mean this uh this pink these pinks and purples here are really gonna do really gonna do a number to people's stuff here so Ryan's entranced with a storm over here. I, I just saw it a, a little bit ago, but it um, our, our wind speeds look pretty weak on the radar, but it's definitely got that concerning shape. And uh, um, one thing that we really look at for storms like this, this is in southeastern Mississippi near Laurel. Um, and we've got Brad Arnold's feed down there, so that's, uh, that's the bottom right chaser feed there. That's that lightning you're seeing. If you see more and more lightning on Brad's feed over time, if it's trending up, then that means the cell is, or the storm that we're watching is healthier. So the more lightning there is there, the more chance for a severe weather that that one's got. So pay attention uh, if his feed keeps coming through nice and clear there. I think Chris's is frozen. Let me see if I can refresh that. Okay, there we go. But yeah, pay attention to Brad's feed. If you see more and more lightning flashes down there, then that storm's intensifying. And it may take advantage of uh, the environment and try to become tornadic here. So we'll see. We'll see what uh, comes through there. All right, East Point, south of Atlanta. Just got hit with some big time hail. Big time hail going on there. Man. Yeah, the, the, the Atlanta airport, I think, is uh, just about in this area. I'm pretty sure this is where uh, Hartsfield is. It's pretty close to that if it's not right there. I think I remember. So uh, some big hail just went to the west of the airport. That's going to definitely delay any uh, anything uh, going on there. You do not want to fly in that. <clears throat> you do not want to fly in that. But yeah, the, man, it is looking like, look at that, that new scan right there. We're really thinking that it's going to go right over, right over downtown Atlanta. I don't know what kind of footage is going to come out of this, but I hope any, anyone is like safe in these buildings. Like uh, probably a good idea if you're in a skyscraper in Atlanta to stay away from the windows. Stay away from the windows. Stay away from those windows, man. I Just in case. Just in case, because this is a, this is a heck of a storm here. Arts fields near Union City. Really? What was this field down here? Oh, okay. So we're closer down over here. I thought it was in this intersection. <laughs> so yeah, it's closer. It's closer down here. That was my best guess. That was without looking. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this I I I don't know. It depends on how big this hail is. If if this is just a lot, a lot of small hail that's uh, producing these signatures on radar here in the pink, um, then hopefully the damage will be reduced. But if this is larger hail, if this is like golf ball hail, um, yeah, we're gonna see quite a bit of vehicle damage, quite a bit of damage to uh, sightings of houses probably. So it's gonna be loud for sure for a lot of people over here.
<laughs> Still watching this near Laurel, Mississippi. That's where our eyes are besides this. Uh, this thread over here. And of course, uh, any of anyone watching in the Montgomery, Alabama area, I gave you a heads up uh, quite a bit ago, maybe about 30 minutes ago. This cell is still continuing, like I said it would, uh, out towards the Montgomery area. So it will pack a punch. It's not even severe warned right now, though, but it's definitely producing some hail, I bet, and definitely a, quite a bit of lightning, I'd say. I hope you're all doing well as well. There is no rail fan cam in Atlanta, no. I'm listening to Ryan, guys. Don't worry. I can hear when he's doing whatever he's doing. <laughs> I can hear it, so I'll, I'll be here to do my best. This is, this is good so far, though. I think that the tornado threat could still ramp up tonight, but, like, a lot of these areas are just seeing uh, some, I mean, some pretty powerful storms. Like, uh, this is definitely nothing to, n nothing to scoff at here. This is some powerful wind gusts, probably small hail in these as well. It's a, it's a nasty-looking storm outside, I'm sure, for uh, Thomaston and uh, Atlanta, and eventually Camden again, round two. Round two, and then this, I mean, this this storm right here, this particular blob of storms, is probably going to continue this direction for hours. For hours. So, way down the line, this, this will probably be what gives uh, Columbus and Georgia and Phoenix City over here in Alabama. It will give you some bad weather over there. Auburn and Alabama. Uh, this, this blob of storms is really just going to keep going in uh, this direction, probably, out this way for quite some time. This storm that was going through Forsyth in Georgia kind of just died out. If it uh, posed a risk still, I'd definitely be talking about it. Uh, but we have another... Uh, we're starting to get severe thunderstorms over here in uh, East Georgia as well, and also into South Carolina, so... Into the nighttime hours like we've been uh, talking about here. Um, these storms are going to start popping up. So here's that hail going into downtown Atlanta right now. All of this area right in here is probably some uh, hail falling. So it's going to move off in this direction with the severe thunderstorm. I thought that also, you know, Mechanicsville and North Atlanta, you guys have the chance to get in on some hail as well. So I, I hope this isn't large hail doing a lot of damage, because that would, that would be pretty costly. Pretty costly. There are people start stopping under bridges in Atlanta. It's really unfortunate that, you know, the... You know, to save your vehicle from hail damage, you would stop under a bridge, but you're taught, you should be taught not to do that in a, in a powerful storm if it is tornadic, because there's probably no way you could know that it's tornadic, and if you're under an overpass and the storm comes through with a tornado, that's no good. That is no good. We need that to not happen. We need that to not happen because uh, overpasses, they funnel the winds through them, which means a tornado is locally stronger under an overpass. And if that's where your car is, well, you're getting the absolute worst that you possibly could. You don't want to be in the absolute worst that you possibly could be in in a tornado. Dime size hail in Atlanta. Yeah, reports are probably coming in quite a bit. Um, maybe I could look at them on here. Yeah, I see quarter size hail reports, dime size, so um, probably some pretty hefty hail falling in Atlanta. If it's wind driven, it's going to be dangerous to anyone driving um, in uh, in the storm. So, unfortunately, that's what people are going to do. They're going to value their car and be like, "Oh yes," and then 
they're gonna be they're gonna be right this time because they're in a hailstorm. But but we can't we can't reinforce that behavior because if they are in a tornadic storm in the future, that is that's the difference, guys, between a possible loss of life and and saving a life is them not being in an overpass or under an overpass versus being under it, like. That that could be the difference in a in a life if if they get stuck under that in a tornado and that's just no good. Take one more look over here in uh near Winfield in Louisiana. <laughs> This is just a funny looking supercell. Okay. Now we got a new, a tornado, new tornado warning. warning has been issued. It's for this area right here in Wilcox County. You could see I was kind of looking at that on the radar. I've had it open, taken a peek at it. It's not a, a couple. Tornado though. warning has been couple is when this red is right next to this blue. So this is a preventative uh, tornado warning issued a ahead of time for it's like a it's like a pattern recognition thing here. If you see this rotation tighten up at the moment, it is not anything more but broad rotation. So this is broad. If it tightens up, though, then it could produce something. So we don't have we don't have a, a real um, we don't really have a couplet besides maybe a weak one right here in the middle of it. We'll see how this evolves. Uh, but then, again, we've got this uh, edge of the uh, National Weather Service uh, warning office here. So this this is the edge of the uh, probably the Mobile uh, Alabama Weather Service office. And then over this direction is going to be covered by Birmingham. So we're going to get two separate warnings here. Uh, more than likely, if Birmingham chooses to warn this, it's going to be some it's going to be somewhat in this fashion moving through. So uh, in, in Dallas County, uh, uh, y'all watch out. A heads up that a tornado warning might be coming your your way here in Dallas County in Alabama. So let's see if Ryan does it right. This is this is the first time we're going to try to do this. Thank you, Skywarn, for the support. Don't worry, guys. I'm listening to Ryan. I'm listening to him. He's right in my ears. I've been talking this whole time while having Ryan in my ears. So if you think I'm not listening, I am. I'm doing like five things at once. <laughs> Let's see if it works. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Brace yourselves. We're going to do the best we can. Teletransported Ryan Squad coming in. All oh, raid. Yeah, you guys are all going to call it a raid, aren't you? Hope you're all doing well tonight, though. Let's see if it works. Did it work? All right. We're waiting. We're waiting. We're watching this tornado warning right now in Wilcox County in Alabama, and it's going to go towards Dallas County, which may have a separate tornado warning issued for it. I don't know if it worked, Ryan. <laughs> I hope it worked, but it I don't know if we did it right. If not, then everybody's got to funnel over as best they can. Made it? Nice. Let me talk to Ryan, actually. What are you seeing, Ryan? Did it work? <laughs> hope you're all doing well. Yeah, I don't think it worked either. Uh, I'm not sure how to make it work, honestly. It, uh, yep. I guess I guess we just gotta spam the link. Oh, there we go. Yep, there we go. Now you can click on Go Now. <laughs> okay, thanks, Ryan. All right, guys. Now it's working. Now it's working. Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. 
now everybody, yeah, it looks like it's just going to auto redirect. So everybody coming in from Ryan, hope you're doing well. I'll be with you tonight. Meteorologist Andy Hill here came through on the stream a few times. We're doing our thing together. But now I'm here to show you the back end, uh, the meteorology, the science of uh, what's going on, why I tune into Ryan's stream, why I'm like, hey, I'm going to turn your lights green and give you stuff to look at. This is my perspective of it, so that's what we're doing here. And to let you know, I'm going to be here through the night, probably another four hours, uh, unless this really ramps down. But we've been talking about this all night. Here's Radar Omega. And we've been talking about this all night, because all these storms over here in south-central Alabama, they're going to move on over through this yellow area, through South Carolina, all the way up to Wilmington, uh, North Carolina on the shore here. So we're going to see severe weather, even though it's going to tone down a little bit uh, a few hours from now, hopefully, uh, throughout the night. So I'm going to stay with you. Hopefully everyone can find some value in this as well. And I've still got the storm chasers below me, too. So you see the storm chasers here. There's Chris Hall in Mississippi. And uh, also um, Brad Arnold is down there, but he got changed on me again. But yeah, we've got Brad Arnold and Chris Hall. So Storm Chasers, you still get to watch them. I can pull them up so we can watch some lightning as well. Because the lightning today has been something, hasn't it? So yeah, we're going to cover the risk throughout the rest of the night. I'm here for you if you're in Macon, Georgia. If you're in Columbia, South Carolina. Charleston, South Carolina. Wilmington, North Carolina. Myrtle Beach. I might not be here all the way there because the storms are going to get to you probably about 5 to 6 a.m. Eastern. So it's going to take some time. But uh, we're really going to be watching these ones for the next, you know, three to four hours. I'll hang out with y'all. So make sure you get comfy. Get yourself a nice beverage. You know, get yourself a nice snack. Enjoy dinner with the weather and make sure that if somebody you know is in an area that we're looking at closely here that you can use my stream much like you use Ryan's stream to uh, relay the weather to them. Thank you. So let's do it. Okay, we're going to be here a while. Of course, just like you do with Ryan's stream, make sure you use the like button to let people know that this is uh, important stuff. And of course, if you didn't know that I have a channel... Uh, you know, everybody's going to find out at a different time. I'm here. I'm making forecasting videos and doing live streams now. My first live stream was that Friday stream where Ryan raised $120,000 to uh, help with tornado relief. Okay? So um, that, uh, that was my first stream. We watched all those tornadoes happen. Uh, we've had several violent tornadoes, intense tornadoes uh, on that day. It was a lot. So I'm um, for now, I'm thankful that the uh, risks today have been mostly muted in comparison to that. But we've seen some really impressive hail and some really impressive lightning today. So just cross your fingers that the, you know, the best uh, case here keeps happening for our friends in the deep south um, who are going through the peak of their severe weather season right now in the months of uh, March and April. So yeah, that's uh that's what we're going. That's what we're going with. So yeah, if you didn't know I have a channel, welcome, welcome. And you like uh you like the the meteorology, the science back end of this, then uh, feel free to sub. Let's us know that what we're doing is good stuff. Cool. It was absolutely amazing how everybody came together. Thank you guys for the support. Good to see you all in uh, these areas. We'll be talking about them here uh, quite often, but also feel free to uh, ask what you need. Um, mods will hopefully be able to help you out um, because I won't see everybody, but I will do my best because I care about all of y'all watching. So we just watched this storm move through Atlanta. And uh, m this uh, severe thunderstorm warning was uh, probably downgraded here. Uh, but before it was, we saw some golf ball size hail come up through College Park and right into the center of downtown Atlanta. Now the northern and northeastern parts of the metro are going to start to see some, uh, you know, some hail from this primarily. Uh, so North Atlanta, Mechanicsville, Tucker, all of these areas in here are going to get the remnants of the storm that just went through downtown Atlanta. In addition to that, I'm also watching uh, Montgomery. The supercell that was approaching the Montgomery area has really started to fizzle out here uh, near where Brett Adair is. Let me switch my scene over here. So... Right around where Brett Adair is, this uh, cell has really started to um, lose its mojo. So hopefully that continues to be the case. But for our huge blob of storms back in here, this is uh, southwestern Alabama here near Orville and all the way down to Grove Hill. This uh, huge blob of storms is going to keep basically moving this direction and all the way uh, over this direction. So Montgomery eventually will get in the action. 
uh, and all the way down to maybe Andalusia. Andalusia? One of those. Andalusia. There we go. Got to write that third time. So, uh, for you know, this, this blob of storms is going to persist for hours in this direction, all the way to Columbus, Georgia, probably, all the way over here. Um, so some severe weather is expected with this. Whether or not it comes with a tornado threat, we'll, I'll be on top of that because, you know, I come through. Uh, some people are trying to call me the tornado whisperer, so I'll make sure to do my best. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for liking the stream. Appreciate you guys. Make sure you're staying hydrated. Yeah, yeah, lots of people in this risk are just going to get this. some of these storms, you know, whether it's heavy rain up here, more towards uh, Birmingham and Auburn, Alabama, or it's the strong line of storms down here that just goes all the way through central Georgia for quite some time. And eventually, some of it finds its way over to South Carolina as well, and Augusta, Georgia, and anywhere all along those areas. Um, uh, powerful storms are coming your way. Hopefully, the, the risk with them decreases into the nighttime hours, though. So yeah, if you're wondering um, what uh, what Ryan's doing, Ryan's ended early right now because he is on the way to Mississippi. He is on the way to Mississippi right now to help out with tornado victims. We're putting everybody's contributions to work in person. I, I, you're just not going to see much like that anywhere else. When Ryan hired me a year ago, that's what he told me eventually we were going to do. And that's a big part of the reason why I'm on this team. It's incredible a year later that we're I'm watching it happen, you know, right right now. Unfortunately, we had the event happen, but we can't stop it. We have nothing in our power to stop it. All we can do is help them from this point on and do the best uh, we can to raise awareness in every way. We've done we've done an amazing job. We hit fifty thousand subs on the channel this stream. Um, so much appreciated, guys. Much appreciated. Goodness gracious. But yeah, we're going to be talking about everybody tonight. I, I hope that I'll be on for another three or four hours tonight. So we got time. We got time. If you want to comment in the chat, yeah, um, I got five minute sub mode on. So once, you are, once you've been here for five minutes, you're good to go. You're good to go. <clears throat> Much appreciated, y'all. <clears throat> and I'll be making videos too. We do forecast videos over here. I've just been overwhelmed with these streams. These are my first two streams of the weather on my per my perspective of it, my point of view. Uh, so uh, these being my first two streams, you know, it's taken a, a lot of time away for me to make those videos too. It's I can't, you know, you have to respect Ryan past a certain point that he can make videos all the time and uh, cover the, s the severe weather in these streams like this. It's absolutely incredible. All right, let me see. I think both of our chasers are frozen here, so let me get them back up, or at least try to get them back up. We got Brad Arnold here. Let's see if we can get uh, Brad through the night so that we can get him some extra funds. Thank you guys for the donations. And then we're going to take a look. So let me show you my process, what I'm looking at in the radar, so uh, that I can come through on Ryan's stream, change his lights to green. And tell him about something he might not be seeing. So we've got multiple radars up here. Here's Louisiana. Switch it back to the uh, the Jackson, Mississippi radar here. And here's the uh, Georgia storm up here. <laughs> it's, interestingly enough, we also do have maybe a slight bit of rotation in uh, northern Atlanta. But this is in an odd part of the storm. Uh, you can see that rotation here with these tans, these pinks and tans here, and also the darker reds on the other side. This is some weak rotation right in here near North Atlanta. It may not be producing a tornado, but this is still, you know, a powerful storm that's severe warned. So we'll uh, keep an eye on that since it's in an interesting part of the storm, an unusual part, I would say. All right, so uh, beyond that, let's uh, take a look down here where Brad Arnold's looking. There we go. We got his feedback. He's in the bottom right of the stream. Um, he's looking at probably something that's producing quite a bit of lightning. I'll tell you guys why so much lightning is happening today in just a second. Uh, so let me see how much lightning we got. How much lightning we got going on there? Yeah, quite a bit. I see a good 30, 40 strikes. Uh, in and around the uh, Sandersville area here north of Laurel. So Brad Arnold's position on Highway 84. Here's his dot right here in this blue circle. And he's uh, he's looking at all the lightning uh, out of his driver's side window here. Off to his left in that video. Uh, man. So we got some really electrically active storms today. 
And the reason for that is, I'll do my best to illustrate it here. The reason for that here on Radar Omega, if I can illustrate it, our risk here now is, uh, is focused in uh, South Central Alabama to uh, Western Georgia here. But our air aloft, let me draw it in black here, our, our air aloft, you know, four miles up in the storm, is coming from this direction over Mexico and Texas. It's very dry, um, like quite a few miles up there. It's very dry. It's also cold. And because of that, we have cold, dry air on top of warm, moist air. That's very unstable. Very unstable means lots of lightning. Lots of lightning. So that's why we're seeing so many impressive lightning strikes today in uh, these storms in the Gulf states. <clears throat> Don't be scared, be prepared, as Ryan says today. Um, we really have ramped down in our risk today. I've been talking about how every hour that we streamed uh, starting this afternoon, you know, I've been streaming for about, um, about four and a half hours now, maybe a little over that, maybe we're up to five hours. Uh, every hour that we went on in the day, it was possible for the tornado risk to increase uh, because we're really waiting to get what you guys like to call nadir juice, which is our winds about at the, the height of the Empire State Building. So that's 1,300 feet. Um, those, uh, those, that nadir juice, those winds up there are starting to increase as we go into the night hours. That means the tornado threat goes up, uh, but uh, we really haven't seen that uh, in effect yet. So... Still looking at this storm near Orville and Selma in, uh, you know, in central Alabama now. It's going to eventually make its way towards Montgomery. We've got a little bit of rotation here. Wind's going, uh, wind's going uh, this direction. Oh, good grief. Let me take a look at this, actually. Yeah, from the Birmingham radar, we've got winds going this direction. I drew that correctly. And going this direction a little bit. So right in the middle, we could get some rotation along here. Uh, but this uh, tornado warning is back in here because it's from a different National Weather Service office. So it's going to take some time for uh, the, you know, for the next National Weather Service office. I think it's Birmingham uh, that covers Dallas County here to uh, issue a warning out to this direction if they think that it's necessary. No, Brad's feet isn't missing. He's right down there. And at any point, oh, cool. Nice, there goes the last tornado warning, so now we're back to no tornado warnings, guys. I know it says Ryan Cardi, let me f let me try to fix that. Oh, those, uh, Ryan keeps changing it on me. He's probably laughing at me right now. Like, y you're so silly. There's Brad Arnold. Hey, look at that, fixed. I got it. <clears throat> So yeah, we'll be watching all those storms today. Hope you all, hope you all are doing well. I heard that places in Wisconsin, especially the Madison to Green Bay area, got over a foot of snow. I can talk a little bit about that. It's because you had a really heavy band of snow. I mentioned it just a little bit on that last stream on Friday. Uh, but man, that snow was ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous for a lot of y'all in Wisconsin. I hardly believe that. But that that's the power of forcing, man. When you see that come together, uh, it, it's incredible what the atmosphere can do. <clears throat> if anyone's watching this feed and the stream looks super blurry, make sure that you um, check on the video player, either mouse over it or tap on it, and then go to that cog, the settings cog in the bottom right, and change the quality to HD, 1080p or 720p. That's why you're seeing it as blurry, because you're on low quality. And that might be silly. Why are you on low quality? Unless your internet is bad, you don't want to be on low quality. So make sure you change that. Make sure you change that. We'll see about memberships. Those aren't live yet, but thank you for inquiring. I appreciate it. Thanks for all the support, too. Y'all mean a lot to me. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure you guys are watching on high quality. If you're defaulted to low quality, well, I, I can't do much about that because I am streaming at high quality. <laughs> I got it for you. You just have to get it. You just have to change it yourself. Sorry, I didn't see that. But yeah, quite a few people probably were like, man, why is this so low quality? <laughs> they didn't know it was their fault. Yeah, you want to change it to 1080p or 720p if it's available. Much appreciated, y'all. Thanks for the support. We're still watching all these storms to see if we're getting any uh, severe weather or any uh, tornadoes, really. 
Uh, we've got a few hours to go yet for uh, particularly these areas in south central Alabama for a possible tornadic threat um, in these in these places. So Greenville to Montgomery and maybe Andalusia, Andalusia and north in Alabama. Uh, this corridor is probably where I'd be watching closely. Draw that in blue for you. This corridor is probably where I'd be watching most closely over the next few hours because this line of storms is pretty strong. So I'll be watching that. And then eventually down the line, we'll see that uh, we'll see that line of storms get much further to the east. So they're going to track. You can see them right here on Radar Omega in the blue. They're going to track mostly this direction, a little bit down here as well. And then eventually, you know, all these storms over here are also going to move east into uh, the yellow up here. So Columbia, Charleston into the morning hours, early morning hours for y'all here. But um, Montgomery and Columbus. Uh, right in this area, we'll get storms over the next few hours. That's our timeline right now. Ryan has to go to bed because he is going to Mississippi to help out with tornado victims. In person. For a while. We could talk a little bit about the forecast coming up too, y'all. Let me do that for you. <clears throat> so we've got, um, two days from now, we've got an atmospheric river or over the next couple of days, really, we've got an atmospheric river. One more, one more for y'all in California. One more for y'all in California. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. Let me show you. So here we go. This is a little bit off-centered, so bear with me here. It's the best I can do. This is the Weather Prediction Center site. This is for Tuesday. In this area over here, let me use black. In this area over here, you can see heavy rain, mixed precipitation all along the Pacific coast again. There's your unsettled weather on Tuesday. So heavy rain here along the California coast one more time. One more time on Tuesday, okay? For a little bit. I think you guys will get a little bit of a break after this. So one more time on Tuesday. It, this uh, red hatched area right here in particular. So areas to the Bay Area and north of Los Angeles. Uh, that's what you're looking at here. There's your, there's your uh, one more round of uh, intense weather over there. This same storm system you see right here, this one and all this unsettled weather over here, is going to move across the Rockies, across the Intermountain West, through Nevada, Utah, uh, Idaho, and Colorado, and it's going to reemerge over here on the Great Plains in a couple of days from now, okay? And when that happens, bang. Here's, the, here's Thursday's severe weather risk. This includes Dallas-Fort Worth. This includes Oklahoma City. This includes almost Kansas City uh, and Topeka. So all these areas in the South Plains to the Central Great Plains here on Thursday will get severe weather. The next day, here's Friday's risk. It's huge. This is subject to be upgraded at any time, too, as we get closer. Things are a little fuzzy right now since it's so far out. Uh, but as it gets closer, we're going to learn more about this risk area. So this is on Friday, March 31st. And we're going to see, you know, up to the Midwest and all the way down to maybe even Dallas again. And, uh, you know, these, these days are almost blending together here. So there's your severe weather. Atmospheric River for California, severe weather over here. Maybe some snow way up north into uh, Ontario and Quebec it is possible as the storm tracks through the U.S. again. Another springtime weather maker. So there you go. Weather for the week right there. Weather through Friday. The, abbrevi the abbreviation of that's pretty funny. <laughs> Don't worry about me, guys. I got some Jersey mics in the fridge. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. <clears throat> what happened with Ryan's stream? He had to end his stream because he's going to bed right now. He's going to bed because tomorrow he is driving to Mississippi to, a to help in the relief effort directly he's going to put all of us all of our collective funds that y'all have raised and put it into action it's incredible what's going to happen there so um you're going to see you're going to see a lot from him especially on twitter uh you can follow both of us on twitter i'll, I'll retweet all of the awesome humanity related things that he's doing out there <laughs> Thank you guys. Yeah, I'm, don't worry. Everyone who has got severe weather tonight, I'll get to you at some point. Okay, so uh, I hope that um, I could get you before you have to go to bed because yeah, a lot of people will need to go to bed. It's true. But um, we did this on Friday night into early Saturday morning, and there were uh, quite a few people 
uh, who uh, stayed up with me and got and got their weather. It was nice to talk to them. It, it was great. <clears throat> yep, if you have low quality, make sure you change the quality to HD. Make sure you change it. And also, if you're watching this now, you hear my voice now, check the time on your phone. If it's not the same minute on the hour as the time in the bottom right corner of the stream, then you might be behind. So make sure that your time is, uh, you know, within the minute. And I, I am streaming right now to, you know, about five seconds of delay. And that's why there aren't closed captions right now for anyone wondering. Um, Ryan's stream will have closed captions, but it takes about 30 seconds for his broadcast to reach your ears. Mine is only going to take about five seconds, so you you heard what I said five seconds ago. Just about. <clears throat> indeed, indeed, cloud gaming. I will do exactly that. Lawrenceville, you're up next for uh, this severe thunderstorm warning. I think I know a very nice person, you know, in and around this area of northeastern Atlanta who's probably going through it right now. So anywhere over here, um, hopefully y'all are uh, paying attention to the weather right now. And, uh, you know, I don't see anything tornadic with this anymore. You know, that really interesting area of rotation is gone now. This is just going to be a powerful thunderstorm rolling through the northeastern Atlanta suburbs here uh, and out into Gwinnett County and so forth, eventually toward Flowery Branch here in Georgia. So get ready. Get ready for a strong storm moving through here. You're going to hear it. You're going to hear it <clears throat> on the Apple TV. Nice, nice. Will Michigan get any severe weather next weekend? You're probably a little bit removed from it for now, but I, see, I don't see it being impossible. No, I don't see it being impossible. Definitely possible. we got the best meteorologists in the world, and I'm relaying their message with my own dose of meteorology here, so I hope you can trust that. <laughs> I think I've done pretty good over the years on Ryan's, or over the year, over the one year that I've been with Ryan. At least I tried to. <laughs> Whew, all right, so we do have uh, severe thunderstorm warnings into uh, South Carolina now. I am going to um, perhaps bring up another radar site for that. I think our severe threat back here in Mississippi is ending. We've got this one strong storm that is about to enter the Waynesboro, Mississippi area. Uh, but beyond that, all these cells back here are not doing much besides some heavy rain. I've been keeping an eye on them using the radar here. In case you're curious, on the left side of the radar, we're looking at the rain. On the right side of the radar right here, we're looking at the winds. So it's it looks like a bunch of a mess, but uh, these are some of the products that I look at to help Ryan out in the back ends. Okay, so... In case you're curious, that's what we're looking at here. <clears throat> so I think that, um, you know, the, the worst part about this is that we might have some heavy rain moving into Jackson, which just had some issues with flash flooding uh, here along I-20. But beyond that, I think our severe risk back here in Mississippi and uh, Louisiana is uh, mostly coming to a bit of an end here. So still some strong storms, but... We may we've definitely seen a reduction in the warnings over here. So let's uh let's take this radar and move it over to South Carolina. <clears throat> and then we'll 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 take a sweep and look at everyone around. Okay. We do definitely have an interesting storm here. It was interesting for a, a minute there, so we can take a look. This was uh this was nine minutes ago here near Eureka, South Carolina, to the north and east of Augusta, Georgia. You can see probably what you're used to seeing here. This little hook echo here did show up. We had some uh, brief rotation right over the town of Eureka. Uh, right around here. So that was showing up there, but look at it now. Now it's just turned into this mess. So we have this uh, this orientation here where it's kind of just like this. Uh, this, is not, this is not a tornado producing supercell. So when you see this right here and it goes straight down, we call that outflow dominant. Uh, this part of the storm is just being pushed like this. It's not going to be able to really wrap up here. It's going to just produce either hail or wind. Uh, this is a good signature. This is what we want to see when we're uh, hoping that we're going to avoid tornadoes. So we're good right here for now in South Carolina. Uh, this one headed eventually towards uh, to the south of Columbia. So it's going to go out uh, this direction and draw it in blue here. 
going to go out this direction towards Swansea, Woodford. Might take a little bit more of a northern path there. So Gaston included in that. Probably um, probably Columbia, you'll see some of the heavy rain in the forward flank of that supercell. Uh, but it's probably going to take, you know, maybe 45 minutes to get to you. So you got some time yet. The right side of the radar is called Velocity. So that's the winds we're looking at. And of course, the warnings come through on my stream too. If we ever do get a tornado warning tonight or uh, another considerable severe thunderstorm, uh, you'll see that, uh, you'll, you'll hear it. You'll hear it pop up. I got the same warning system that Ryan does. Uh, we, let's restart Chris's stream here just in case he's been frozen. I'm not sure. We'll make sure that we got the chaser feeds up to date for you. These pink circles, I, honestly, I shouldn't have them on for the stream. If I mouse over them there, you can kind of see that they give me a lot of information. This is all atmospheric variables. This is all like the cape and stuff, the instability, uh, the winds, and a, a bunch of other products here that tell me uh, facts about the area around this storm. So I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at that because that helps me, you know, in a really efficient manner. But uh, just pay attention to these square, you know, these these uh, sharp polygons here. That's what you're used to seeing. So this is a severe thunderstorm warning uh, right here. Nope, I don't got no flashing lights. I'm sorry. Thanks for the support, y'all. Thank you for the support. Absolutely, Debash. I got you. Happy that, happy that I can help at any point. In any capacity, I appreciate it. Thank you all for the support. <laughs> Unless you shut off chat. Oh, no. Oh, it's funny that whenever you put me on a TV, you know, it might sacrifice the quality. Maybe maybe it just takes more subs for YouTube to recognize, hey, we need to default this guy to HD. Because right now, this channel is still pretty new in terms of uh, what it's doing here. So it might, be, it might be that YouTube doesn't know me yet. But pretty soon, they'll know me. Because uh, thanks to y'all, <laughs> they'll know me. So yeah, if you ever see uh, a red polygon here, that's a severe thunderstorm warning. If you see a, a, a sharp uh, pink polygon here like this one, but it's pink, then that will be a tornado warning. But we'll be talking about that, so don't worry about it. Oh, I'm from everywhere. I'm, I grew up in Southern California. I did my degree in North Carolina, and uh, I live in Minnesota now. <laughs> I've been all around the country. All around the country. What made me want to do my own thing? The potential. There is potential to grow. There's potential to make the this team uh, even better in providing as much information as possible. Central Wisconsin get severe weather Friday. I think it's limited just to the south of you. I think it's going to be probably in the Illinois, Iowa area at best, uh, to the furthest north extent. So Wisconsin probably removed from the severe weather, but that is subject to change, okay? We're still pretty far out. We're still pretty far out from Friday. Yep, we're watching quite a few storms here. This is uh, South Central Alabama at the moment. Uh, this blob of storms right here that kind of goes like this on the left side of your stream, that's going to go for quite some time to the east here. And right now, it's got a bunch of damaging winds with it and some small hails probably in there somewhere. Um, but the tornado threat is a little bit reduced with it. I would not be surprised if we got some quick spin-ups along the line here. Um, this is a this is a powerful enough system here that we could get some gust nados, which are just little spin-ups along the, the gust front, literally the air that's pushing out in front of the thunderstorm. So uh, those are gust nados. Those might be possible here. Otherwise, um, yeah, this, this this literally this line of storms right here is just going to keep going east and a little bit to the south and maybe even a little bit to the north for hours. <laughs> so Columbus, uh, Columbus, Georgia here, Phoenix City, Alabama, uh, Montgomery, Alabama, all in the path of this thing over the next while here. And eventually it'll make it into Georgia, into central Georgia. So possibly even Macon and Warner Robin down the line could be in the path of one part of this uh, strong line of storms here. It's kind of just congealed together, which is good because of that reduces our tornado threat. Davenport Friday, yep, the 31st is when you're looking at that. Florida will be fine today, yep. Take a look at this for your risks for the rest of today. You can see them here on Radar Omega if I go right here. 
So Florida, except for this, this northern extent of the panhandle here, for the most part, you are removed from severe weather. If you're outside the dark green here, which is our marginal one out of five risk, then you, you're good to go. You're good to go all the way down there into the peninsula. A gust NATO is not the same thing as a microburst, no. A microburst is when a thunderstorm is sort of dying out, and then everything in it suddenly just falls out of the storm because it's not sustained anymore. That is a microburst. It's everything falls out of it at once. That's a lot of stuff. It's got to go out and bam, hit the ground. Yeah, this is a mesoscale convective system or an MCS. So if you see MCS in chat, it's because we've got a band of storms here, essentially, that's grouped together. When that happens, we call that an MCS. Um, it's got some other qualifications, but this definitely qualifies. <laughs> Let's take a look at South Carolina again here. This storm approaching uh, the Columbia, South Carolina area. This is a good storm to look at. I can tell you guys a little bit about the radar tech here. So if you look right in there, you can see this notch in where the rain is. Let me get a good color for this. I think pink will work. So you can see the notch right in there. So this is this is a bunch of clear air right in here. This is It's not raining right here. That same notch on velocity is right here. So where this, where you might think there's, oh, there's a bit of rotation here, there probably is some rotation, but this is not producing a tornado at the moment. So this is one of those uh, funky radar scans that might get you, might get you if you haven't looked at the radar a bunch. Make sure you switch to HD on the video player if I'm blurry. Just tap on the video or click on it, and then the cog on the bottom right. Uh, once you click on that, you can change the quality settings. And that's how you make it not blurry. This is GR2, but we've also got uh, Radar Omega here, so I'm looking at both of them. Nope, I don't typically focus on southeastern states. I typically focus on where the weather is active. How do you see hail? This right here in this storm in South Carolina... Uh, that's approaching I-20 here, southwest of Columbia. These pinks right here, draw that in a better color. These pinks right here are probably some good hail. Either some really, really heavy rain and small hail or some pretty decent hail here. So we're really looking at, uh, you know, where we get into those more intense colors from green to yellow, orange, red, bam, into the pinks. That's when we see the hail. <clears throat> Absolutely. I hope y'all are able to watch in HD. Uh, yeah, YouTube doesn't recognize me yet, but once we have more of y'all always watching this, um, you know, I'm always going to stream with Ryan from here on if, it, if it's a, a warranted risk like today's was. We had a pretty high-end risk, but thankfully it hasn't done so much yet. Um, uh, maybe YouTube will recognize eventually that I'm worth <laughs> the high definition. <laughs> Do you think we could look at the storm in 3D? Uh, we'll save that fancy stuff for Ryan, okay? We'll save that fancy stuff there. <clears throat> yep, I'm I'm talking about Georgia all the time tonight, guys. Uh, hopefully you're able to hear it. This is still going to be a pretty dangerous storm. I think it's going to pass pretty close to Gaston, uh, Swansea, and Woodford, South Carolina here to the south of Columbia. It is a nice looking supercell, but at the moment it is not doing anything uh, tornadic. We've just got some wind and hail associated with this guy right here uh, going to the east towards Highway 321 and eventually Interstate 26 also. All right, let's look back at uh, Georgia here to the to the north and east of Atlanta. We're still watching the storm. Surprise! It's surprised me. It's probably surprised all of us that it's still severe as it passes through Lawrenceville up towards Sugar Hill. Oh, man, it's I, I can't believe it's still severe. This this I wish I could show you this whole loop. Maybe I can do that, but it's going to be kind of difficult. Uh, but this cell up here, this thing that's going over Lawrenceville and Swan. Uh, Suwanee. It, it, this cell has existed for um, over three hours. And actually, the funny part of it is it was a, a left split of a supercell. It was a left split of a supercell all the way down here near um, like uh, Auburn and uh, Tuskegee in Alabama. It uh, split off the supercell. One part of it went to the east and the other part went to the north. And it's still up here. For three hours, this thing has moved to the north and east. 
absolutely incredible. And it's and it just brought some golf ball size hail to Atlanta an hour ago, and now it's all the way up here going along Interstate um, 985 here or 85. Yeah, both of those interstates actually where they merge together there. Absolutely incredible cell going up to the... I mean, it, it might make it all the way up to the Blue Ridge. <laughs> That's impressive. That is impressive. So yeah, Central Georgia, your severe risk today is going to be in a few hours for most of us uh, from west to east. It's really this band of storms back here. You can see these red boxes in our severe thunderstorm warnings. These are going to move all the way to the east. Follow that blue arrow on the stream there. All the way to the east there uh, over the next few hours. And it's just going to still be strong. It's going to be some small hail. It's going to be some gusty winds and really heavy rain. But that line of storms is going to persist for hours into central Georgia. Tuskegee or Tuskegee? Tuskegee. Tuskegee. Thank you. I almost had it right. I almost had it right. <laughs> oh, the soft G, guys. It gets you. It gets you at times. Thank you. Yet the pronunciation a new police have uh, moved over here now. Issued. Hey, look at that. We were just talking about that storm, actually. We were just talking about that. So now you can see that hook echo we were talking about. Now it's produced a tornado warning. A new tornado warning has been issued. There's it again in case you didn't hear it the first time. We've got a tornado warning in South Carolina for this storm right here, uh, Aiken or Aiken County, uh, and also uh, Lexington County. New tornado warning for South Carolina. Again, this cell, I've been talking about it for a little bit now. It's going to pass to the south of Columbia. So here's Columbia up here in the blue circle. The cell is, uh, you can follow the pink polygon here. This is our tornado warning. It's going to go this direction towards Gaston and Swansea. So we've got some rotation there. And we've got a tornado warning. All right, so we'll be following this cell pretty closely, but of course we got to take a look at everywhere else um, from time to time. I can thank you. I or A. <laughs> you guys have got to be better at this. Aiken. Got it. You guys have got, you've got to learn how to spell out pronunciations to the best of your ability. <clears throat> so yeah, these cells here will pose a severe threat, and then eventually we'll see that uh, line of storms back in Alabama make it all the way over here to the Atlantic coast, uh, more than likely, for hours and hours into the morning here. Anderson, South Carolina, I would not really go to sleep here. You're going to be on the northern side of the severe weather, so it should be removed. Should be mostly removed from you, so you might hear a warning come through, you might hear a powerful storm come through, but... Uh, hopefully the majority of the severe threat is uh, confined to your south here. So we're really looking at this corridor right here uh, for the remainder of the night here in blue. These storms are going to track through this area and also possibly come down through uh, to the coast. So um, that one bears watching. Columbia and Charleston both in that slight risk through the morning hours. <clears throat> At the moment, I don't see anything that would indicate that a tornado is on the ground with this thing, but this has the potential to produce a tornado here in Aiken and, uh, and uh, Lexington counties in South Carolina. And specifically, that is going to track to the south of the Columbia metro. So we're watching this. Hopefully it does not produce anything, but the moment it does, I will show you the radar products that confirm that, okay? So we'll, we'll be watching it just like I would be watching it so that I could tell Ryan about it. <clears throat> very cool. Very cool. All right. So we'll be watching that storm. Uh, each new radar scan comes in at every two or so minutes. So once we get some new data, then we have a little bit of time to talk about it, and then we can look around at other places, and then we'll come right back to the tornado warning. Okay, so that's how it's going to go. And um, we got the severe thunderstorm warning still continuing uh, to the north and east up I-85 I uh, and I-985 as well. That will eventually make it up here somewhere into... Uh, 
the western corner of South Carolina. But yeah, really, our, our focus is going to be here in Alabama. This is central Alabama, south central. Montgomery is next up. Otagaville and Montgomery are next up for these strong winds uh, to impact this area, impact the city here. This line of storms is going to travel to the east, and you're going to get severe thunderstorm warnings pretty soon in Montgomery County. <laughs> So it, it's going to get pretty gusty here, but I again, I, I'm not seeing too much in the way of imminent uh, tornadic activity. Perhaps we have just a little bit of rotation to watch here near Whitehall and Autogaville in, uh, in Alabama. So um, again, anywhere along this line of storms has the potential to do a little bit of a, a spin-up tornado, but we've really got this uh, convective system here that's uh, pretty set in its path to do wind damage. Wind damage is what we're focusing on here. And again, this uh, line of storms right here, you can see the red polygons. It is going to move like this through the entire uh, rest of the night. So this is going to take hours to go this direction, and it will more than likely track through all of those areas along the blue arrow. Chris is frozen. I think I just saw... Oh, maybe not. It's very possible that Chris might have ended his stream. That could happen, but uh, I'll make sure to try to refresh it. At least we've got Brad Arnold going down there. If Chris doesn't come back, though, I got, uh, I've got i got some, uh, hopefully some train cameras to put there for y'all to look at. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, I hope, I hope it lightens up too, but again, you're probably going to go through a strong storm here, and you know, it's, it's going to sound like heck out there for a little bit, but... Um, it, the, you know, the, the hope is that it's not too bad out there. So this storm is moving. Let me try to give you some times here to the best of my ability. Um, this storm is actually moving east at 55 miles an hour. So this one right here, you can see this is just being pushed forward. We have a bit of a bow shape here. The front of the storm is bowing out. So most of the most intense winds that this, uh, storm has to offer will get into the Montgomery area, uh, in the, uh, leading edge of the storm here where it's bowing out. We talk about the bow echo often. In fact, uh, you know, this rotation's a little bit more significant up here. So I'm I'm keeping an eye on this near Otagaville. Uh, I would not be surprised if there were a tornado warning issued for these areas of rotation up here. This uh, line of storms is strong. It's uh, being pushed quite dynamically, uh, you know, forward here. So that is to say the winds are strong in pushing it forward. And it's creating its own, uh, it's it's creating its own feedback mechanism, which literally just means, oh hey, it just rained over here. Now it's cold. Now the winds are pushing it forward faster because it's cold there, and it's going to keep doing that and pushing itself further out until it expends itself. So maybe it'll run out of steam. Maybe maybe it'll run out of steam eventually. But um, for now, we've got to watch the uh, parts of it that could be most severe. Thank you for the $50, Gene. Appreciate it. Thanks for the support. Let's go back and take a look at our tornado worn storm here uh, in South Carolina. And yeah, we really don't see much of much of anything that's super uh, pertinent here in terms of uh, tornado genesis. We see a cell that uh, has a tornado warning, so hopefully everyone over here uh, is taking shelter and uh, advanced. Y'all watch out for Gaston and Swansea. The storm has a history of uh, having a tornado warning attached to it, so it is significant. Uh, but I don't see I don't see anything imminent going on over here. This is just a big beefy supercell. Yeah, Greenville, South Carolina, will probably get some good rains um, if uh, some of these uh, severe storms over here that are moving towards northeastern Georgia make it into western and northwestern south carolina here then we could see some severe weather over there but hopefully it's minimized for y'all there hopefully it's minimized this uh tornado warning is well north and east of aiken in south carolina aiken you're down here this storm's up here and is moving this direction towards pelion and gaston and swansea so aiken in south carolina augusta you, sh you guys should be fine right now you guys should be fine. Thank you all for the support. <laughs> Do I have to learn how to say all na city names in meteorology and, and uh, you know, in our schooling? No. No, we were not prepared for that. We were not prepared for this at all. 
this uh so, this social side of meteorology where we have to pronounce everything was not is it was not in the curriculum it was not in the curriculum you're in Wagner, South Carolina. I hope you can take some shelter right now as the storm passes. Hopefully it doesn't do anything bad, but the moment it does, um, I'll attempt to tell you here. We've definitely got a rotating storm, um, but the rotation isn't super strong here. This is uh, this is definitely just a storm too, you know. Don't be scared. Be prepared for. Yeah, good luck with all those town names. Lots of South Carolinians happy to help you. I'm going to pay attention to this storm more than I am uh, for any individual town name, so I'm I'm sorry. I can do my best, but there's a lot of people. You know, if you're in Pelion, you should definitely take shelter right now. This tornado warning ex extends just to the west of the town, so uh, I would be taking shelter right now. Interior most room of your house, or a basement if you got it over here. And, uh, of course, just make sure you have your shoes and something to cover your head with. You could take us. You could take me with you too. That way, you've got stuff to listen to. Some lightning in that feed. Yeah, probably. I think Chris might be done. So let's make sure we turn on. Perhaps we've got a camera. There we go. Uh, let's see. This camera is in. Um, this camera is in. Not that one, but that one. Cordell, Georgia, is where we've got a train camera here. So I'm not sure if Chris is still going. I haven't gotten anything from his feed lately. Uh, so we've got now a train camera to look at. Thanks for looking out for that, guys. Enjoy the trains if they pass through. <clears throat> what got me into meteorology? I watched the Weather Channel when I was four. Then I never stopped watching it. Never wavered from it. So uh, don't take my story as like the picturesque, perfect, you know... I it, it, I just knew what I wanted to do from the start. It's okay to be uncertain. It's okay to hone in on your interests. <clears throat> Estimated time for the squall line to hit Montgomery. Yeah, sure, since that's pertinent, we're talking about it pretty soon here. Um, I'd say, you know, based on these radar scans, we play it back. This is quite a while ago, but here's that squall line coming in. This is probably going to be for Montgomery in the next 20 minutes. So you get to watch it in. It'll take, you know, a good 15, 20 minutes to pass through here. Um, and you'll get some pretty, pretty, pretty gusty winds, I think. Um, and also very heavy rain. So maybe another 20 minutes. Uh, 15 for the west part of the city and 20 to 25 for the east uh, uh, part of Montgomery. I have not worked for a news station. Nope. In fact, my first job, you know, that I got hired for was Ryan, actually. <laughs> no, I was not birthed from the wedge tornado. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for the support, guys. I appreciate it. <clears throat> the only bit of North Carolina today that's really going to see severe weather, I'll show you here, is uh, about 5, 6, 7 a.m. this morning down here in Fayetteville and Wilmington. Uh, in North Carolina. So Jacksonville, Fayetteville, Wilmington, maybe a little bit will clip Charlotte. You might get some heavy rain there, but this is into the early morning hours, so we got uh, a little bit of time to get there. However, this cell over here in Columbia, if it persists, it could head through some of these uh, these uh, slight risk areas from the Storm Prediction Center uh, for a little while here. So we'll, pay, we'll be paying attention to that, but yeah, we, you've got the chance also for just uh, several storms to just move through for you know, quite a few hours here. This one back here in Alabama could reach Myrtle Beach and Wilmington uh, into the morning hours, so it's going to take some time. If you're in northwest Georgia, you're fine. You're fine now. You're good. You're in Chattanooga, you're good. I don't have Brett's feed, unfortunately, no. I don't think I do, at least. I could see if uh, it's uh, linked anywhere, but I don't think I do. I think everybody in the Ryan team there over at uh, the Weather House is going to Go to sleep right now to make sure that they're ready for recovery efforts. <clears throat> so thank you all for being here into the night. Again, I'll be on here for quite a few hours. Um, until things really until things really ramp down here, I'll be out here. Well, I'll be in here. I'm in Minneapolis uh, covering the weather for you. 
Atlanta, you guys should be fine for the night. You're just in that considerable flash flood warning up here, so... Yeah, definitely some flash flooding occurring up in Atlanta. It's going to be raining for quite some time. So um, definitely had some really heavy rain. You also had some hail. That hail is going to melt when it falls to the surface. Um, so definitely a flooding risk up there, especially because you can see all this rain up here uh, around uh, this area is just going to stream into Atlanta. So plenty of rain going through. So just don't drive out there if you can help it. Okay, we've got some rotation here. Again, we've been talking about this line of storms for a while. Wouldn't be surprised if, you know, these uh, areas of rotation... Oh, definitely, right here near Gordonville. This is this is probably going to warrant a tornado warning at the moment. Uh, if I had to guess, it does look legitimate. So right here near Gordonville, uh, Hainville, Lidohatchee, Lidohatchee, and Snowdown, down to the south of Montgomery. I would bet you guys... Uh, sh we're probably going to be placing a tornado warning pretty soon here. Um, so there you go. We're keeping an eye out for the tornadoes here. This is definitely some worrisome rotation here on the southern part of the line. Would not be surprised. So y'all watch out in these areas in uh, 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 parts of uh, southern Lowndes County and into southern Montgomery County in Alabama. All right. Before that happens, let's go back and look at South Carolina real quick. Our tornado worn storm getting pretty close to Wagner. Uh, it looks real funky right now. It's got an arm sticking out. <laughs> oh, it's got that arm sticking out. So, hmm. what I can tell about this is it, it's probably pretty impressive here. You can see the winds here, maybe a bit of convergence, but I think this uh, radar scan is not telling us the truth here for now. This is still going to be a powerful powerful storm here, though. We could see hail up here and also down here in uh, the supposed hook of these uh, of this supercell here. So Woodford, Swansea, and Gaston. You'll watch out for a strong storm coming through here to the south of Columbia. Looks like it'll probably stay south of Columbia. So down here is uh, in the primary path for uh, this uh, supercell here. But you're probably going to see some lightning up here in Columbia, so get ready for that. I'm 25, in case you guys are wondering. Oh, it's, it's, every, it's every stream. It's every stream. <clears throat> I don't know where... The, the, the Nader Kitty is asleep right now, but I, I could show him off in a little bit. Right now we've got important coverage to uh, go over here, so pay attention to the weather first, and then if it gets to... Uh, if it gets to a certain point, um, I'll be sure to uh, show you guys the cat, because he is asleep right now. Alright, this uh, area of rotation down here near Gordonville, I wouldn't be surprised if it did uh, manage to produce a brief tornado. But we are not seeing it on the correlation coefficient, which tells us if there's going to be debris in the air. It has uh, gone down a little bit, so that's the hope that this uh, area of rotation down here near Gordon Gordonville and Hainville... Uh, south and west of Montgomery will, uh, you know, disappear. That'd be great. <laughs> yes, don't wake a sleeping kitty. Exactly. You guys are important. Do I shave? Yes. Of course. You guys are so silly. Cat asleep? I know, right? Driving towards Asheville from which direction? If you're driving towards Asheville, you're probably fine. It might get a little rainy, but if you're coming from the east or west, you're fine. I mean, it, it looks pretty clear up there in western North Carolina for a while now. You should be good. You should be fine up here. Some rain will definitely move in, but... I think it's definitely pretty removed from y'all up there in Asheville. Alright, let me draw for y'all. Let me draw for y'all. You see this right here? I'm going to draw in black. This line right here, this line right here, is looking pretty okay for the night, okay? The strongest storms are moving through right here. We've got a little bit of a remnant storms back in here that could produce some severe weather, but if you're north and west of this, right about here, pretty much including Atlanta as well, unless you've got to go drive outside, you're fine. You're fine if you're anywhere, uh, you know, we got this severe thunderstorm right in here, right in here, and that's going to go to the north and east, so as long as you're outside here, 
Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, you're fine. Anywhere up this direction is good to go. Okay. Good to go for the night. Go to sleep. Chances of you getting anything up there in that stable, rain-cooled air is... It's low. So, I'm going to be focusing on the rest of the folk who are in the path of the remaining severe threat today. Golf ball size hail in Atlanta. I hope that it didn't do much damage. So, if you're, you're in the Atlanta area, I hope that uh, you weren't able... To, you didn't sustain very much uh, hail damage because it definitely had some, some pretty sizable hail there. Is Milledgeville, Georgia okay? Yeah, y'all are not really that okay up here. Uh, I forget which side of it is, uh, but it is near LaGrange. We There was a, definitely a significant tornado that went through there uh, this morning, so it goes to speak about how the power of the storm and uh, how it could be, uh, you know, we saw a little bit of a, a heads up there a significant tornado going through western georgia in the morning hours like 5 a.m anything can happen y'all which is why being weather aware is uh pretty important here yeah i'm looking at this area right here you can see near prattville in uh alabama here to the north and west of montgomery uh pretty concerning rotation signature but i'm not sure if this is, i'm not sure if this is uh contaminated or not Unfortunately, we don't have the Montgomery radar for tonight, so I can't, uh, I can't exactly, can't exactly tell you, you know, confirm if this is uh, imminent rotation going through this area. So really hope that everyone here, you know, you should be taking a little bit of shelter in this severe thunderstorm warning. Some pretty powerful stuff is coming through, and that should be good enough to, you know, save you from the worst of the impacts from anything like this. So. If there is a if there is a warning for this, or it does put something down here as it approaches Prattville, I hope you guys are uh, taking shelter. So y'all watch out here, just in case this uh, radar product here is not an artifact. Trying to figure out if, if it is or not, it's tough to tell. Tough to tell. So best of luck to y'all in Prattville. Cross my fingers for you, just in case. It does look like it's falling apart here, so... If anything did produce there, it was nothing short of a bird fart, as we call it in the meteorology community. So hopefully Prattville is fine now. That is the hope. Uh, but y'all, you're in that really intense rain, so it's still going to be a heck of a storm, you know, regardless of if that did something or not. So uh, bunker down here, or hunker down here for a little bit. Thank you for the support, y'all. Appreciate it. Thank you for the donations. Am I wearing pants? Yeah, I got some nice sweatpants on. <laughs> Y'all are funny. What? What are you talking about? A bird toot. Exactly. Make an update. You got hours to go, my friends, there. This uh, line of storms here is going to go to the east through central Georgia. Going to take a little bit to get to y'all. You might see some heavy rain beforehand of this mess this mess up here moves into central Georgia. You might see it there in Macon. Hours to go. All right, here we go. Let's go back to uh, our Columbia storm in South Carolina, just in case. We do have this part of the storm wrapping up. You can see here near Wagoner. We've been talking about it a little bit now. But we have no real rotation over here in the storm. This is the same part of the storm right here where the hook is. Uh, we don't really see really strong pinks next to greens and blues here. We should be fine here. I don't see an immediate tornadic threat, but this signature definitely looks pretty uh, daunting. So paying close attention to it. Paying close attention here. <clears throat> Much appreciated, y'all. <clears throat> LaGrange, Georgia was mostly fine. It was Milledgeville that uh, did uh, sustain a hit from a significant tornado. I just can't remember uh, which direction Milledgeville is from LaGrange, but I know it's somewhere over here in uh, western Georgia. So it, it goes to show you all, even if it, you got a marginal or a slight risk, if the right perfect storm comes together, you know, any, anything can happen. So unfortunately, none of us were awake at, you know, 5 a.m. to cover something like that because we, we had no idea. We had no idea. But right now, um, that area is just getting ready to go through some heavy rain. 
Um, hopefully that everyone that was displaced from that tornado earlier today in the morning hours uh, is a was able to find shelter because this is going to be a pretty nice bout of rain moving through the area. A new tornado warning has been issued. Milledgeville. I thought it was over here near LaGrange. Is it northeast of Maconville? Or Maconville? No, I'm, now I'm just making places up. Okay, okay. Thank a you, guys. New tornado warning. I, I, somebody showed me a screenshot of, uh, of uh, LaGrange, so I don't know why I thought it was over there. But needless to say, they took a hit from a tornado, so don't worry about that. Um, well, you should worry about that. We want recovery efforts there, too. But, like, right now they're fine. Right now they're fine. West Point. Thank you. It's West Point. Oh, my gosh. Somebody's speaking words into my ear. It's West Point that got hit near LaGrange. There we go. No wonder I couldn't find it, man. Do you know how hard it is to stay on top of hundreds of cities and towns' names that you look at over a couple of days? I'm doing my absolute best over here. My goodness, man. My goodness. Now I'm on top of it. All right, let's take a look at our new tornado warning. Like I've been telling you guys, Gaston, Swansea, and Woodford now included in, in this tornado warning in the southern part of Lexington County. Uh, and we've also got Orangeburg County in there a little bit here. So the northwest part of Orangeburg County here. Uh, that, uh, so that tornado warning is extended for this storm. Um, it's still going to track to the south of Columbia. It does look like it's mostly traveling due east here. So Woodford and Swansea is uh, my area of concern. But everyone in the polygon should be taking shelter. Should be taking shelter. <clears throat> you're in the west point region i hope you're doing fine friend being in a local spot to a significant tornado like that is nothing to nothing to nothing to scoff at it, it can do it can change you so hopefully you're t you're looking out for yourself taking care of yourself All right, here. So that, that's the update on our tornado worn storm. Again, going to move east through uh, the Woodford and north to Swansea area here along Highway 321. Uh, first and foremost. And then uh, also down here as we get back to Montgomery. Uh, Montgomery is starting to see that uh, strong winds coming together and also probably some pretty tight rotation. Whenever you see Brett Adair moving through, you probably know he's tracking something here. So there's Brett Adair's little tracker in the, the blue circle. Here's our rotation to the north of Prattville. So that little blip we saw earlier may not have been a, uh, a false alarm here because this uh, part of the storm is rotating at the moment. And uh, this, is, this is pattern recognition, y'all. Let's take a look at this. I'll give you the best analogy I can. We've got this storm bowing out just like this. Let me switch scenes here. The storm's bowing out just like this. Winds are pushing it. Imagine you're in a bathtub. You're taking a babble, babble bath, bubble bath. Blah. <laughs> you're taking a bubble bath. How about that? And you you push your hand along the water surface, which is going to make my webcam start tracking me. So start tra stop tracking me. Good to go. There we go. I don't want to start moving around here. You push your hand forward in that bubble bath on the... Either side of where you push that forward, you're going to see that wave going, but on either side, it's going to start spinning. On the north side, the left side here, it's going to start spinning counterclockwise, which uh, up here in the northern hemisphere is where most, the direction most of our tornadoes spin. So um, imagine this is, your, this is your bubble bath right here. There you go. You're pushing that forward. There's your left-hand side. It's spinning. And bang, there's your rotation that Brett Adair is headed right toward. How about that? Hopefully that helps you understand. It's The atmosphere is a fluid. It's a fluid. It's just like water. You push it forward. Those winds push it forward. It's going to spin. It's going to spin on the side. Just think about that. Next time you take a bubble bath, try, try pushing it forward and watch the water spin. <laughs> I'm confused but want a bubble bath. Hey, bubble baths are nice and healthy, aren't they? <laughs> so yeah hopefully uh you know when we hopefully that is uh, about the extent of any possible tornadic circulations we get over here in southeastern alabama 
Um, right now, Montgomery is starting to see that heavy rain and strong winds passing through. I think the city proper is mostly removed from any tornadic threat here. It really looks like it's starting to concentrate up north here. So Wetumpka, Wallsboro, Eclectic in uh, Elmore County here. I would uh, give you a y'all watch out up here, but I, it does look like this. It was a short-lived circulation. If there is a warning that comes through, though, uh, don't be surprised here in Elmore County. Uh, you are in a severe thunderstorm warning already, so uh, make sure you are, you know, inside. Be indoors. Which way does the squeaky duck go in the bubble bath? Yeah, there you go. Now you're thinking of it right. <clears throat> what radar type can you see debris signature on? The correlation coefficient. This mess right here on the right side. I'll switch to that whenever we have uh, an active tornado ongoing to look at. And that will tell us where the tornado is located because we can see debris showing up on the radar. Uh, but at the moment, we don't have a single storm that's done that today that we could see on radar. Uh, we may have had a brief tornado uh, confirmed earlier by some storm chasers, Reed Timmer, for example. So um, uh, at the moment, hopefully we don't have to worry about that but um, because we don't have a storm that's doing a, that at the moment. But we do have tornado warnings. Tornado warnings are active here, so uh, please be sure you're taking shelter here in uh, northwestern Orangeburg County and southern Lexington County. I can barely see these counties here. There we go. So Swansea, Woodford, heads up there. And then eventually, uh, Oak Grove and St. Matthews here in South Carolina. You're going to run into a storm that has a history of tornado warnings. So hopefully you all know about that well ahead of time. Uh, Fort Mott or Fort Mate. I'm going to assume it's Mott. Uh, out here into uh, central South Carolina. I think this storm should pass to the north of Orangeburg down here in South Carolina, so hopefully y'all will be okay, but uh, please keep an eye out since uh, your county is now in that tornado warning. So you probably received that alert on your phones, but the storm's pretty far away from you. This is our only active tornado warning at the moment. It is in South Carolina. However, we're also watching closely southeastern Alabama here. There we go. There's that zoomed out near the Montgomery area. Montgomery's getting in on some heavy rains and uh, winds right now. I'm seeing a lot of people who are, you know, 10 minutes delayed or so. Make sure you guys are paying attention to the time in the bottom right corner of the stream. Uh, and so you can check the time on your phone. If it isn't close together, then uh, all you have to do is uh, click uh, or just basically refresh the, refresh the page. And that'll help. So if that time is uh, if that time is displaced, it's not the same time on your phone. Whenever you hear me saying this, make sure you refresh the page so that you're getting the most up to date weather. Your phone never went off. Well, I don't know where you're at. You got to give me a location with that. But if you did, if you did see yourself in a tornado warning or near one that I was just showing, yep, I would recommend taking shelter, even if it's not too close to you. Even if it's not too close to you. Drink? Yeah, I, I do need a glass of water soon. I don't have anything to switch to to go and get that, but it should only take me 30 seconds. But I don't want to leave you all with 30 seconds of silence, so. Yeah, that's the theme tonight. The theme tonight is there's going to be so much lightning with these cells, so eventually, you know, all the people asking about Central Georgia, Macon, Warner Robins, and so forth. Sorry about mixing up those town names and doing my best here. I can't believe that. <laughs> <clears throat> but you're going to see a lot of lightning tonight. It's going to it's probably going to be pretty loud too, so um if you're going to go to sleep now, um the hope is that storms wake you up, but definitely have another way to receive warnings. Okay. Take 30 seconds. I'm fine, guys. As I streamed for 9 hours on Friday when we had to give out so much more information for uh, all of those ongoing intense tornadoes on Friday and uh my voice I didn't lose my voice at all. I was totally good to go. So I don't know I don't know why I was blessed with such vocal stamina, but if it helps me do this, then so be it. So be it. So we had a 56 mile an hour wind gust reported uh uh 
right here near uh, Prattville. So, yeah, if you guys heard that storm in Prattville, Alabama, uh, no doubt about it. That's the reason why. So Montgomery, Pike Road, all of these areas around the metro uh, down here in southeast Alabama, getting in on some weather. So much lightning. So much lightning. Yeah, absolutely, I'm going to acknowledge that. <laughs> uh, you guys are funny. I appreciate the suggestions. Hey, it's nice to know that chat looks out for you, right? Isn't that nice to know? There's so many nice people here who are, who are looking out for you. <clears throat> Auburn, Alabama, you guys are going to get in on this storm going through Montgomery in uh, probably just about 25 minutes from now. So that's going to start being a thing for Auburn. And then about 40 minutes from now, Phoenix City and Columbus in Georgia, Phoenix City, Alabama, over there, Smith Station, everywhere over here uh, on the Alabama-Georgia border uh, in that area is going to get in on it. So this st line of storms, again, again, this line of storms is going to move due east through this area. So making Warner Robins three hours out, maybe two hours out for uh, this uh what we call a mesoscale convective system, which is just a big blob of storms that keeps itself going. Any rotation for this storm? Yeah, rotation's up here in the north part near Deetsville, maybe, but uh, it has since kind of petered out. We've just got a big uh, area of circulation kind of happening right here, but it's all weak and uh, not really organized, so and that's why we didn't see any of those tornado warnings coming through for uh, these areas up here. Perhaps the southern part of the storm could warrant some watching, though, so let's take a quick look at that from this radar site. Wait for that to load. What school did I go to? University of North Carolina at Asheville. Western North Carolina there. It's a beautiful, beautiful campus. I'm using Birmingham and also uh, Fort Rucker, those radar sites. A mesocyclone is not the same as a tornado. The mesocyclone is the rotating part of the storm well up in the storm. The tornado is the thing that extends to the surface to the cloud base there. From the surface to the clouds. A new tornado watch has been issued. All right, so that uh, that tornado watch is going to be out in front, I believe, of uh, most of the uh, line of storms that we're watching here. It's going to be on the lower end, so if you've got a tornado watch for your issue, or for your issue, for your area, rather, if you've got a tornado watch for your area, it's mostly going to be because of this line of storms right here. We may see some spin-up tornadoes with it. I'll be tracking that for a few hours, so stay with me here. And unless you absolutely need to go to bed, then make sure that you have a way to receive warnings. Mike, a Midland WR400 radio that you get you can get on shopryanhall.com. <laughs> but if you don't want to purchase it online, I'm sure you, all you have to do is look up your nearest Walmart or Target and see if it's in stock there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm hoping that the severe risk goes down to bash so that I don't have to be up all night, but... You know, as as long as we as long as we need to be up all night, then uh, we're fine here. Yeah, if if a tornado watch gets continued, if that's what you're listening to, sometimes that comes through. It's to trim the counties that are still in it. So hopefully, uh, this new tornado watch has been trimmed and is now just for uh, the counties in Alabama to the east of this line. <laughs> no, that that's hardly a shameless plug. I mean, it is, but like it's because weather radios are important. They're important. The only reason that I don't have one of my own is because I am always looking at the weather so I know when something's going to come through for me. I'll be the first to know. But if I'm asleep, then uh, perhaps I need one. So maybe, it, maybe it's my own fault. You guys could be doing better than I am right now. We got a train coming through. They're in Cordial, uh, Georgia. That's where that camera is. Raleigh, you're fine. You'll be fine. You might get some uh, uh, unsettled weather into the early morning hours uh, coming up here. So uh, just pay attention to that if you need to uh, go out on your, on your morning commute. Otherwise, you'll be good. You'll be good. 
We'll get to verified soon, y'all. If y'all are liking the stream and subbing to the channel, I'm doing a, a lot of the same work that Ryan's doing here on YouTube. Uh, and as a result, pretty soon, the power of y'all will get there so that everybody can have good quality stream videos and so forth. <clears throat> About the South Carolina warning, I'm monitoring it constantly. Don't worry, guys. It takes a couple minutes for each radar scan to come through, so we're, we're still watching it here. It's pretty much a disorganized mess. That's what I'm seeing here. We got cell mergers happening here, feeding into the storm. We got this part of the storm that's kind of merging together here. Uh, so disorganization is present at the moment. Uh, but if we see these reds right here and these greens right here come together, then it will warrant immediate watching. But right now, just make sure you're in shelter into your most room of your house or basement if you've got it here in North Woodford and Swansea and Gaston, uh, South Carolina. I think that our main area of tornadic threat is probably going to be right in this corridor. Let me draw that over here. Right in this corridor here near Woodford and North. That's where we got some semblance of this part of the storm, you know, hooking down and giving us a classic look at uh, where a tornado could form. So uh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a gotcha here. So again, the reds and greens might be coming together here, but this right here, these potentially strong winds are kind of in an air, uh, an area of uh, no rain. So those could be um, radar artifacts, not legit. So uh, I have to be watching out for a lot of these things before I tell Ryan about anything. Otherwise, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna tell him something that doesn't exist. Is the radar is not perfect. Radar's not perfect. The chill Andy Hill? I'm not sure. We have to be careful in the connotations that we uh, we send out here. Because sometimes the weather isn't chill. <laughs> A lot of people probably like it, though. Thank you, Suze. <laughs> Appreciate it. I have no mods? No, I think Brandy's here. Brandy's here. We got a couple mods still into the nighttime hours. But if it, if it, if it gets bad, we'll be okay. Because uh, for the most part, we don't have we don't have eight tornado warnings going on. I can watch the chat. That's why I'm talking to y'all. I'm able to talk to y'all. Uh, Brad's down. Uh, let me show you all where Brad is. Brad Arnold is in Choctaw County. So he is all the way over here. All the way over here in southwest Alabama. Uh, over here, we've got, you know, sub-severe storms that are just... They've, they've got some winds with them. They've got some heavy rain with them. Perhaps they even got a little bit of hail with them. Uh, but these are not severe warned or over here. I think the severe threat is, you know, either steady state back here or decreasing with time. Really, it's focused over here in our band of storms uh, at the moment. So that just moved through Montgomery. Montgomery, you're coming out of the tail end of this, uh, this band of storms. Hopefully it wasn't too bad. Hopefully you kept power. Next up is uh, Tuskegee. Tuskegee. There we go. Yes. Get Tuskegee. Tuskegee. Oh, man, I forgot already. <laughs> I'm doing my best. So next in line is that, is that town, Auburn, Alabama, and then Phoenix City and Columbus, uh, Georgia, over here in, into the uh, Alabama-Georgia border. Gee. Tuskegee. G. Hard G. What's a soft G? What's a hard G? They didn't teach us this in meteorology. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes, I know about enabling captions. There is a reason why captions are not on. The reason why captions are not on right now on this channel is because we have low latency. Low latency means that you get this broadcast about five seconds after I say something. And uh, when I enable that, unfortunately, YouTube's like, nope, no captions. So, um... I have to uh, prioritize either getting that information out as soon as possible or, um, you know, waiting about 30 seconds and giving captions. But yes, captions are really good. Ryan uses captions on his stream when he remembers, okay? So it's a YouTube limitation. I'll do my best to help y'all out. Hopefully I can speak clearly enough. We don't got any music in the background. There's no mumbling here. <laughs> J noises, G, J. Okay, thank you. So it's G. Got it. 
Yeah, it's a hard key. It's a it's it's you know harder on the vocal cords. I got it. That's how I'll remember. What place file are these? This uh the circles are the um I think it's uh I think it's Colorado State. Uh, but this just tells me a bunch of information about the storm, like the the cape and so forth, and all the atmospheric conditions. So that's why there's some extra circles there. It's for info in case I need it. All right, so you guys see, let's use that analogy one more time here, and then I'll go back to South Carolina. So we've got this bow of storms here. It's being pushed forward by some winds like this in the blue. So this, uh, these winds are being pushed forward. On the northern side, we can get rotation right in here. This is where that rotation is going to be focused, right in there somewhere, uh, toward Eclectic and Red Hill, Alabama. And sure enough, if we come over here on the winds, the velocities in red and green here, you can see a bit of a streak of winds here, and um, we could get some rotation uh, sneaking in. So northern edge of the storm, that's what we're looking for. The Terminator. <laughs> but then there goes the, the meteorologist Andy Hill. All right, all right. So we're watching this part up here. The northern part of this uh, line of storms could see some rotation. It might be enough to uh, warrant a tornado warning at some point up here. So that's going to pass off to Eclectic, Red Hill, and eventually Waverly. And this might be, you know, kind of close to Dadeville. I don't think it'll go... Uh, due east to Auburn and Opelika down there in uh, Alabama. So um, we're looking at Alabama right now. So I think it's going to go more to the north, but there's an advanced y'all watch out. This is a, you know, if you see radar returns like this, these pinks over here are 50 mile an hour winds uh, going one direction. And then we got winds kind of going the other direction nearby. That tells you that it's a pretty powerful storm. Pretty powerful storm. And yeah, I mean... Next scan, there you go. It's kind of ramping up right in here, uh, just to the north of Wetumpka and Wallsboro. So Elmore County would not be surprised if there is a tornado warning at some point because we've got some winds being concentrated in this area. So this is from Birmingham. So these winds uh, from the Birmingham radar, these winds are going this direction over here and this direction here. So if we sneak anything in here, don't be uh, alarmed at the a tornado warning here, so make sure y'all are preparing for that. Opelika, thank you. That one's a that one's a common one, I'm sure. Not gonna forget it. Opelika. <clears throat> I'm learning so much from you guys. Oh, is it Opelika or Opelika? O H for O <laughs> or A H. Ope. Oop and I oop. <laughs> <clears throat> so many towns to learn. I yeah, I would not be surprised at a, a tornado warning for these areas. So, um, definitely a rotating part of the storm up here on the northern part. So this is well to the north of Montgomery, uh, and will likely track over Eclectic, Red Hill, and Kent, and possibly down uh, the line toward Waverly. Oh, Opelika. Opelika. Got it. Thank you, guys. And I, oop. Oh, <laughs> uh, y'all are funny. Okay, let's go to South Carolina. Been talking about that enough. This one's ramping up. This one's ramping up. All right, guys, let's take a look. We've been waiting for this uh, radar data to come in. Look at Look how fast it happened. So this was the frame we were looking at. Now we've got this. So right now, here's on this left side, right here, we've got about 50 to 60 mile an hour winds going one direction, this direction, to the south. And then on the other hand, we've got uh, some wind streaming in. This is our inflow over here, and that's going about 40, 50 mile an hour winds. So right here in the middle, if they meet and start circling pretty heavily there, Woodford, South Carolina, you could be up for it. All right, so this is tracking this direction, mostly toward Woodford. Woodford, South Carolina, of uh, imminent concern with this storm. No tornado on the ground yet, to the best of my knowledge, but it is coming together here. It is coming together here, so we'll watch out for Woodford. Down the line, it's going to go towards uh, the Fort Ma St. Matthews area here in South Carolina. If we play that back a little bit, we can get a better idea. So yeah, it's probably going to track um, more to the east-northeast like this, so maybe Gadsden will be included. 
but anywhere from uh, Hopkins to St. Matthews in South Carolina uh, over here in this area, I would be uh, I would be watching this storm or telling people about uh, the storm that live in that area. Yeah, absolutely. I I know what the closed captions are for, guys. I know. <clears throat> so yeah, this is going to be going that direction. It does look more concerning than it did before. I imagine the tornado warning, a new one will be issued out in front here. Uh, it will cross over Interstate 26 here to the south of Columbia for a while. But everyone in Columbia should be okay. You might just get some showers here. Might just get some showers here. Okay, let's take a look at uh, our next radar scan when that comes in. But for a brief moment, I'm going to look at Augusta, Georgia, which is pretty difficult to look at. We don't have a radar site super close there. Uh, let me try this one. I think Augusta might be in for some severe weather or the surrounding areas pretty soon here. We've got this cell back here. It definitely looks like something, doesn't it? Dang. <laughs> Just now seeing this guy. I wish I could. Let's try to go back further here so I can learn about this. But yeah, Augusta, Georgia, seeing this. And if uh, this uh, South Carolina cell, you know, going towards Columbia, it's basically on the same line here. If you if you look at it, this is following basically the same path here. So uh, whatever this storm is capable of doing in South Carolina, uh, this one back here definitely could do. So let's take a look at its history. Ah, uh, yeah. So really, you can watch that happen. Just watch. Just watch this storm. This is uh, this is twenty minutes ago, and then over those twenty minutes, it really develops that hook out in front and starting to push up to into it like this. So we're starting to wrap up here. Uh, nothing indicative of uh, that on velocity over here, but uh, this storm could become a, a rotating uh, supercell pretty pretty soon here. So we're gonna keep an eye on this one. It's probably going to head uh, mostly in this direction, maybe including uh, much of Augusta. So um, I, I suppose since it's severe warned, uh, uh, y'all watch out ahead of this thing. Just in case we got a strong storm in, going in the direction. I give you a glass of water, right? Yeah, the captions probably going to ruin what I say, but it is helpful for people. So Indiana, you guys are fine. What, the risk up there for Illinois and Indiana... You guys are, uh, that, that risk is heavily diminished once you get to sundown, all right? So an hour after sundown, you're good to go. You're good to go. The severe weather should ramp down up, or uh, just calm down up there. Which the middle webcam, the other chaser, I don't have his feed, unfortunately. I don't have Brad Adair's feed, but I would if I did. Uh, so let me try to refresh Brad's. I think it froze here, and then we'll get that back up. But yeah, I don't I don't have Brett's feed right now. Otherwise, I would do that. This the closed captioning is not available on this stream. We're doing that. We can't have closed captioning and low latency. That's the reason why. So I have low latency on right now. YouTube is silly in that way. Yeah, I could definitely see this storm uh possibly becoming a problem in the future. So we're gonna pay close attention to this one here in East Georgia. Uh, headed toward the Augusta area, so make sure you're staying weather aware over here. I'll do my best to cover it. Back to South Carolina, looks like our area of uh, more immense concern here approaching Woodford has uh, pretty rapidly fallen apart here. So it doesn't look like it was able to establish much here, but this is still a dangerous storm. Uh, right about to hit uh, Woodward here along Highway 321, so Swansea, heavy rain. Gaston, heavy rain, and uh, Woodford possibly in the path here, so please be taking shelter over here. Thank you thank you for the help, Douglas. Appreciate the, the support here. <clears throat> Don't worry, guys. I'm feeling totally fine. Totally good here. All right, there's your update on South Carolina. Doesn't look doesn't look too concerning now. It looked concerning a couple minutes ago, uh, so definitely be uh, continuing to take shelter because these can evolve every couple minutes. 
Let's go back down to our friends near Birmingham, or not Birmingham, near uh, Montgomery. Uh, now, I mean, I, I'm still thinking that this right here, you can kind of see it. Just watch it wrap around, kind of like a shrimp. Kind of like a big old shrimp there. It's wrapping around like that, the shape in the orange and the red. So there's there's our this northern part of the cell here. And right in here, right in the head of the shrimp, is where that uh, rotation is trying to set up. You see these tans here? This area of tan is uh, nearly 70 mile an hour winds concentrated right here uh, above the surface. So if this does continue to rotate, I would not be surprised again at a tornado warning here. Um, but this is definitely a rotating part of the storm. Um, it should be in the resources in Ryan's Discord, Hayden. I'm pretty sure we've got plenty of stuff there, but um, I don't think it. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a super important uh, place file, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. But if you join Ryan's Discord, somebody there can help you find it for sure. <clears throat> How do I get the storm chaser names to show up over them? Uh, I actually don't know that. I, I only know how to see their icons, but if you click on them, you'll see everything about them. Oh, it, this is not Radar Omega, though. So if you're seeing the them show up here, this is a that's different. That's a little that's a little private application we have to show their locations. <laughs> but Radar Omega has some of the chasers too. All right, so we've had that uh, tornado warning in South Carolina be allowed to expire. Currently, we're without a tornado warning. Uh, I would not be surprised if that changed soon, though. We have a severe thunderstorm warning for this now. Probably a tornado possible with this, so I would still be... You know, it's late at night. I would just be taking shelter here. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Shrimp casting, yeah. So, yeah, pretty powerful part of the storm here. It is still broad rotation. We don't have super strong rotation right in here in the blue. Uh, but it is there, and if it does tighten up, um, well, we've been looking at it, so that's what I'm expecting there. Oh, man. All right, again, next up is uh, Auburn, Alabama here. And uh, Opelika. There we go. Opelika next up. And then eventually down the line, we're going to have Phoenix City, Alabama, and Columbus, Georgia in the path of this thing. But also we've got a, a bit of this uh, turning to the north. So if we watch this loop back just a little bit, let's go back here. This is about uh, 30 minutes ago when it was impacting Montgomery. You can see it's pretty, it's pretty tight together here. But as we go further into the future, it's spreading out. So we got this northern part of the line, and it's also extending all the way to the southwest here. It's going to continue spreading out like that and kind of lo lose a little bit of its oomph. So um, hopefully the severe threat goes down as it travels to the east with time uh, towards these areas. So that would be the best case here. That would be the best case. Half the people have told me Opelika, and half of them are like, no, it's Opelika. Why don't I just uh, mix the two together? How about that? We're also watching this uh, the cell over here again, over Warrenton, Georgia. It is approaching the Augusta, Georgia area eventually. It might go to the north of the city uh, as it moves off to the east. But this is current over here in East Georgia, north and west of Wrens, and headed towards Thompson in Georgia. So this is a pretty powerful cell. There's going to be a lot of lightning with this thing, I bet. And uh, at the moment, it doesn't look super good uh, tornadically. It's kind of got a little bit of a weird presentation here. Um, looks like a boot. This one's like a boot. Let me draw that boot there. <laughs> this is the boot storm. Opa. Opa. Oh, you guys, there's too many. I, what if I just looked it up on Google? You know I could do that, right? Let's see what this tells me. I'm going to go by whatever Google tells me. <laughs> Since there's so many different pronunciations in chat, and I thought I had it right, and everyone's like, yeah, you're right. And then, and then they're like, no, it's this. No, it's this. Opelika. I'm going with that. Opelika. Opelika. 
<laughs> yeah, all right, anyways. So this uh, this uh, boot storm we're watching here, got a little bit of a boot going on. And that is going to move towards uh, Grovetown, Appling, and all these areas in East Georgia along Interstate 20 towards Augusta, Georgia. Yes. <laughs> Everybody's so happy about it. I thought I said that 10 times now. I thought I said that 10 times. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, it's fine. I need to learn this. Guys, it's important. It's important. There's a reason why so many people care, because if you can speak fluidly about these locations and everybody knows what you're talking about, that is good weather information. Okay, so it is important to me. It's important. All right, so this uh, this storm is probably about 30 to 40 minutes removed from Augusta, Georgia, maybe a little bit longer than that. But it might go to the north, so uh, Edgefield, South Carolina, and places around there. Uh, and Thompson, Georgia, you know, that's probably the track this cell is going to take. And it might pose a wind and hail threat. So we'll, mo we'll monitor it for rotation, though. All right, let's go back to the South Carolina. We've got another attempt here at some tight rotation just to the north of Woodward, uh, Woodford, South Carolina, that is. So this cell has a history of having tornado warnings with it, but to the best of our knowledge, we have not uh, seen a tornado touch down. <clears throat> Nonetheless, we still got a little bit of that hook showing up right there. You can see it just in this little spot. So it's starting to come forward here, but on the next frame, bam, it's gone. It's not really, it's not really keeping itself together, but we're going to keep watching it no matter what. Brad said look west of Grove Hill. All right, let's find where Brad is. Thank you. I think that, I think this, uh, may, again, I, I still think that we may see a tornado warning here near Red Hill, uh, Alabama here. That's going to hopefully track to the north of Auburn and Opelika. <laughs> um, but it may, it may go pretty close to Dadeville. This right here, this right here, I could see, I could see the National Weather Service issuing a tornado warning for this. So, um, I will remain on alert here, and you, you guys will hear that come through the moment that it's issued. So uh, pay close attention up here, but y'all watch out in Dadeville, Waverly, Cusetta, and Lafayette, and Alabama down here. All right, y'all watch out down there. Now let's go see what Brad's on about here. Uh, do we have a radar? Do we have a radar? Okay, so Brad's looking at Coffeeville, I guess. Brad is looking at Coffeeville. We got his feed down there still in the south, uh, the southeast corner of my stream, the bottom right of my stream here. <laughs> oh man, I'm just talking in directions now. Um, so he, this is like, I mean, I suppose this could be some rotation. Uh, we're pretty far away from the radar again. We're about a mile up in the storm over here near Coffeeville, Alabama, in the southwestern part of the state here. Uh, Brad is over here. You can see his dot. He's moving up, um, driving up north of Grove Hill here. And this storm is going to go this direction, and he's going to intercept it here along Highway Highway 43. So we'll, we'll watch and see if he gets anything there. I'll, I'm able to pull his uh, feed up pretty uh, to the full screen here, so... If he gets something, we'll watch it, okay? We'll watch it. I know. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for the support, Tishy. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for donating. Much appreciated. Yeah, lots of lots of uh electrical activity is gonna be here. Even with the even with the uh you know, the weaker storms here, the ones that aren't producing uh, severe thunderstorm warnings, you're still gonna see a lot of thunder and lightning tonight. And it, even into the early morning hours, so as the storm goes more off to the east through South Carolina, North Carolina, there's going to be a lot of thunder and lightning, uh, I think, with any storms that pass through. Guys, I don't know if we're 30 seconds out from this uh, getting tornado warned or 10 seconds out, um, but it's going to be pretty close here in Tallapoosa County in Alabama and also Chambers County in Alabama. 
Uh, I think that I think we've got a good shot at a tornado warning here. So, again, I, I hope uh, everybody out in front of this thing along State Road um, 49 here, south of Dadeville, uh, is able to take shelter. This looks pretty concerning to me. This looks pretty concerning, this area of rotation right here in blue. I'm circling. That'll be important for our friends in Auburn and Opelika. <laughs> Got it there? I, I'm, I'm getting this down. I'm mastering it. So, Because uh, it's going to pass pretty close to these cities. So I want to pay close attention to this thing. want to pay close attention. Man. I think that I think that this is definitely going to get tornado warned, guys. This looks pretty concerning here. We got 87 mile an hour winds on one side of it and down to, you know, roughly about a 70 mile difference on the other side. So some pretty rapid rotation on going near Red Hill, Alabama. This is on that northern side. This is our shrimp storm right here. See the shrimp? It's curled up around like this. And on the northern side of the shrimp, we got that rotation right in there, right where the head is. This is our bookend vortex. That's what this is called. Okay. So if we're we're looking at a bookend vortex right now. So don't be surprised if a tornado warning comes through and there it is. A new tornado warning has been issued. All right. New tornado warning, that's going to include uh, the northeastern corner of Elmore County here and uh, much of Tallapoosa County, so Dadeville, Camp Hill, eventually Waverly here uh, in uh, Alabama. You guys are going to be in the path of this storm here. We'll see that uh, pink polygon come through shortly here. So please be taking shelter. Interior most room of your house, bring something for your to cover your head with and bring your shoes just in case just in case all right let's see if uh let's see if we've got anything yet here now we can check our correlation coefficient uh, of course so that's useless okay so let me let me teach you guys something right here while we're waiting for this uh, thing to show up hopefully everybody's taking shelter in and around dadeville here in Tallapoosa county um, right here in the storm on the left side of your screen, we have some hail. The radar beam's coming in this direction. So over here from the north and west, it's hitting this hail right here. You see that in the pink and dark red there? When it hits the hail, it gets scattered around. And then we see this show up, this, this line of uh, yellows and greens on the correlation coefficient. So this is our correlation coefficient. It's what we use to see if there's any debris in the air from the tornado, if it is on the ground, uh, if it is doing damage on the surface. Um, we'd see it pop up here. But all of these values right here, are these are not useful because this is just uh, a bunch of beam filling is what we call. So this is, this is beam filling, and it's non-uniform because it's hitting a bunch of little hailstones. So we can't tell if there's a tornado going on right here. So this, this data is not useful. We'll have to go off of the uh, velocity here and uh, let you know that, hey, this is still a pretty powerful um, pretty powerful rotation. Um, so you should take this seriously. Brad Arnold's pretty far away from this storm. We'll go check on uh, Brad Arnold's storm here in just a second. And I'm going to need another radar for this. Uh, we're going to cycle through the storms now. So Dadeville, Tallapoosa County, make sure you guys are taking shelter down there. Camp Hill, uh, and eventually this could track up to the north towards Lafayette and uh, Cusetta here in Chambers County. Let's go check on Brad Arnold real quick. Change radar sights here. See what he's looking at. We got some pretty big lightning on Brad Arnold's stream you can see down there. Uh, he is over here near Thomasville, Alabama in the southwest part of the state. Uh, these storms are not too powerful. But uh, some small cells here are uh, approaching his area, uh, and we'll see them pass through. So if he gets anything interesting looking, then we'll bring him up full screen, okay? Lafayette, Lafayette, thank you. 
All right, so we're keeping Brad in mind down there. All right, now let's go through our storms. So we got this active tornado warning southeast Alabama here, uh, coming up towards Camp Hill, Dadeville, and Waverly. And then uh, we're going to go back to uh, South Carolina here. This looks a mess. I have no idea what's going on here. We've got a little hail right there. we got a dangly bit down here. It looks a mess. Uh, but this, this storm has a history of tornado warnings. Right now, I don't see anything that's immediately concerning with it other than some hail uh, and some damaging winds. So Oak Grove, and then eventually Gadsden here, and Watery, and Fort Mott and St. Matthews here in South Carolina to the south and east of Columbia. You guys got a powerful storm going toward you. Lots of lightning with this one. And then we're also focusing on the Warrington, Georgia area, which is probably getting hit by some hail right now. Really powerful storm going through here. This one's not looking so tornadic. You can see the the, the hook is going the wrong direction here. So we, we see it go like this. Uh, this tells us that this storm is not really tornadic at the moment, but it will uh, track to the east uh, towards Augusta, Georgia for a while now. So we're thinking about Augusta. Uh, this strong storm is headed in your direction, Thompson, Georgia, Grovetown, Appling, and Martinez. Uh, all these areas in East Georgia are in the line of a supercell here. Thank you, Kyle, for the support. Appreciate it. Thank you, Douglas. Thank you, Ricky, as well. Those are all the storms uh, that we're watching right now. Our active tornado warning is here near Dadeville, Alabama. Hopefully this didn't produce anything. Again, we can't really tell from the uh, Birmingham radar, but um, unfortunately we don't have the Montgomery radar right now. So this this radar site right here in the middle of all this, this is not working right now. It's down for repairs, uh, upgrades to the uh, hardware there. And unfortunately, you know, there's only so much we can do. The, op the service teams have to be, you know, they have an appointment well in advance. Um, we can't do much to you know, get that radar back online. So, um, unfortunately, we have to work without it, but uh, we've got some, we have good enough uh, data here to make sure we can get tornado warnings out to citizens that need them. Pensacola, yeah, Pensacola is pretty fine. Pensacola is fine. Anywhere along the Gulf Coast properly, if you're on the, co the coast of the Gulf of Mexico, you should be fine. Storms are mostly going to stay to your north. There may be some unsettled weather, but you're fine. You don't have to spam it in chat. <laughs> There's our storm down there. It's it's falling apart a little bit here. You can see it's not really a connected structure through and through. Um, we've got just this strong part of the storm up here, and then down here is really where those damaging winds are starting to refocus. So uh, perhaps, like I said, it could uh, travel more to the south and east with time. Uh, but these strong storms are what's going to move into central Georgia with time into the night. Tuscaloosa, you guys are fine. you got a little bit of a severe threat remaining with some storms over here. Um, but none of these are severe warned. You might just have some downpours move through. Okay. If you're in Atlanta, you should be good. It's just going to be loud sometimes with some, you know, some thunder into the night. If there's any lightning activity occurring up here in Atlanta, it might keep you up from time to time. Uh, but most of Atlanta is fine. If you don't have to drive, there's just going to be some flash flooding. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully your house is not flood prone. Otherwise, uh, as long as you don't have a, you know, as long as some of the water's dried up or drained out by the morning commute, I don't think you've got much too much to worry about in the, in Atlanta. All right, still our only active tornado warning over here near Dadeville and Camp Hill. It does still look concerning. I mean, this this rotation is, uh, it's remain mostly constant here. It's pretty tight, though. I would not be surprised if this did produce a tornado. So I would not be surprised if this tornado warning is extended uh, to the east-northeast here. So Waverly, Camp Hill, you may be in a tornado warning shortly here. 
the cell is persisting for now. Uh, I don't know how long it's going to live here. It doesn't look like it's got too long a life here because it's in a bunch of uh, rain, rainy air here. So uh, maybe its threat will be reduced with time, but uh, for now it still looks uh, important to cover. East Texas beat Resonators late next week, possibly, Cody. We're going to be watching the... the um, you definitely need to be weather aware, is what I'll say, uh, Thursday into Friday next week. So pay attention. Coming up this week. I guess it's this week, because, you know, it's it's Sunday, and uh, that could be the start of the week for a lot of us. Vol? <laughs> yeah, true. Very true. The shrimp is not long for this world. Phoenix City, you guys are in the line for some damaging winds coming up here. It looks a mess. It looks a mess, but there are some strong cells embedded in this area that are now impacting uh, uh, the Auburn area and Opelika. And it's going to move to the east here towards Phoenix City and Columbus, Georgia. Uh, Tuske Tuskegee as well is in, the, um, in some of the areas of really heavy rains. And that's going to move off to Union Springs as well. So some of uh, southeast Alabama is starting to get in on it. Perhaps all the way down to Eufaula. <laughs> Krilled it? Oh my goodness, y'all, please. Yeah, we just got a bunch of strong storms embedded in here, so I, th I think most of y'all should be fine. Again, you, you might get woken up by some you know, some heavier rain here and uh, some of the lightning that's coming through. But, you know, all, all of these oranges and yellows in here, th there's just going to be quite a bit of lightning through the night, I think. You follow? Thank you. I heard that one before. I heard that one before. <laughs> How's, is it safe to go to bed for Macon County, Georgia? You're still in the severe risk tonight. So I'm going to show you. Uh, I'll show you that once again. Let's look at Radar Omega for anyone coming in through the nighttime hours. I'm going to be streaming for hopefully a couple more hours. Yeah, hopefully we got a couple more hours here. Uh, so let me show you Radar Omega here. The rest of tonight's risk here is basically in this eastern bit of the orange here and also into the yellow. So all of this area is the rest of tonight's risk into the early morning hours. We've got these storms right here. And also, you know, embedded in this area. These are going to move to the east through Macon, central Georgia here. And eventually uh, through eastern Georgia and into, you know, Charleston, South Carolina, and so forth. Um, you guys are all going to get an, at least on some heavy rains from uh, this line of storms that will move through. It's going to take a couple hours to get to central Georgia. You might see some rain here and there as it approaches. Uh, and then, you know, it'll take a couple hours more to reach the Atlantic coast. So early morning hours for a lot of y'all. I, I imagine a lot of y'all are not wanting to stay up till 3 a.m. Eastern, anything like that. So um, just if, if you're going to go to bed with that information in mind, make sure you have a way to receive warnings. I would say that anywhere right now, anywhere along this line... Anywhere along this line and to the north and west of it. So on this side of the line. This side of the line is safe to sleep. So even though there might there's thunder and lightning over here, um, this is just going to be some moderate rain for a while now. There may be some flooding risks here. So hopefully, as, lo as long as you got those uh, leaks fixed in your house, if you got any, uh, you'll be fine over here um, on the north and west part of Atlanta, northwest Georgia, anywhere over here, Birmingham, Tuscaloosa. So hopefully you'll be okay over there. So I would say you could go to sleep over there. You still got some strong storms in and around these areas, Athens, Georgia, all the way down here, uh, you know, over here. And then, of course, you got these cells over here. Uh, let me move that over there. So you got these cells over here into uh, South Carolina, ah, right over here. These are going to move uh, basically through the, re the rest of this yellow area, that slight risk from the Storm Prediction Center. Uh, through the night time so we got a couple of areas to watch and you know really nothing's nothing's really dying out right now most of this is just steady state so we've got some we've got some lower end severe weather 
coming through here. Uh, but that doesn't mean it's not severe. So it's still going to pack a punch. But yeah, just uh, find your location along this line as it goes to the east uh, into the early morning hours. Follow that arrow where the storms are probably going to be here. If you're in LaGrange, you're, you're going to have some heavy rain and so forth. So if you're in this battle zone down here uh, in and around these areas, Athens, Georgia, you know, everywhere in here, you might want to stay up just a little bit longer until, you know, that rain doesn't really change outside. It sounds the same for a little while. It's just it's just some moderate rain and some occasional thunder. You should be okay for the most part, though. You should be all right. So Griffin, Georgia, about to get hit by, you know, some heavier rain, but... Um, these are just your these these might just be some of your garden variety severe thunderstorms that you'll want to be inside for. You want to be inside for them. <clears throat> Anywhere up here, so these these uh these storms right here in this area of uh, moderate to heavy rainfall in northern Georgia. Let me draw it in black for you all, actually. Let's try that in, uh, let's try that in black. That's not black. There we go. Anywhere in this area, all of these rain, all this rain is going to track this direction up through Charlotte, up into North Carolina, uh, and Northern South Carolina, Southern North Carolina and Northern South Carolina. There you go. So all that rain and, uh, some of the storms are going to track through there. They're going to be mostly, you know, there's going to be a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings here, but it's mostly fine. It's going to be electrical. It's going to be loud if, you know, you get any lightning near you. But lightning might be the most impressive part of this. So um, uh, that that's what you're looking at up here uh, through the morning hours. So if, if you get woken up, I hope I hope you don't get woken up unless you got a, a weather radio going off. But if that lightning wakes you up, now you know why. All that electrical stuff is moving off in this direction. And then we've got our severe weather concentrated really about where this yellow line is. So where the, the yellow part of the screen is here, uh, moving into uh, North Carolina, the southern tip of it here near Wilmington, and uh, the southern half of the state of South Carolina and central Georgia. That's where the rest of our severe weather is really concentrated here. Okay, did my best there. Hopefully, hopefully that covers as much as today's risk as uh, I possibly can. Hopefully you've got that down. Let's look at our storms again. We've still got this one in South Carolina. It's developed a pretty good area of hail now. Now we see a bunch of hail in this pink uh, over here. Let me switch here. Bunch of hail over here in this uh, this pink area. Now that's going to go towards mostly uh, Gadsden and Waterlee here in South Carolina. So you could see some pretty impressive hail. We've been seeing these hail cores and these cells pop up all day. Uh, it's really interesting to see because I know that the uh, the wind profile, so literally how the winds are blowing at every level in the atmosphere as you go up, the wind profile is supporting hail uh, because we have um, we have these updrafts, the air rising into the storm uh, that's sustaining that hail really efficiently. And then uh, as soon as the storm taps into that sort of environment, we get these hail cores right here. So it's all about the winds. You know, we've got the we've got the temperatures and the moisture in place. It's all about the winds. It's all about the winds. So that's our that's our strongest cell here in South Carolina. The rest of South Carolina is just going to get in on some fun lightning, maybe some heavy rain here and there, but um, the severe weather is really with this supercell down here. Uh, eventually, that's going to track to the east northeast towards Sumter, Turbville, Turbeville. Uh, Maysville up to Timminsville here along uh, Interstate uh, 95 as it goes off to the eastern part of South Carolina. So that's where our supercell is going to go. And again, this thing is probably this thing's probably going to live this uh, the next like four or five hours here, and it's going to go all the way over here, probably towards Wilmington and Myrtle Beach. So if you don't get the if you don't get the severe weather from this directly in Myrtle Beach or uh, areas near Florence, South Carolina, or Wilmington, you're probably going to see it in the distance at some point. So that's this uh, that's this supercell over the next few hours. Say that's three hours out, four hours out maybe for uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. 
some severe weather headed your way. Okay, so uh, does that make this glitch out? I don't know if that happens, guys. The stream glitch out at all? <laughs> or does it look fine? <clears throat> and then there's this cell. It's now getting closer to Augusta, Georgia. Right now, this one looks mostly like a wind and hail threat uh, around the Thompson, Georgia area and headed east towards Augusta. But it does look like it's going to impact the city now. We can watch it move a little bit here. You can see that really it's just moving due east. Uh, most of the heavy stuff here is just going to go right through the city of Augusta. And that's about 30 to 45 minutes out from now. Uh, from west to east across the city. So Augusta, Georgia, be ready for that. Be ready for that. Thank you for the support, Cody. Thank you for the support, anyone. Hopefully I don't miss anyone. Appreciate it, SRD. Uh, I think I answered your Macon, Georgia question. Macon County in Americus. <laughs> Thanks for the likes, guys. Yeah, don't forget, if you like this channel, you know, if I've done enough for you already, uh, we'll be doing, I'll be doing, I'll parallel what Ryan does essentially, but with the meteorological spin. I already help Ryan with every video and stream that he does. Um, I check the scripts, I, I do all that stuff, but now you get to see more of the back end, the things that I look at, and uh, hopefully the, you know, the important information that we, we can really, really, really effectively get that out together. So, um, yeah, if you like both channels, make sure you're staying tuned to both of them. All right, so that's our East Georgia storm. Augusta, heads up 30 to 45 minutes for the supercell. It's going to be wind and hail. First and foremost, and some really heavy rain. Uh, I'm back here to eastern Alabama. Auburn, Opelika, you guys are really getting in on this. It looks like our tornadic threat has mostly subsided here. Now we're seeing these winds really push out right here where these tan uh, colors are. That's 60 mile an hour winds. Uh, so uh, still some really uh, impressive winds up here. So Lafay Lafayette. <laughs> Um, and then Lynette and Valley here on the border uh, of Alabama and Georgia. You guys are going to get in on probably the most significant part of this storm over here. And then the rest of this area, Smith Station, uh, Crawford, Alabama, Phoenix City, and then into Columbus, Georgia. is going to get this really heavy rain that's over Tuskegee. We got some rotation down here as well. Let's see how long this has lasted. A fair amount of time, but if you see that purple stuff, it was in a part of the radar scans that, you know, we didn't really have data uh, there right now due to something called range folding. I think I can see it better from down here, so let's take a look. Possible rotation down here. It's not super strong, though. Uh, and this is to the south of Pike Road, Alabama, headed towards probably Mitchell. This is headed towards Mitchell, Fort Davis, and Union Springs in Alabama. It might go just north of Shopton, uh, down here into the southeast part of the state in Bullock County. <laughs> uh, so we'll be watching this cell, too. This one definitely looks like something to uh, watch. I This rotation could, uh, you know, we, we could get a concentrated area right in here uh, where it focuses it, itself for a tornado risk. So let's keep an eye on this. Uh, Union Springs, advance head up for that area in Bullock County. I would watch out in uh, in Union Springs and uh, surrounding areas here. So the cell is not warned yet at all, but it does look pretty concerning on radar. So if anything does blow through or it does uh, get upgraded to a tornado warning at some point, or issued one rather, um, now you know why. Now you know why. There is no couplet yet. No, this is broad rotation. We're pretty disconnected here. Pretty disconnected. Bull Luck County. Thank you. About Albany, Georgia. Albany's down the line. You're a bit south. I think these storms will eventually reach you if they continue to uh, propagate to the south like this. Uh, they, they might do some back building is what we call where the storms build backwards on themselves. And eventually they may reach uh, this area near Albany, Georgia. So keep an, uh, keep an eye out on that. But I think you guys should be mostly okay. You're in that slight risk 
two out of five level for uh, severe weather. Camp Hill, uh, you guys just went through the worst of it. Uh, hopefully you still got power here. Uh, if you're in Camp Hill proper and not to the east of it, you're fine now. You're fine. Just make sure that you're not going outside yet. Because it's probably still pretty electrical out there, I bet. Lots of lightning. Got a lot of wind reports in and around Wetumpka. Lots of trees blown down in this area. If you if we look back, I think I'd have to download the data. If we look back though, this is where that um that shrimp cell we were talking about went through, and really started to get some rotation ramping up, and eventually become uh, became tornado warned. So, uh, those the bunch of trees down in that area makes sense. So hopefully I was able to. Uh, Relay the information about a strong storm moving through there. So hopefully everybody's okay. Trees down is never good. Yeah, well, Tumka's been getting it bad. <clears throat> Heavy rain started over here in Phoenix City. It's going to continue quite some time. If you, if you watch this, you can see that net rain is mostly just traveling west to east, so all this blob is going to be over Columbus City, or Columbus and Phoenix City, uh, over here. It's going to take some time for it to pass through. <clears throat> so yeah, you'll, you'll, be in, you'll be in the thick of it for a while there. Quite a bit of rain coming in and some lightning. I know, I wish, I wish y'all could go to sleep too, but... You know, in the best in the best con uh, consciousness as a meteorologist, I would prefer if people in the severe weather, if they had to sleep, they have a way to wake up to a warning. Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. Thank you, guys. Uh, so that's our look at southeast Alabama. We're watching this cell near Union Springs. Um, uh, and this one up near Camp Hill. Used to be tornado worn, but now looks like a damaging wind threat here as we go into more of a bow-shaped... Uh, so Lafayette and uh, and uh, towards the uh, Georgia border here is uh, some. There's some severe threat in there. <clears throat> ah, it's okay, Brandy. I called it a shrimp storm. I brought it. I brought it upon myself. But we need fun little things like that to you know lighten the mood at least a little bit and help people remember what they're looking at. I think that's uh I think that's important from time to time. If we have twelve active tornado warnings at the same time, now you're probably not gonna catch me doing that. So uh <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. Alright, Brad Arnold's head towards this storm. Uh all right, good his his feed's not frozen. Uh Brad Arnold is right here to the west of Pine Hill, Alabama. He's moving this direction. And you can see if I scroll over just a bit here. Uh, this area that may be rotating just the south of Pine Hill, moving toward Camden again. I talked about this. Uh, several locations are going to get several rounds, and Camden's one of them uh, down here in southwest Alabama. So uh, another round of, of heavy rain coming through for this area in Wilcox County. Uh, we got Brad Arnold headed towards it, so let me take a look at that from another radar site. And we'll keep an eye on Brad over here. Keep an eye on him. Yeah, we just got some broad rotation. Waiting for anything further than that, but we're pretty far away from radar site, so Brad's ground truth is going to be pretty important. On Friday, it was really serious. Very serious on Friday. I think we. I think I. I think I handled each day correctly. All right, so there we go. Watching all parts of the country. Let's go back through again. There's our uh, South Carolina storm here. Here's a state looking at it. This supercell is headed towards watery uh, Wedgwood privateer and eventually some turf South Carolina. It's going to pass to the north of St. Matthews, but I think there's some pretty large hail in here. Let's take a look at that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got some large hail right in here. Right in here in this part of the storm, you can see, you can see that on this scan even. Look at that, um, look at the pinks here. That's your hail. And look at this spike coming out of the storm like this. 
that tells me that there's some really large hail in here because the radar is bouncing off the hail and creating this radar artifact coming out of it. Um, so whenever you see something like that, that's a uh, the uh, that's a that's a hail spike is what we call it in the business. Riley, why are you not mod? Why can't I mod you? Oh, I'm not signed in. Oh gosh, what? I got signed out. Uh oh, <laughs> I am signed out from my my YouTube account. Oh boy. Now hopefully that doesn't kick me off. <laughs> oh boy. Right now we're we're streaming into the void. As long as you can still hear me, we're good. <laughs> oh, YouTube, you're so funny. I do have a way to talk to Brad Arnold. I'm not going to bother him, though, I think. I think he, he might like to speak to me. He likes me. Brad likes me. He might be listening to me right now. Hey, Brad, what you doing? What you doing? Wow, Brandy, that's mean. <laughs> Uh, so yes, a big hail. Again, man, we just see we see this big hail and just a little spot here, a hail core to show up in these storms. That happened to Atlanta earlier tonight. Now it's happening over here uh, as it moves towards Sumter, South Carolina. I think it's going to continue to be the case. So big hail right here. Would not be surprised if we saw some golf balls falling right in this localized area. The void, yeah. <laughs> Going into the void here. I am on YouTube. I can I can read the chat. Don't worry. At least I've got some situational awareness here. All right. Wow. Don't tell me we've got a, a storm heading towards Charlotte. Oh, my goodness. Is this one going to do it, too? Let's take a look. It might. It might do exactly that. So this one's got a severe thunderstorm warning on it now in Union, South Carolina. It's getting closer to where I know uh, things up in here in the in the, the Appalachia. Uh, so this storm is basically headed straight for uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, it's about it's probably about an hour out, maybe a little bit more than that uh, from the metro area up there. But it does pose a, a wind and hail threat here. So we'll be we'll be checking this one out. We'll be checking this one out. The northern extent of the you know these severe storms is impressive to me. Impressive. I'm up here in Minneapolis right now. Shelby, good to sleep. Well, you guys got this storm headed towards you in the Charlotte metro. I think Shelby's right around in there. Uh, I forgot. There you are over here. I think this cell is probably going to go to your east. So yeah, in Shelby, I would go to bed. Uh, but if you're closer to Charlotte and Gastonia and Matthews in North Carolina, if you care about uh, a little bit of severe weather, like if you want to stay up for it, then um, you got about an hour. You'll probably start seeing the lightning off in the distance here. Um, so, uh, you know, take that as you will. This is not going to be a tornado producing storm, more than likely. Uh, but it may bring in some pretty nasty conditions into uh, the metro here. So yeah, pay attention to that. Gainesville, yep, you're fine. It's just going to be loud if any lightning strikes next to you. Gainesville, Georgia, you're good. I anywhere anywhere to the north and west of this line here. So Atlanta, Atlanta metro. Noonan, hopefully you're fine, but there's some severe weather going just off to your south. So it's going to be pretty nasty close by you, but hopefully you're good down there. My goodness, man. Atlanta should hopefully be clear. You just got you guys are dealing with a considerable flash flooding right now. So um hopefully that you know, hopefully you're able to take care of any uh leaks that are happening in and around your house or you don't have to go driving for whatever reason. Gotta stay indoors when that flash flooding's going on. Uh some pretty strong rain actually is gonna move into Greenville, South Carolina right now. Spartanburg eventually. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's going to get pretty nasty for some people down here, but it's it's spring. It's spring. You get your springtime storms. Okay, okay. So, uh, yeah, we'll be watching up here into Charlotte. Check back in every now and then for y'all. Yeah, if you want to stay up for it, you got a little bit of juice left in the tank for tonight, and you're able to see it. Um, you might see some cool weather, but please stay indoors during it, of course. 
Uh, that's all I request from you. Thank you. Let's check on East Georgia. Here's that supercell. You can see it right here. It is approaching Augusta, Georgia. It's going to move right into the city. It's going to get nasty there, okay? Anyone in Augusta, Georgia? Is anyone in Augusta, Georgia right now? Because you guys are going to see this in probably about 15 to 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes. Mobile, yeah, I hope you guys are fine down there on the Gulf Coast. You might see some weather off to your north a little bit. Something might come overhead, but you should be mostly fine. Should be mostly fine. All right, good to see you all in Augusta. Pay attention to this one. It's going to bring wind and hail. Wind and hail. Wind and hail here. So um, it's going to go pretty much right through the city too. So lots of lightning with this as well. Lots of strong storms moving through here. Man. Doesn't it just look nasty out there? Look at all this crap. <laughs> look at all that. Goodness, man. This is just nasty. So much, so much rain. So much rain and wind. And lots of lightning. Lots of lightning. Uh, eventually, the storm that's going impact, to impact Augusta is going to go down uh, the line here. Also, Aiken, South Carolina probably will get it. So, uh, anywhere along this arrow, mostly, is going to see the impacts of this cell as it moves off to the east. So, um, pay attention uh, to this supercell because it is going to pack a punch. It is going to pack a punch. It's not currently severe warned though, so if you see if you see any hail from it, hopefully it should remain sub severe, but it does look it does look pretty menacing. All right, now let's go back down to southeastern Alabama. That storm we were watching that could start rotating near Union Springs is thankfully seemingly let up a little bit as we go forward in time here. You can see uh most of that rotation is uh weakened here. But we got some pretty heavy rain and lots of lightning coming through. Yep, and that's gonna that's gonna keep coming through Columbus, Georgia, for a while now, and uh, that metro area there. And yep, this line of storms right here, this area of storms, we're gonna see it once again. It's gonna travel all the way east through central Georgia uh, as we go through the night. It's gonna go this direction. It's also gonna expand a little bit down this direction, perhaps clipping Albany. Uh, areas down here are definitely gonna see some um, some rain and wind from these for sure. So in you know in an hour and a half or so, Macon, Georgia, in that area, Warner Robins. As you go to the east, add on an hour or so. And then Albany probably in a few hours because it's going to take some time for the storms to go to the south. But eventually you will see some unsettled weather, I think. I think so. Anything else we got? We still got Brad Arnold out there chasing. He's headed towards Yellow Bluff at the moment. It's kind of, kind of tough to see this. This is definitely in a radar hole. Try to take a closer look here. Brad Arnold's chasing right now. We got his live stream down there. And then this uh, this railfan camera is Cordial, Georgia, which is also out ahead of the storms that uh, may pass through Albany all the way up to Macon. So eventually that camera is going to get pretty stormy. I don't know if I will be awake for that, but I'll try to stay on for quite some time tonight. Good old Brad Arnold. Good old Brad Arnold. <laughs> Of course, I can't see nothing. I can't see nothing. I wonder when. I wonder if in a decade from now or five years from now when we're doing this, that well, we're going to have double the radars. Wouldn't that be so cool? That would be amazing. Double the radars we got now. Let's do it.
start the project. Yeah, it's strategic. We're finding the best train feed uh, for severe weather. All chat are so funny sometimes. What in the world? <laughs> oh yeah, you're making you're making me laugh a little bit. <clears throat> Oof. Seems like the system is dying. That tends to happen as we go into the nighttime hours. There's no more sun. There's no more uh, streaming in of that energy. A lot of that energy is going to the storm, so it's harder to sustain them. Generally, overnight, you're going to see a decrease in storm coverage and intensity. That is a that is how the weather works, but it's not always true. <clears throat> Do I cover the weather situation in California? Probably not with a live stream, but with videos, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I've covered, uh, I've had a segment dedicated to some of the atmospheric rivers that have gone through California in each of the three videos I've made so far. And there will be more of them. There will be more. Is it okay to sleep in central Alabama? Yes. If you're north of Selma, so if you're around Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, you guys are fine up there. You may see some heavy rain pass through from time to time. Maybe some thunder will wake you up. But I think you are mostly good to go over here. Your threat is mostly reduced to um, wind with any uh, strong storms that come through. Montgomery? Mm. Yeah, for the most part, you guys will be okay. There's still some strong storms uh, down that may down south here near Camden. That is, they're going to track through uh, and into the Montgomery region here. Um, but I think um, hopefully that they uh, settle down a bit. Brad Arnold's chasing them though, so that's never a good sign. If Brad Arnold's chasing the storm coming toward you, you better watch out. So maybe I'd stay up just a little longer there in Montgomery. Fayetteville, this morning you're going to get some storms in a few hours from now, maybe around 4 to 5 a.m., maybe a little later than that. They might wake you up because there's probably going to be some lightning with them. All right. Let's uh, take a look around now. What are we looking at? Let's go back through our radar sites. Eastern Georgia up first as that uh, supercell approaches Augusta. We're looking at the radar just a minute and a half ago right now. Uh, so right now it's over Grovetown in Harlem, and it is going to track right into Augusta here. Currently not severe warned, but it is going to pack a punch tons of lightning, I think. So uh, I think that you guys might see even some small hail in here. If you don't get any hail, though, these pinks and dark reds in here could just be really torrential rainfall. So you could see some a lot of rain here. So that's uh, Augusta, Georgia. That includes Aiken and also uh, anywhere in between here. The supercell is going to track through uh, and pass along parts of Interstate 20 here into the South Carolina area. All right, up to South Carolina itself here in the center of the state. Um, we still see a little bit of hail. It seems to be falling out, though, of the storm uh, in this red and pink area nearing Watery. It looks like St. Matthews was able to escape that uh, supercell and impacts there, but you probably saw and heard quite a bit of lightning there. But that is eventually going to make its way up and towards the uh, Sumter, South Carolina area. And down the line, Turboville, Lake City, uh, all along Highway 378 here. This supercell is probably going to be going for a while. Um, I, I wouldn't doubt that this uh, supercell will go all through the night towards uh, Myrtle Beach and towards Wilmington. So uh, pay attention to that. This is going to be your weather maker for a little bit here. And then you might see some uh, storms later on a few hours after that thing blows through. We'll see. Okay, now we've also got Charlotte in the mix here. Union, South Carolina is just now getting in on the fun here. Let's see where it's at. It's probably passed mostly through the town here. And uh, up next, it's going to go up to Sharon and York here in South Carolina and head to the Charlotte Metro. So roughly, we're taking a look at this storm right here, taking this path up north and east to Charlotte. Brad is done for the night. Did you hear him say that? 
All right, I'm going to try refreshing his feed one more time just in case he's not. But if he is, we'll switch over to another train there. I got it ready. If Brad's done for the night, thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad, for providing uh, chaser footage for uh, just about seven hours of the stream now. Just about seven hours. <laughs> Yep, if you know somebody in Sumter, make sure you're relaying that info for them. They're going to have a strong storm coming through to them. So they should be on the lookout if they've got some, uh, if they're able to stay up for a little bit, it will, it'll be useful. It'll be, in, it'll be useful. It's like waiting for the rain and thunder. You can do it from time to time. All right, I think, I think we're done. I think Brad is done tonight. So let's switch to a train. Wow. There you go. Uh, is that frozen, though? No, I don't think it's frozen. I think that's going right now. So let's... Uh, I don't have a tag for that, so we'll just uh, turn that off. <laughs> this train is in... I ain't got a clue. <laughs> I don't know where this uh, this train station is. If you can read that tiny print um, and tell me where it's at. We've got those train uh, those train cams up on... Our back end here so that we can uh, relay some weather through this through the webcam there two two spartanburg there it is yep it's spartanburg south carolina thank you so yeah that's that's not far away from this uh, severe thunderstorm so pretty good we got coverage we got coverage there nice all right, so York next up, probably about 20 minutes out from this uh, storm that's severe warned. It's going to pack a punch with some winds, possibly some small hail. As in here over the town of Lockhart, South Carolina right now. Flash flood warning for the Columbia Metro. <laughs> Lots of heavy rain moving through there in an urban area. It's tough to drain that all out, so please make sure... Uh, if you need to drive, hopefully you don't have to drive. Try to refrain from driving in uh, downtown Columbia, South Carolina. All right, Sumter probably next in line for this uh, supercell. Some pretty decent uh, winds and so forth uh, associated with this. Okay, back down to southeast Alabama. I wish we had this radar site. Man. Man, I wish we had that. Could be some rotation forming around Cam Camden, Alabama once again over here. Uh, this is Camden, Alabama. This storm's rotating a little bit. Uh, and some of the rotation in these storms, they're not severe warned at the moment, but they are headed generally towards the Montgomery area once again. We're going to see another round of uh, storms pass through a lot of these areas. And eventually, these uh, these might make it all the way to the border. So if uh, if this round one in uh, Columbus, Georgia, it wasn't enough for you, Union Springs down here, or Eufaula, uh, then you might see another one later on tonight. Let's see if we can take a quick look at East Mississippi here, just in case. Is there still a tornado threat? It's it's uh it's it's fallen. Tornado threat's fallen down here, which we're there we're very thankful for. But if if one does develop, I'll I'll tell you about it. All right, I will tell it. So some some strong storms are still showing up here. I think all of these storms we're looking at here are going to have mostly a really heavy rainfall uh, risk associated with them, uh, and a bunch of lightning. So. Eastern Mississippi, just a few storms trailing through here. When we were looking at that model data earlier on in the stream, this is what we were seeing as we got into the nighttime hours, just a bunch of uh, pop-up storms back in here. We weren't really sure if they were going to be severe uh, or pose a tornado threat because they, you know, the model data is resolving so much. Um, can't tell if boundaries from previous storms are going to help uh, produce tornadoes here. So I think that that is not the case and that really, we're just looking at some really heavy rain here in uh, any of these storms in East Mississippi, uh, even all the way back in, even all the way back here into uh, into Louisiana. Still, we've got that supercell uh, that was over Natchitoches like four hours ago, right? Man, these things are lasting forever. 
So yeah, some more rain expected for a lot of the areas here. More rain and lightning. But you should be fine. Let's, uh, let's, uh, we'll come back here to Montgomery occasionally, but let's go over to this radar site closer to Atlanta here so we can take a look. Anyone in Athens, uh, Georgia, and so forth, Madison, Georgia, look at this mess. There is so much going on here. I'm sorry. It looks like a, I mean, there's just, <laughs> there's just so much going on here, but that's because we got a ton of rain. Let me turn this off. All right, just for a bit. I mean, that doesn't really help that much. <laughs> it is just so bright. So a bunch, a bunch of rain is just going to be falling here for a while here. This is going to accumulate quite a bit. We might get some flash floods off of this, like what is uh, here in the green polygon in Atlanta. Uh, those severe thunderstorm warnings were allowed to expire. So really, our severe weather is kind of along this line here. This is going to be the gustiest part of the storm in, uh, in most of uh, Georgia right now. Uh, both uh, both this part of the storm up here that may extend north to Athens and this storm back here. Um, they're going to kind of come together here around the Macon, Georgia area, and you guys are going to see some severe weather in the form of uh, probably winds is what I would say. Winds, lots of lightning, heavy rain. In Macon, Georgia, maybe about an hour to an hour and a half from now. So Athens, once it doesn't sound too windy out anymore, once that rain settles down a little bit, it's still thundering out though, you should be fine. You should be fine. Up here in northeast Georgia as well. So that's a look at uh, central Georgia right now in western Georgia. LaGrange and uh, Phoenix, LaGrange down to Columbus, Georgia is really seeing like the, the windiest parts of the storm. So strong stuff moving through, but... Not seeing anything to uh, really tell y'all about, except perhaps this little bit here near Whitesville. Um, we'll keep a close eye on that just in case, but this is pretty far up in the storm, so. Keeping an eye on it, Nader Investigator, just in case. In Macon, I mean, if you're if you're in a pretty strong house, What's going to come through is some heavy heavy winds and lightning. Like, it might wake you up. Um, your risk is not zero for uh, any sort of uh, tornado threat, though. So uh, I wouldn't say that you're 100% okay unless you have a way to receive warnings. Unless something's going to wake you up in Macon, then you can go to bed. Otherwise, I'm not confident in that uh, part. I'm sure you'll more than likely be fine, but I can't tell you that you're going to be fine and go to sleep for sure. Hopefully you understand. Auburn's doing well. Yep, you guys are behind the, the main line here, so Auburn's fine. Opelika's fine. Uh, for the most part here. There is some. There are some strong cells back in here that are going to impact Montgomery shortly. They may clip into uh, Auburn in those areas as we go into the night, but they might they might not. They might avoid you. So you might be on the edge of a battle zone, just in case. Can Columbus, Georgia people sleep? Same deal. Montgomery is about to be uh, impacted by some strong storms over here. They'll be into the Columbus, Georgia area in maybe about an hour, and an hour and a half or so. So it's possible that more severe weather could move through, but the hope is that um, that, that risk would be uh, lower. Always a chance, yeah. I mean, you guys, like, I don't want to, I never want to scare you with any of this stuff, but um, it, was, uh, it was West Point over here in western Georgia near LaGrange that got a significant tornado at 5 a.m. yesterday morning or this morning just about 24 hours ago so nothing is impossible and that's why i will say that you should go to bed with a weather radio or a way to wake up pike road same thing as montgomery whenever i talk about montgomery pike road included in that unless i'm zoomed in yeah so much rain and hail 
Hopefully I'm helping y'all. Even if this isn't like 12 tornado warnings at the same time, hopefully I'm able to help y'all. All right, let's go back to our round of storms here. First of all, Central South Carolina. Sumter coming up on that storm. Hail threat may be a little bit reduced as it nears the uh, city of Sumter. Uh, but so, still, you know, a pretty powerful storm is going to move in here. You're definitely going to hear it, see it. Do not go outside and feel it, though, if you can help it. Would not uh, recommend that. <laughs> Next up, we're going to look at the cell that may be going towards Charlotte, North Carolina. Columbia, South Carolina, yep, you're fine for now. Just got that flash flood warning there and some lightning nearby, so try to stay indoors. Heavy rain moving through Greenville into uh, the Spartanburg corridor here, perhaps over the next uh, while. Greenville's getting it now. Uh, and to the west, Clemson got some heavy rain as well. Ooh, man, so many people. So many people. <laughs> so many places. Guys, look how big this uh, this risk area is. Like, it's so wide. There's so many people to talk about here. And that's why I'm a, a little exasperated, but I'm doing my best. So wide. So yeah, strong, uh, strong storm, but mostly sub severe moving through Greenville now. It's gonna, it's gonna pack a punch. So you're gonna notice. You're gonna notice. Here's our Charlotte bound cell. It's just moved through Lockhart, uh, South Carolina, and is headed towards York. Doesn't look like it's holding together too well. But I think you're still going to see it in Charlotte. Hopefully, uh, it, hopefully it just, uh, you know, loses intensity, though, before it gets there. If you're in Tennessee, you're good. You're good. You're good. All right. Back to the Atlanta radar here and areas around it. Griffin, looks like you're mostly fine. You might get clipped by some uh, more damaging winds here from this part of the storm that's going this direction uh, up here in Griffin. So if you're up here, uh, you might be you might get a little bit of a strong storm coming up. But I would say I would say for the most part in Griffin, you're fine. Just hopefully you don't have to go driving. We got some flash flood warnings um, starting to be issued all in here. Griffin, you're good. Atlanta, again, you're good unless you're in a flood-prone area. So um, hopefully your house ain't leaking. But if it is, you know about it. It's going to be raining there for quite some time. I think storming, too. Is anyone in Atlanta? Are you guys still getting lots of lightning? I'll talk about that if so. Yeah, I think you are. I think you're getting quite a bit. Not too, too much, but quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to help anyone here. So yeah, if you're in Atlanta getting some lightning anywhere around here in northwest Georgia, you can go to sleep, but you're getting here. This is some stratiform rain. Uh, and what that means is it's just a fancy word for, hey, it's going to be like moderate rainfall for a while. But a lot of times in this area of stratiform rain, you get a bunch of lightning activity. Um, and that happens with a more powerful system. So it does tell us that the storm is uh, pretty powerful. It's got a lot of juice to it. Atmospheric juice. All right, let's look at Augusta again. You guys are probably starting to get in on this. Uh, lost my radar site. There we go. Let's look at Augusta. Augusta, Georgia. Yep, it's getting there. Just outside the city now. You can probably hear it. So this storm's also going to impact Aiken, South Carolina. Uh, and areas along this, uh, this, uh, this highway in between them. Dang, I turned my thing off so I can't see that. Oh boy, that's not what I wanted. There we go. This uh, Highway 1 between Augusta and Aiken along Interstate 20. So this is going to be a powerful storm. Not severe warned at the moment. But, um, yep. You're definitely going to hear it. Starting to impact the city. Aiken, you're probably about 15, 10 to 15 minutes out from seeing uh, this begin there. And then it'll last maybe 20 minutes or so. We'll see. 
So there's your East Georgia storm. And then, um, unfortunately, you've got some more heavy rain heading, uh, heading in right behind this. So Augusta round two coming in, probably more lightning with this, but it looks less intense overall. So it's going to be pretty rainy there. You got some hail. Yep, you might get some small hail. You might hear it there, but um, not severe level hail as this hasn't been warned for quite some time. <clears throat> Man, so much lightning today, guys. Again, that lightning, all the lightning that you're seeing today in these, uh, anywhere in the southeast and the deep south, it's because that air that's four miles above your head right now, that air is from Texas. That air is from Mexico and New Mexico. It's dry and it is cold up there. Um, and the, what that does is it simply means that there's a lot more instability. Unstable means storms. And the more unstable it is, I mean, up there, the more lightning you can get. So that's why you're getting so much lightning. It's because that cold, dry air is coming all the way from uh, the mountains in Mexico and the, the Rocky Mountains as well. It's all streaming over to this part of the country. Lots of lightning as a result. Pretty cool to think about, honestly. <clears throat> all right. All right, cycling through again. Uh, I need another radar instance. I'm going to have four of them. Let's do it. Let's do it. Go back to the scene. There we go. Let's do four of them. What do I not have? Oh, I've got two of these now. I've got too many radars, guys. Too many radars. All right, let's go from west to east. Heavy rainfall for eastern Mississippi. Should be sub-severe for a while, so hopefully everybody in Birmingham, Tuscaloosa can uh, go to sleep. All right. Um, for the rest of this area, though, um, again, these strong storms down here are starting to move into the Montgomery area and to the south. Um, honestly, while they do look a little concerning, some of them are rotating a little bit uh, way up high in the storm. They don't have any severe warnings with them. Um, I would say you're pretty okay down here in Montgomery to go to bed. Hopefully you're fine. If you can stay up another 30 minutes, though, to watch this heavy rain come in, that's the best case. The lightning might make that the lightning might wake you up anyways over here. So hopefully you'll be fine here. Uh, and then those are going to continue to move down to the east here toward Union Springs, Eufaula, uh, and uh, Columbus, Georgia, and Phoenix City over here, Smith Station. Those storms are going to find their way to central Georgia here, and maybe even into southwest Georgia, as far south as uh, Albany. So you may, be, you may get some storms into the early morning. I think they won't be so... I don't think they'll be too severe down here. You might get some uh, gusty winds, though. Definitely heavy rain. If one finds, it, uh, finds its way toward you. Oh, and lots of lightning. I can't forget about the lightning, man. So much activity. So that's uh that's Alabama into southwest Georgia. Now we're gonna look in central Georgia. So again, these uh these storms are coming through. Right now they're exiting the Lagrange, Georgia area, uh, and basically anywhere along Interstate 85 here, from Auburn up through Atlanta. Anywhere anywhere along Interstate 85 here, you're good to go now. You're good, you're good. These storms are exiting uh, Columbus, Georgia, and are going to move this direction towards Macon over the next hour to hour and a half or so. And eventually, they'll find their way through the state of Georgia over the next three to four hours. It's going to take a while. So Savannah, you guys are going to get it in the early morning. Um, what you're going to get, though, is probably not going to be too bad. It's probably not too bad. Okay. So there's central Georgia. Um, we've also got some severe risks extending up to the north. This part of the air, this part of the uh, storms are pretty strong. Eventually, that's going to find its way towards uh, Augusta, Georgia, once again. So uh, a couple rounds, a couple rounds for Augusta are possible into the night. So that includes Aiken areas to the east into South Carolina, 
Eventually, this unsettled weather will make it to you. But hopefully, it won't be too bad. So hopefully, you can sleep through it. All right. So, um, Athens, Georgia, you're good now. I think you're good now. Might be a, might still be a little windy out there, but everyone over here in the state of Georgia should be fine. LaGrange should be fine as well. All right, let's go to South Carolina. Here we are. Let's go to uh, Columbia, actually. We've got this strong storm approaching Sumter. Yeah, Murphy, North Carolina, you're fine. You're good. Uh, we've got this strong storm approaching Sumter. Oh, it's doing what I didn't want it to. Another hail core going right over Wedgwood, South Carolina. Uh, this area in the pinks. Dark red and pink here. Probably some hail is uh, starting up here and is going to fall um, probably right over Sumter if it uh, keeps up here. We're about 10 minutes out or so, 15 so, uh, Sumter, South Carolina, you could get in on some hail. Could get in on some hail soon here. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that. That seems to be a storm that has cycled its hail core quite a few times. It's intensifying once again. Not currently severe warned, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Sumter County here was uh, put under a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, so, uh, pay close attention to that. Greenville, talked about you guys up here, and eventually Spartanburg. Lots of lightning with this storm up here, uh, but nothing severe. Just a lot of lightning and heavy rain. Strong springtime, strong springtime storm. Whoa. I say that ten times fast. <laughs> uh, and here's our storm bound for Charlotte, North Carolina. It looks like it's losing steam, which is what we want to see. Uh, but either way... You're going you're gonna to see the lightning. Let me look at the lightning activity up here. It's not actually that bad. You'll get quite a bit, but it looks like Greenville is actually getting more lightning uh, than this storm headed towards Charlotte is. So you're still going to see it, though, for sure. Uh, so this storm, maybe about an hour out of Charlotte, 45 minutes or so. Um, by that point... The, the hope is that it is uh, basically no more, or it's definitely not severe. But if it does make it up there, it's going to come with wind and hail. No tornadoes. No tornadoes for Charlotte. Don't worry about that. You're good. You're good up there. It's just a strong storm. Cool. There we go. Myrtle Beach. Ugh, Myrtle Beach, what I'd say about the, you guys over there is that you're going to get maybe one or two, maybe one, maybe two rounds of storms here. This first one could be from this supercell right here. Um, it's basically going to move this direction uh, toward the uh, toward the shores here. It could go it could go pretty close uh, to uh, Myrtle Beach, but it might it's probably going to track to the north. A better, a better uh, line here might be this one. So into Columbus County, North Carolina. That's where I'd be watching for this one to go. You can watch the loop there. So yeah, it's going to move through Sumter. Probably drop some hail in the city shortly here. And then eventually make its way all the way up towards Wilmington. Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe further north towards Bergah. If it stays alive, which I think it will. I think it will. So unsettled weather coming your way, and then eventually uh, closer to like seven a.m., six to seven a.m. The rest of the stuff back in Georgia is gonna make it to you on the Atlantic coast. So that'll be your second round once that makes it all the way over there. By that point, the the hope is that it's not severe anymore, but it may be. Winston Salem, you're fine. Durham and Raleigh, you might get some heavy rain and lightning. You're fine. You're fine. Do Arizona haboobs show up on radar? They can. Yeah. yeah. You can see um you can see the line of dust on radar if it's a if it's a pretty prominent line of dust and it's close enough to the radar site. Yeah, you can see a haboob for sure. Uh, do we do we have a I'm not logged in, guys. <laughs> oh, this is funny. Okay, I am going to try something. I really hope this does not uh, kick me off. I I don't know. 
honestly, I'm really scared to sign in here. I feel like this might act this might accidentally end my stream, and I don't want to do that yet. So let me see. Let me see if I can get. Uh, man, I don't know how I'm gonna deal with this. Actually, I'm sorry, guys. Definitely gonna have to block those silly people in chat. But if we still have mods here, that would be useful. I have a few of them, so maybe maybe somebody's here, but I'm really scared that if I sign back into YouTube, it's going to end my stream. I feel like that might happen, so I'm not going to I'm not going to be done yet. We're just going to have to ignore the sillies. Ignore the sillies. I don't know why it signed me out. <laughs> it's so silly. It's so silly. Oh my goodness. But um, quite honestly, you know, once once this storm moves through Sumter, we see if there's any hail reports in the city. Uh, a lot of this uh, is, a lot of this is actually, you know, it's it's honestly a lot of it. Most all of it is go to sleep worthy. I really don't want to miss any anything that I could relay to you guys. But past a certain point, you know, there's only so much I can tell you. So. It does look like as we approach Sumter here, uh, the hail might be dying out just a little bit, just before the city. That's the hope here. So perhaps Wedgwood to the west got it just uh, the worst from this uh, cycle in the storm. Hail starting for you in Sumter. Okay, we got ground truth. Ground truth, we've been talking about it. Hopefully not too intense. Ah, uh, no, nah, it's not. Eh, yeah, it might be past somebody's bedtime in chat, but I... I uh, went to sleep at 5 a.m. last night here in the Central Time Zone. You know what? We have had uh, really good coverage here. I think most everyone's accounted for. Hopefully I was able to help a lot of people. Y'all, ask me anything. What are you thinking right now? What are you thinking right now? Is there anything you'd like to know? We could do a little bit of a we can do a little bit of QA. I always want to spread some information here. Anything about the weather? Happy to help everybody. Hope you're able to get information in, in any rounds of the broadcast here. Any burning questions? Columbus County, yep, I just called you guys out. You'll see it. Oh yeah, more Mr. Midas. Okay, let's let's try this. Let's try this. You guys might be able to see him if I do this. He's going to show up just a little bit. He's currently in his cat tree, so watch this. There he is right there. There's Mr. Midas, but he's sleeping. Like you guys said, we don't disturb a sleeping cat, but he's an orange floof there in the top of his cat, his cat tower. So there you go. Mr. Midas kitty is right there. Pretty cool. <laughs> He's just asleep. You can only see you can only see a floof. You can only see a floof. All to my twenty-five. Sumter okay to go to bed. Sumter's getting the storm right now in South Carolina. Uh, give it give it fifteen twenty because I don't know if you'll be able to sleep in that honestly. Don't know if you'll be able to sleep. How many tornadoes have been on the ground today? I think we just had one week one all the way back in Louisiana. Crossing the fingers worked. <laughs> Thoughts on the planes next week? Definitely have my eye on it. Uh, from what I've seen so far, I mean, it's, it's yeah, there, there's a reason to be weather aware. Honestly, I don't have any deep thoughts on it because it's mesoscale weather, you know, five, five to six days out. We got to get a little bit closer. Otherwise, no thoughts, head empty. Funnier than Ryan? I mean, I try to be a little... I try to be genuine, but so does Ryan. He talks about his food and all that stuff. <laughs> Tell him you said, psh, psh, psh. oh, nah, he's, he's passed out right now. Yep, he's, he's loafed a little bit. Loafing is when the, the, all the legs, all the paws are tucked in, though. Tips for storm anxiety. Great. Um, man, I mean, I'm going to deal with that. I'm going chasing in the plains this May. Uh, I'll be out there for two weeks, and I'll be everywhere with a group of people. And uh, honestly, like, it's very real possibility I'm going to see my first tornado in May. Very real possibility. 
uh, anywhere in the plains. So storm anxiety is going to ramp up for me too, but it's all about, I, from most of the people who have I've seen talk about it and so forth, because I've been, I've seen so many people talk about it now. Thank you, Jason, for the support. Storm anxiety is best dealt with knowledge and situational awareness. And unfortunately, that's not going to solve all of it because it means that you're coming, you you know, you're, you're focusing on it, which means it could make you nervous. So it's a healthy balance, but it's definitely about being in the know in some capacity, I think. If you're in the know, if you're watching a stream like this, it can help. It can help. Um, but don't absorb too much of it because if you, if you do too much of it, um, then you can, then you can, you know, reverse the, the benefits of it because you're just like, oh man, now this place is getting, oh man, now this is place, you know, like it, it can be a little much and Ryan and I are trained to not be overwhelmed at these things, but even sometimes we get overwhelmed like on Friday, that was intense coverage. So anything for Louisiana tonight, Louisiana should be good. There's going to be lightning. There's going to be heavy rain, but the severe threat has gone way down, thankfully, for the most part. Now, I'm not telling you that's completely gone, but I, I do think that um, we have made it through mostly unscathed today. Besides a lot of uh, a lot of uh, problems with Interstate 20 over there in Louisiana, there was a lot of uh, really gusty winds that brought down power poles and so forth. So hopefully power can be restored uh, as fast as possible. Scott, thank you for the donation as well. Appreciate you. Am I familiar with Pico Sank? Of course I am. <laughs> I watched Pico Sank like, you know, eight years ago, maybe even more than that. And now I'm here. South Charlotte, you guys have a storm heading towards you. Well, look at that. Storm heading towards you. You're going to see some lightning. You're going to hear some thunder. Um, and it might get a little windy there. But for the most part, this storm right here that's popping up, is going to make it to you in about 30 to 45 minutes. Uh, and uh, that's, I mean, that's going to be it. Gaffney, you're fine. Just some lightning coming your way like Spartanburg. All our friends in Greenville, South Carolina, can tell you about some of that lightning that might be off in the distance. <clears throat> Same uh, for Shelby and also Gastonia up here. Auburn, Alabama, okay to sleep? I would say you have a personal Andy forecast of a 98% good sleep besides some uh, spare thunder waking you up. 98. So, be weather aware. Have a way to receive warnings. But Auburn, yeah, you should be fine. Wilmington, you get the storms in the morn. Early morning storms. Early morn. Up there in, the, in North Carolina. And it's not scary. Yeah, that's that's the goal, ain't it? That's the goal. Double agent, thank you for the 10. Central Florida and a dry slot? Honestly, I don't know. Central Florida is really... Uh, the peninsula of Florida is all about the sea breeze. It's all about the sea breeze coming in and storms forming off the sea breeze. They create those boundaries, storms go up, and uh, tons of lightning noise down there. Lightning capital of the states. So the fact that you've been a dry slot, I think it's just each day that there's been a chance for storms to pop up. It just might have missed areas. Um, the sea breeze wasn't in the right spot. Boundaries weren't in the right spot. You're heavily dependent on those days to get your um, to get a lot of the rain there. It's fallen in the form of storms, so... No milk sandwiches, oh no. And get the bread and milk. Get the sandwiches. What are you going to do with bread and milk? Dip it. Nope, that's why you got the milk sandwiches. Can you sleep in Rhode Island? Yes. Yes, you can sleep in Rhode Island. Oh, yeah. Let me talk about the Andrew Hill Weather Kid video. Oh, my gosh. Great point. Great point. Andrew Hill Weather Kid, that's not me. You can see uh, you can see that kid is talking about Illinois. I grew up in Southern California. And I hope he's doing well. I haven't heard from him. I know someone uh, named Andrew Hill in Wales in the UK. Um, they've come through a few times. They're cool. Uh, named doppelgangers, but 
I have not heard about what happened to that Andrew Hill. <laughs> There's so many people who who have said that. I don't know. I don't know what's uh what's become of him. I hope he went into weather. Someday I'd like to hear about it. But nope, that is not me. Just a coincidence. Do I enjoy Minnesota? Yes, absolutely. I love weather extremes. So far, I'm loving it. Minnesota's great up here. What? Uh, a lot of people get recommended this video about Andrew Hill Weather Kid uh, when they watch my videos on my channel. That's what I'm talking about. So I've had at least 60 or 70 people ask me about it. <laughs> so that's why I address that. It's, it's interesting. Another Andrew Hill in the weather? Who would have thunk? Uh, real fast, look at next week's weather. Yep. Honestly, I... Okay, yeah, let me show you over here, actually. Okay, so uh, if we look, let's do this real quick, and then I'll respond to more chat. Here's the Weather Prediction Center site. I'll zoom in a little bit. It's going to be a little off-center, but uh, bear with me here. It's the Weather Prediction Center site. Um, this is for Tuesday, March 28th. We see the Atmospheric River number 5 billion uh, coming into California. Heavy rain from the Bay Area down to Los Angeles, once again, all along the coast here. And, um, you know, just just a mess. So this low pressure system right in here, there's a few of them there, but that's all one thing. That's going to move uh, off to the east with time. So this is Tuesday, and then on Thursday, it's going to merge out into the plains and cause uh, severe weather in this area about for Thursday, including Dallas-Fort Worth, Oklahoma City, even up to uh, Kansas City. And then on Friday, we're looking at a severe weather risk that's kind of like this. Uh, this is the current thinking, so... Severe weather over here Thursday, Friday over here, uh, big severe weather uh, areas, and uh, possibly, you know, some more isolated uh, severe weather as we go into the weekend, into April Fool's Day. So yeah, here's our atmospheric river here. That same thing is going to move all the way across the nation, sweep across it. Everything is, uh, everything's going to happen again. Uh, so here's the day three through seven. Uh, you can see that severe weather risk here from the weather prediction centers uh, showing up there. Actually, let me refresh this. Yeah, and then uh, uh, also a heavy rain risk. That's for maybe they haven't issued another one of these yet. So this this is old. This is old, but um, that severe weather risk is going to start up and move east through the nation. So that's what's going on there. Um, pr pretty much. Uh, that's the story for the week. It's going to be another nationwide springtime storm sweeper. So uh, I think that Utah, Colorado, Idaho, Wyoming, in the Rocky Mountains here are probably going to receive some snow from that system. And then we're going to get the severe weather. And we might even get the snow on the, on the northern back end up here into uh, the late, into the end of the week. Let's turn on an animation here. This should help some more people. We can look at the the nationwide radar here, a loop of it. There we go. We do got some storms pretty close to uh, the the rail fan down there. That's Spartanburg, South Carolina, where that lightning's showing up. What was the pink area? That's a flooding. That I think that's a flooding imminent risk. So. A lot of flum uh, flooding areas are uh, ongoing in southern Illinois and southern Indiana because there was some strong rain with the system a few days ago. Uh, that caused a lot of flooding over there. So that's what those pinks were. Would I consider the National Weather Service? Down the line, it's possible. I think that the work that Ryan and I are doing here is pretty revolutionary uh, to social meteorology in some sense, and I'd be happy to continue that. Uh, down the line. You guys know, um, do, does anyone here know Tropical Tidbits? Um, the uh, Levi Cohen, that guy, he's he's, an, he's a legend. Made that whole site, makes tons of forecast videos for the tropical weather season for the U.S. and uh, Caribbean, this the Atlantic hurricane season. And uh, essentially, you know, by providing good information, kind of like this, to the people in mass. If you haven't heard about that, um, Definitely a good person to talk to check out. Tropical tidbits. Um, he's good. He's a good dude. And what I'm saying here is Levi is now with the National Hurricane Center or the Joint Tropical Warning Center, 
um, literally working with the National Weather Service, with NOAA in that department to, you know, issue, uh, you know, any sort of a tropical storm warnings for those basins. So the fact that somebody with intense experience in a realm like that is, uh, is a public, you know, figure in relaying a lot of uh, information in a concise manner to a lot of people, then, you know, starts working with uh, an organization like the National Hurricane Center. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a, I think that's a great path. I think that's a great path. So I don't know if something similar is in the future for me or what I'll do, but I would be happy to receive a, a position like that. And, you know, but that's that's well down the line. I'm really happy doing this right now. We're going to explore this and grow it as much as we can because right now I'm we're seeing really good results of uh, what we're doing here. What we're doing with y'all. Thank you, Steven. I appreciate that. Yep, that strong storm that moved through Augusta is now closer to Aiken in South Carolina. So that's moving through now. Still not severe warned. We're really dropping on those severe warnings through the night. So the hope there is that it's just that strong storm, but um, it's not going to do too much damage there. Where's Midas? He's asleep in the tower. Sleeping in his cat tower behind me. The cat tree. The rain's making it to Charlotte. The Charlotte Metro is starting to get in there, so you're going to get some lightning, but no more severe thunderstorm warnings up there. You're watching it go up there. You can move that over. Uh, I'm wondering, I'm, you know, mostly I'm wondering, did Sumter, did Sumter, uh, South Carolina get in on some hail? I heard one report of it coming through there. This is the, most of the heavy rain is over the city right now, so let's take a closer look at that real quick. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty much pouring there, but no more severe thunderstorm warning. I don't see anything that's very concerning here. I don't see any uh, big hail signature, so hopefully that stays the truth. But this supercell does have the chance to produce hail as it uh, tracks off to the east here nor towards Tur Turbville, Turbville uh, Effingham, South Carolina, and probably areas south of Florence, eventually towards Columbus County in North Carolina. This is probably one of our, our strongest cells that are, is remaining for the day. Noonan's fine. You guys are pro you guys are in that flash flood warning probably there in west central Georgia, but you guys can go to sleep as long as it's not leaking in the house. Just had a warm milk sandwich. Let's go. Have a great night. All of y'all who are going to sleep. I'm here to answer any more questions you got though. How do you become mod? Uh mostly just part of the y'all team is the moderators now, so I don't think uh, we're really looking for more, but there are ways to apply in uh, mostly through the Discord. I don't know if those are open anymore, but sometimes good old Frank will go through them and uh, see if we need any new moderators. So a strong, uh, a strong application may get you in there if you're really interested. Hey, that's what I did. I'll tell you guys, that's how I'm on this channel. That's why I work with Ryan. I applied to be a YouTube mod. I told him, hey, I got a meteorology degree. I got all these uh, weather challenge trophies. That's what these are behind me uh, for forecasting excellence, as they say. And uh, I also do research with the neural networks and deep, deep learning and forecasting to optimize forecasts. And he's like, hey, do you want to do all this stuff? And I was like, I applied to be a YouTube mod. <laughs> I was just going to mod your chat. I just wanted to fit in, so I gave him my resume, essentially. And he's like, nah, I think you should do all this stuff. And I was like, okay, I can try. I can try. And now I'm here. So, apply yourself. And uh, it actually took him three months to respond to me. So I, or two months, rather. And then, uh, thankfully, he saw, he saw what I said. I am from Ventura County. That's where I was uh, born. Live for 19 years. How's the storm looking for Montgomery? It does look pretty intense still. Looks like it's trying to track to the south of the city. We can take a closer look at it real quick here. 
So yeah, we do we do have some strong storms still ongoing, I was talking about, but none of these are severe warned at the moment. Over Hainville, it's just going to be quite the downpour. Prattville went through a downpour just now, so a lot of rain's coming through. Um, and uh, with that's going to come some lightning. So, um, But we're going to go off the National Weather Service issuing severe thunderstorm warnings here. At the moment, I don't see anything in particular that would warrant one, except maybe some hail back in here towards Miller's Ferry. Uh, but that's pretty far away from Montgomery, so uh, just some strong storms tracking through. Strong storms don't have to be severe, like this one up towards Moundville, south of Tuscaloosa. Uh, I told Tuscaloosa to go to sleep, and I mean, the storm is strong, and it's probably loud, but um, hopefully it just shouldn't do much more than a little bit of some standing water. So, most everyone should be fine. Most of the heavy rain's moving out of Sumter. We're looking up north towards uh, Charlotte up here. Again, it's just a bunch of lightning up here. Nothing severe warned anymore, so heavy rain, lightning moving in, especially now it's kind of concentrated in the southeastern Charlotte metro. It's where these storms have moved through, so uh, pretty good uh, pretty good to go at it here, but nothing too concerning, I think. Um, just going to be a downpour for some of you in Matthews and uh, Weddington and Indian Trail here. And this cell over here to the west of that is going to probably track into downtown Charlotte. So it'll be stormy, but for a while now, this cell has calmed down. So just a, just a thunderstorm. Just a thunderstorm. I just gave Montgomery a look. Hopefully that uh, person in chat has just delayed a little bit. They'll see that as we get into the late night hours here. <laughs> yeah, lots of lightning for lots of people. <clears throat> yeah, no problem. I'm here to help anyone who who has got you know a predisposition to storms in any any uh any way, any way. Yep, lots of uh lots of boomers. Actually, this uh this uh, train camera too below me in the bottom right. That's in Spartanburg, South Carolina, right now. So you can kind of see the lightning come through there. So whatever you're seeing down there in that train cam, that's what's happening in Spartanburg. Looks like some rain and lightning. <laughs> mm. Sounds eight times louder inside. I guess it's the I guess it's the structure. The structure of the RV amplifies the sound of the rain on it. Any uh, thunder booms. You're above Wetumpka. Hopefully, eight trees didn't fall anywhere near you in Wetumpka, Alabama. So you should, yeah, but in Wetumpka, you should be fine. Should be fine. It might get loud again, maybe, but it should be fine. Should start a podcast. We've done that once or twice. We've done that once or twice. Well, the thing is, uh, Ryan's gone to sleep right now. The reason y'all are here at the moment is Ryan's gone to sleep because he is going to head out to Mississippi and in person, assist with um, damage uh, and uh, aid in recovery for th those who were impacted on Friday by significant tornadoes. So he is headed to Mississippi. He's going to be out there for four days helping, cooking thousands of meals. So that's where Ryan is at the moment. That's why, that's why you're here. And if we have to stream on Thursday, uh, this coming Thursday, for the Central Plains and the Southern Plains toward Dallas-Fort Worth, if that severe weather risk does ramp up, then you'll be here. This, I'll be the person streaming that because uh, Ryan, will be, uh, Ryan will be in Mississippi on Thursday. So hopefully we'll be able to get that, the word out about that as best as possible. Um, so pay attention to that weather. If it does ramp up, I'll be looking at it too. That's great. Falls, Montana. Goodness gracious. Uh, um, probably some snow over there, yeah? You getting some snow? Has it snowed today yet? It does look like uh, snow is possible in uh, much of Montana into uh, from today into tomorrow. Maybe Billings, Montana, or some of the mountains there in central Montana got into some heavy snow. 
And I meet Ryan, like I said, I applied to be a YouTube mod. Two months later, he saw the application, he's like, can you do all of this? I was like, I applied to be a mod. Did I ever go to solving? I've been there once, yes. I have been there once. It was good. I don't remember too much about it. <laughs> Boxers are brief. Why? Boxers. You got some snow in Cheyenne? You'll probably get some more snow, if I had to guess, uh, with this atmospheric river moving through, you might get some stuff uh, come Wednesday and Thursday, maybe, this week. Um, definitely some unsettled weather is going to move through at minimum, so perhaps some winds. Uh, I don't know where Swansea is. Ah. Swansea, you're south of Columbia. You should be fine. You're going to get some heavy rain and lightning through the night, but you should be okay. I found it. Let's go. Who helps Ryan when I'm live? I do. But also, we've got meteorologist Ben Price and Heidi Oberlin, who unfortunately, uh, both streams that I've done so far were, um, you know, busy. So they are, they will help from the occasion, though. They will help on the occasion. I've talked about Columbus a while now. The strong storm moving through there now, it's probably mostly done with. Let's take a look. Yep, it's exiting the city at the moment, but severe thunderstorm warning there, so it was probably pretty loud. We've just got severe thunderstorm warnings now in Georgia, and that's about it. So uh, the central Georgia area, Macon, like I said, you're just outside this severe warning. You're ready to get into it within the hour. So now we're down to within the hour for central Georgia here. Bibb County, Houston County, Peach County, all, all here in central Georgia. And eventually, uh, let's go into a better radar here. Eventually, this uh, part of central Georgia here, these storms are going to move off to the east toward Augusta. And it's going to take quite a bit of time for them to reach uh, Savannah and the coast. They should be calmed down by that point. But it'll still be stormy. It's not as windy. Not as windy. Uh, as far as I can say, guys, uh, for all the severe threats tonight, almost everyone should be good to go to sleep. Almost everyone should. It's going to be mostly wind for the rest of the night, I think. Um, I'm, I haven't seen anything tornadic for a while now. Nothing tornadic for a while now. And our last supercell that's on its own uh, over there in South Carolina near Sumter has kind of petered out on the hail risk. So uh, really, everybody who wants to stay around and ask me questions, you guys free to stay here. But if you're here for the severe threat, honestly, I would say that we are good to go for almost everyone. Uh, maybe we've got some spare rotation down here that we can take a peek at to the southwest of Columbus. It's going to miss the city to the south, though, so Fort Mitchell, Cassetta. We're looking at this storm for you. This is probably our other strongest one today, but it's, it's marginal. It's marginal. So Fort Mitchell and Cassetta over here on in the eastern Alabama, south of uh, Columbus, Georgia. You're looking at that here. Uh, so this strong storm will probably do a little bit, but no warning on it at the moment. Casita, thank you, Casita. Really, two S's and an E is C? They got me with that. <laughs> they got me with that. Yeah, no more shrimp. No more shrimp. No more boot. Um, yes, I've been, I think if you're talking about the Ronald Reagan Library, is that UCSB? Is that that? If it is, then yes, I've been to UCSB. Absolutely. Have a great night in Texas. Appreciate you guys. But yeah, feel free. I'll answer some more weather questions until I feel like we can wind down here. Always happy to relay information. Can Aiken, South Carolina go to sleep? Yep, if you guys made it through that first one, you got one more coming towards you. One more coming towards you in Aiken, so it might it might wake you up. Have a way to get warnings. Um, it's, uh, it's, oh, maybe you got two more. Honestly, like, you're, you're gonna get a lot of heavy rain over here. These storms are gonna kind of fall on top of each other as they go this direction. So, Augusta and Aiken, maybe get a flash flood warning here, but, uh, he, I mean, this sleep ain't gonna be too restful. Uh, so yeah, quite a few storms headed your way through the night. Uh, but that's the theme here. 
That's the theme. And see the next few days. Once this blows through today, um, I think that, I mean, it, it'll be a little bit stormy and rainy, actually, over there on the East Coast. So you still got a chance for storms and rain over there uh, through the next couple of days. But then maybe you might have a brief respite into Wednesday, Thursday, perhaps. And then our next uh, storm system is going to blow through. All of the states eventually will see something. Myrtle Beach, you guys are going to get storms in the morning. So a couple hours from now, maybe, uh, one will come close to you. And then eventually some unsettled weather in the early morning hours. So have a way to wake up just in case. Just in case, but I, I think it's going to be a severe thunderstorm going through there. Why does the sky turn green in thunderstorms? We talked about that earlier today. It's the hail. Hail in a storm will def will refract light. So the hail goes through, or the, the light comes in and goes through some of the hail in the core of the storm. So if light can get in there, uh, a bunch of it will turn green eventually. That's the common color that all that refraction, all that optical illusion, kind of, you can think of it that way. It's a good way to remember it. The hail will turn it green. Doesn't necessarily mean that it's hailing at the surface, but um, if the hail does make it to the surface, well, it's going to be green throughout. Um, it's pretty rare to see that because you also have to have light streaming into the storm. So like at sunset, that's probably when you'll see it most often. Can't wait to see what happens in Kansas on Thursday. Yep, definitely a day to be weather aware in Kansas is uh, Thursday the 30th. Eastern New Mexico. Um, I think the severe risk will definitely be east. East of New Mexico. So it might get windy. It might get pretty dry. Uh, so there may be a fire risk. We could see possible fire weather in uh, eastern New Mexico into the panhandle of Texas. That's possible with this upcoming storm. <laughs> Western Pennsylvania. You guys are more interested in uh this uh this coming week i'd say saturday for for pittsburgh next saturday april fool's day that might be a day to pay attention to probably when unsettled weather will be in the area all right let's go back and look at uh charlotte real quick yep just uh these storms have really petered out it's just going to be some lightning and rain here <laughs> this the most active time for uh, the gulf states is basically now march and april are really when the peak activity is but their season is base is pretty much november to april once we get into may and june we really are going to move away from mississippi alabama hopefully uh, for the most part and then uh, it's going to uh, start peaking in the midwest in the central plains in Texas is still is going to get some more, but once we get to June, then our risks are going to be focused more north in the Midwest and uh, Kansas and Nebraska to the north, and maybe even up into the Canadian prairies. Cape is instability. Cape is literally just how much air wants to rise uh, in a particular spot in the atmosphere. Very loud thunder. Yeah, coming through. That's really the that's really the spotlight. Uh, the the lightning is going to take the show here for all of these uh, storms in uh, South Carolina for the most part. Yeah. I mean, we have no more severe thunderstorm warnings over here, so I'm just talking to y'all, honestly. Will Virginia get a storm? Maybe next week. Maybe next week. NOAA radios cover wildlife warnings? I don't know that. There may be... There should be... Uh, there should be documentation on everything that can come through. Uh, definitely Midland's site will tell you something like that. So Midland radios, those are what we put on Shop Ryan Hall. Everybody, I'm going to say, you know, with, for, with confidence, I'd say that most everybody can go to sleep tonight, but please have a way to receive warnings. LaGrange, you're good. Columbus, Georgia, you're going to get some thunder for a while. You're going to get a couple rounds of it, uh, I think. Oh no, uh, Augusta's going to get a couple rounds, but uh, Columbus, you might get some more tonight. 
there's just a couple rounds going through. Uh, so Columbus down here. Over here. Just some storms for a while. Yeah, it might shake the house. It's really... The lightning today is the most impressive part. If you didn't hear earlier, uh, the reason we have so much lightning is because uh, is because all the air... You can see the storms that are moving like... They're basically just moving like this direction, right? So you see that blue arrow there? I can draw it in black. Draw it in black. There we go. The storms are moving this direction. Well, this is actually the same direction they're moving uh, at about four miles above the surface. So all that air four miles above the surface is coming from over here in Mexico, Texas, uh, and it's dry. The reason well, uh, it's dry and cold up that far in the storm. So um, the reason why we are uh, the, the reason why we're getting lightning is because we have that dry cold air aloft. So it's really accentuating a ton of lightning production here due to that instability. So wherever that air comes from, we could see that do a lot for uh, lightning production. And also the hail. Those, those were the two big themes today. And uh, the reason why there was so much hail in these areas, and, and some large hail too, uh, is um, because of where that air came from. About four miles above the surface, two miles above the surface as well. Sladell, Louisiana, just some storminess in the area. Nothing severe. Nothing severe. Might just be some showers around. Why are you still getting thunder? Because it, the thunder is going to happen for quite some time. That instability exists back in here in all this uh, area of yellow. There's still instability, but it's not at the surface. So most of the, or all the stuff back here is not... Uh, severe, but there's just enough uh, lift and rising air in the storm to uh, produce lightning. You live in the southeast corner of Queensland and Brisbane. They think the SPC for day five and six can pull a, a high risk? I have no idea. Uh, we're definitely way too far out to be forecasting the specific level of risk. All you need to know at this point is to be weather aware. Oh, Dudley, Georgia be tonight. Um, gosh, let me uh, take a look at where that is. I gotta have maps up so that I can keep track of y'all. Dudley, you are to the south and east of Macon. So in about an hour or so, maybe an hour and a half, the storms are going to start to roll through your area. Uh, and they may be severe at that time. So Dudley's just about right here uh, along this uh, black circle. Somewhere in there. Yeah, just about there. Uh, so those those storms may be severe, but it's going to be for wind when it rolls through. Wind, lightning, uh, and uh, and heavy rain. Yeah, this season for Minneapolis was very snowy. Do I, how do I know when the last tornado will be officially relay, uh, rated? The National Weather Service will say it's officially rated. Absolutely. I, I hope that I can reach a lot of people tonight. Thank you for all the uh, the support and so forth. <laughs> Y'all are funny. So yeah, that, that's going to be the theme tonight. Um, but never, never count it out. You know, West Point, Georgia, on the western uh, side of Georgia, did have that tornado blow through at 5 in the morning. Nothing is impossible, but almost everybody... I'm sure we'll be fine. You just have to have a way to get warnings. If you're hearing thunder, you're hearing thunder. Almost nothing is severe uh, anymore over here in South and North Carolina. It's just going to be some strong storms. Strong is a little bit below severe. Okay. Air pressure on tornadic activity de de depends on what you're uh, related to or you're relating to. Is it like uh, the surf, the air pressure at the surface? or a loft, um, but really you want to know for pressure is uh, the stronger the storm is and the low pressure is, the you know the more mass return you can get. And uh, that can be the fuel for storms that would uh, you know possibly produce tornadoes. It's just like a perfect thing though. That's one part of the equation. One part of the equation. Will Oklahoma be okay in the future? Well, you guys are in a risk on the 30th of March. Okay. This Thursday. 
So uh, make sure you write that day down for your friends uh, to pay attention on Thursday. Yeah, I'm working hard. Thank you guys. Almost 60k subs. Thanks for all the subs. If you haven't subbed yet and you like staying on through the night here, I'm doing my best. And we may do another stream uh, on Thursday, depending on that sphere risk, as well as Friday. Ryan should be back Friday. Spartanburg, okay. Long Thunder. Thunder's booming. But yeah, you're fine. Lightning's stealing the show. Absolutely. I'm, how, I'm trying to help as many people as possible. Very good. Very good. I actually just saw a lock in them too. But I don't remember where that is actually. I was just looking at Oh, Hastings, right? That's Hastings, yeah? Hello from Hastings. That's where I saw the Aurora, guys. I saw the Aurora on th this last Thursday. For the first time ever. And it was intense. <laughs> How'd I meet Ryan? I applied to be a YouTube mod. Where's the storm go after California? It's going to take a similar track and impact uh, basically every... I mean, the storm is going to be over here. I'll draw it in for you. This is your week forecast. I'm drawing it in blue. Storm's going to be over here. It's, uh, when it Once it moves inland to California, it's going to weaken and then track over the mountains. And then it's going to be over here at some point on Thursday. Then it's going to move up to the north and east, just like that. Towards the Midwest, maybe you take a little bit more of a northerly track. If it does, uh, the track remains to be seen. And uh, then you'll get your severe weather risk here on Thursday and over here for a lot of these areas on Friday. Easy as that. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to take that usual track through. And uh, it's going to do the thing where it looks like the storm is sweeping the entire U.S. It's going to do that. <clears throat> six miles north of fsc when will the storms be over you're going to be in this uh, light rainfall for quite some time light to moderate medium rainfall and there's going to be thunder in it so it, it's an all-nighter all-nighter for a lot of y'all over there in atlanta it's going to last a while and it's going to be electrically active utah no you should be removed from severe storm risk you might get some intense snow though that remains to be seen uh that would be on wednesday probably Tuesday to Wednesday. Friday for Missouri, uh, it's a little far out, but some of the trends are a little concerning. But yeah, be weather aware next week in a lot of uh, a lot of these areas. Absolutely, Haley, happy to help. Oof. We have two severe thunderstorms remaining. Strong storms tracking around Montgomery, but no severe thunderstorms for most people, um, so it's really going to be torrential downpour. Uh, torrential downpours, rather. Big time rain and thunder. Which part of Missouri? Almost all of it. Almost all of uh, Missouri is in the risk for this Friday. Thank you, Jay Morgan. I recognize you. Much appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody going to sleep. I would say that almost everybody can go to sleep. I am not going to be on for too much longer here. In fact, I might call it there. But I think I have to sign into YouTube to fix this thing. So if this kicks me out right now, it's been good, y'all. I hope I was able to help a lot of people today, okay? Hope I was able to help as many of you as possible. If you haven't subbed yet to the channel, um, I, I mean, we're going to have videos. I'll have videos. They'll be me. And there will be streams coming in the future. Okay. So, um, yeah. Uh, I think we did good. I was on for eight hours today once again. <sighs> eight hours again, man. So, hopefully I was able to give as many people info as possible. And if you want to watch this stream back, um, thank you for watching it back at any point. That is... Uh, that's appreciated. Lots of good information across those eight hours. We had the chasers on there, too. Happy to help. Cool. Thank you, guys. Much appreciated. Thank you, Andrew, for the support. Everybody, have a great night.
everybody hanging out. Yeah, it's been great to hang out and tell everyone to go to sleep. Uh, I'll answer as many questions as I can. If you got a question tonight, eventually just hang on to it. You know, eventually I'm going to see even Ryan answers as many questions as possible, but it, it's impossible to do everybody. Okay. Everybody. But I will do as many as I can until I can't no more. <laughs> So thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for all the support today as well. Shout outs to everybody again who donated. I'll consider the PayPal thing for next stream, but I'm going to not make a big deal about it. Okay. All right. Um, I think we did good. So let's see. Let's see if this kicks me out. Uh, until then, have a great night. Have a great night, y'all. Oh, no. It didn't kick me out. Nice. Or at least I don't think it did. Okay, so hopefully this ends the stream. Peace out. Sleep well. <laughs>